Hi, welcome back guys. This is your friend. Let us head fanfics. Back with amazing fanfiction. This is the series of What if Deku with multiple quirk got harem? Now before starting, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. The world isn't fair I learned that at the ripe old age of 4 years old. Sorry kid it's not happening, you don't have a quirk. Such a callous way of dashing a child's dream thought young Izuku Midoriya as he sat at the computer table playing the old video of All Might's debut. That great smile of his lighting up such a dark time in the world's history. Izuku wanted nothing more than to be like him. There had to be a way right. Izuku turned to his mother standing in the doorway. I can still be a hero right mom? He asked his mother and co who stepped forward into the light of the computer screen and shed tears in her eyes before she spoke as she kneeled in front of her. Yes Izuku, yes you can, but you'll have to work hard, harder than everyone else. Can you do that Izuku? And co asked her green eyes staring into her son's. Izuku didn't hesitate shaking his head violently. Yes mama will work hard, so hard. Izuku said looking into his mom's eyes with renewed vigor and hope. And Ko nodded as she wiped Izuku's face of tears before doing the same to her own and standing up. Come with me Izuku we're going to visit an old friend of mommy's. And Ko said as she grabbed hold of Izuku's hand and led him out of the house and after a cab and train ride they arrived at a small home dojo. And Ko walked up to the front door and gave several knocks. They waited a few moments before the door opened and a man in his forties stepped forward. He wore a marungi with what looked like a turtle symbol on the left part of the chest. He had black hair and amber eyes, and boasted quite the physique. He carried a cane with him topped with a rough-hewn jade stone. Izuku cocked his head looking at this man and then at his mother. Ah Midoriya san it is good to see you after so long. How have you been? The man asked Inko who waved her hand. Yoshi I told you to stop calling me that Inko is fine. I'm sorry to trouble you, but I was hoping I could ask a favor of you. Inko asked as Yoshi smiled waving parent and child into his home. As you wish Inko, now what can I do for you and your son I presume? He asked looking at Izuku who held tightly to his mother's pant leg as they followed Yoshi into a living area and was promptly served tea. Yes this is my son Izuku he's four years old and wants to be a hero when he grows up. Isn't that right Izuku? And Ko said prompting her son to speak. Why yes sir I want to be like All Might. He said trying to smile bravely as Yoshi smiled back. That is a fine dream young man I'll be rooting for you and what quirk do you have if I may ask? Yoshi said watching as sadness filled the boy's eyes. I I don't have a quirk, but I I still want to be a hero. Izuku said defiantly. Yoshi leaned back looking over at Inko getting a sense of what his old friend wanted. I we were hoping you could help with that Yoshi after all you're quirkless yourself, but that never stopped you from doing what was right. Inko said staring into Yoshi's eyes before bowing before him. Hamato Yoshi please help my son achieve his dream. Izuku looked at his mom before mirroring her gesture. Please Mr. Yoshi I don't want to give up. I promise I'll work hard, I won't quit. Yoshi looked between both greenettes and sighed. Izuku this will be hard work, it'll be painful and you will get hurt. I'm not a gentle teacher. Yoshi said standing up as Izuku raised his head. If we do this, there's no going back, this will take all you have and more. Do you understand? Izuku stared into Yoshi's eyes. Yes sensei. Yoshi smiled and looked to Inko. I will do what I can Inko, but I can't make any promises. Inko rose from her position and smiled shaking Yoshi's hand and kissing him on the cheek. Thank you senpai, Inko said before looking around. I never asked how are the boys and me were doing. Yoshi rolled his eyes, being teenagers and driving me crazy. They should have been back already, he said grabbing his walking stick and smacking it against a table leg. They will feel my disappointment, he growled before looking at Izuku. Starting tomorrow you will come here every day after school and train under me is that understood? Izuku promptly saluted. Yes sensei. Both adults chuckled as Inko left with her son. It was just then that Yoshi heard a creak and threw his cane smacking someone in the head. Oh dad. Yoshi walked forward. If you think that hurt just wait until you see the training I'll put you through. A boy moves through the crowd like water without so much as jostling a single shoulder until he was at the front of the crowd watching as a giant villain was about to be apprehended by the upcoming hero Kamui Woods. He's wearing a school uniform with red sneakers on the straps of his bag were four different colored wrappings red and blue on the right and orange and purple on the green-haired boy whipped out a notebook with hero analysis for the feature number 13 on the cover. An older man with a trio of three-pointed protrusions coming from his head jumped not having noticed the boy until he heard the mumbling and wondered when he'd gotten there. What are you kidding ninja fanboy? The guy asked as the young boy turned looking at him and smiled brightly. Believe it or not you're not far off the mark. He said turning back to see Kamui Wood's preemptive binding lacquer chain prison be cut short as a new heroine stole his thunder. Canyon Cannon Izuku turned away as to not be blinded by the army of paparazzi taking pictures of Mount Lady's best feature. He began taking notes on the heroine as the man who'd spoken to him before began speaking. Let me guess kid you want to be a hero don't you? 
He asked to which Izuku looked up and smirked. I will be a hero. He said simply before disappearing into the crowd heading to his middle school. Izuku walked into class without any notice except by one boy with spiky blonde hair and red eyes. Izuku took his seat as the teacher came in to start class. Alright class this is your last year of middle school it's time to start thinking about your future profession. Oh who am I kidding you all want to be heroes right? The teacher asked as the class exploded with their quirks. Izuku just continued taking notes as the commotion was cut through by the voice of Katsuki Bakugo. Boy teach don't lump me in with this gutter trash. I'm the only person coming out of this school as a hero. This immediately started a backlash among the other students. That's right Bakugo you applied to UA right. The angry retorts were replaced by awe at the fact Katsuki was applying to the hardest hero school in the country. Yeah suck it wimps I'm going places you plebs could never reach. He laughed arrogantly. Izuku also applied to UA. The teacher spoke not having noticed Izuku until right at that moment and felt guilty for outing the poor boy. The class immediately turned to Izuku not having noticed he was there until then. Izuku looked up from his notebook. The class didn't know what to make of Izuku. It was common knowledge the boy was quirkless, and yet he managed to keep stride with the top students, and even more impressive he survived Katsuki's bullying without ever getting injured. The kid was a walking miracle, so maybe he did have a chance to get in. That's right sensei, he said simply ignoring the disbelieving looks on his fellow students' faces. Class continued on after that until the final bell rang, and Izuku began gathering his things before kicking his leg out from under his desk and tripping Bakugu making him explode the floor rather than Izuku's desktop as he gathered his things and stood up. Where do you think you're going Deku I've got something to say to you. Katsuki shouted standing up angrily his palms smoking. You're making fun of me right, thinking a quirkless shit like you could ever get into UA. Izuku looked at Katsuki over his shoulder gripping his bag tightly. Contrary to your belief Katsuki not everything everyone does has something to do with you. I'm applying to UA because I want to be a hero simple as that. You don't factor at all. He said walking towards the door only for it to be blocked by Bakugu's goons. Izuku sighed as he heard running footsteps behind him before dodging to the side at the last moment as Katsuki's hand exploded shrouding the room in smoke. The three boys coughed as the smoke cleared out of the room from an open window revealing Izuku to be long gone. Katsuki ran to the window seeing Izuku walking out of the school gates as if nothing had happened. I'll get you, you effing nerd. Katsuki shouted. Izuku couldn't help, but chuckle at the pissed look on Katsuki's face as he left the school grounds. I really wish Katsuki would get his head out of hisses and think about what he says more. Izuku spoke as his phone rang announcing a text. He pulled out his phone in its all-might case. He'd received a text from Mikey. Dude we're getting pizza wanna hang. The text read and Izuku smiled typing a quick affirmative he looked around deciding to take a shortcut to the dojo by cutting through this tunnel. Ten months left and I'll be at UA I should up my training. Izuku said pondering how exactly to do that. For the past ten years he'd been training with Yoshi Sensei to increase his overall physical capability, strength training, endurance, and martial arts. His training was already extreme to say the least. Yoshi Sensei was as good as his word all those years ago. Maybe I'll finally take Raph up on his offer of extra training. Izuku said as he heard a rumble coming from the manhole cover he'd just passed. He turned seeing living sludge spew up from it and shoot straight towards him. Izuku's training kicked in immediately as he gripped his backpack and ducked under the tendrils rolling to the side as he reached into his bag and pulled out a pair of long, slender, blunt wooden sticks. They were nondescript to be sure, but that didn't make them any less effective. Izuku stood up as the sludge coalesced into a single form and took notice of the armed young man in front of him. You're making this way too hard kid, but if that's how you want it. The sludge spoke a thick tendril of sludge shot towards him. Izuku spun both sticks in his hands at full speed eviscerating the slime as it splattered across the nearby walls before hooking his foot into his bag and hurling it at the sludge villain who swatted it aside only to find his quarry gone before he was hit in the eye with some kind of powder. LHHH. The sludge villain reeled back covering his eyes as he began swinging sludge tendrils in a blind rage slamming into the walls and ceiling of the tunnel as Izuku skillfully dodged the tentacles. I can't believe it I'm actually taking on someone with a quirk and winning. Izuku thought to himself as he took a deep breath focusing only on the villain in front of him. Izuku rushed forward before taking notice of the person standing behind the villain and took action by dodging to the side hugging the wall as Texas smash rang out in the tunnel. The slime villain was plastered across the asphalt instantly as Izuku detached from the wall of the tunnel. Izuku knew that voice anywhere as he came face to face with All Might. Young man I must say you handled yourself quite well against that villain. I must apologize for letting him escape, but navigating sewers is quite difficult. All Might said as he began gathering the unconscious slime into a two-liter empty soda bottle. 
Izuku was floored this was his hero the hero All Might standing in front of him and apologizing no less. I have the perfect apology. All Might spoke taking notice of Izuku's bag on the ground and the notebook therein with his name on the front. He flipped through the pages looking for some empty space and casually glancing through the notes the boy had made about certain heroes before finding two empty pages and scrawled his autograph across it and handing it back to him. There you are young man. All Might said handing over the autograph journal and stowing away the villain for the police. Now if you'll excuse me I'll hand this evil doer over to the police. All Might said before Izuku spoke. I, I don't have a quirk, but I'm still trying to be a hero, do you think I can? Izuku asked looking into All Might's eyes. The number one hero looked at this boy with wide eyes. He took on a villain even though he was quirkless, and did a hell of a job as well. All Might bit his lip as he looked the boy over. Your skills are indeed impressive, but there are some things that skill alone can't overcome. I'm sorry young man. All Might said before jumping into the air unaware that the captured villain had fallen from his pocket as he landed on a rooftop exposing his weakened form. That kid was really skilled, and he could definitely go places. Maybe he could. He thought rubbing his chin as he reached down to his pocket finding that his prisoner was gone. Oh no. Katsuki Bakugu walked down a side alley still ranting about Deku's escape. Effing nerd thinks he's so smart the next time I see him I'll make sure to blow him inside out. Bakugu said as he saw a bottle on the ground and kicked it sending it slamming into the wall and spilling its contents across the ground only for said contents to turn into a sentient slime creature. Izuku walked along shaking his head. I know he was only saying what he thought was right, but still. Izuku said clenching his fist as an explosion went off across the street from him. But what now? He said crossing the street and slipping to the front of the crowd and what he found shocked him. It was the slime villain again. What's he doing free I thought All Might had him. He whispered as several heroes worked to subdue the villain. He's got a hostage and with all these explosions going off nobody can get close. A couple of spectators said. Wait explosions? Izuku asked as the sludge villain turned around revealing he was trying to possess Katsuki. Izuku grit his teeth as he rushed forward past the cordon of heroes towards the villain. Stop kid. Someone shouted but it fell on deaf ears Izuku was focused only on the task at hand as he grabbed his two sticks and hurled them at the villain's eyes watching as he recoiled from the blows to his eyes and releasing Katsuki some as Izuku gripped Katsuki and pulled with all his might. You again, damn kid your luck just ran out. The villain yelled as a giant sludge hand came to smack Izuku into the concrete only for it to be blocked at the last moment by All Might. We have to stop meeting like this young man. All Might said before striking back at the villain. Detroit smash. The wind from All Might's attack blew away any and all sludge from the two boys as All Might kept them from flying away. The crowd looked at the hole punched into the clouds before it began to rain. Amazing. The crowd cheered as All Might let go of Izuku. You might want to get out of here young man those heroes don't look too happy with you. Izuku looked behind All Might seeing Death Arms and Kamui Woods coming for him and took the pro hero's advice and made a run for it before either hero could stop him. Izuku sighed pulling out his phone seeing several missed texts from the guys and a dozen missed calls from his mother. Yeah guess I'll have to miss out on the pizza this time. He said sending an apology to his sibling disciples before preparing to call his mother as All Might zoomed out in front of him like a living freight train. I am here. He shouted before suddenly shrinking into a much smaller and frailer man hacking up blood. Oh my god are you alright sir? Do you need a hospital? Izuku said reaching towards him. Um are you? Oh might. Izuku said looking the man overseeing similarities besides the fact this guy looked like a walking corpse. You would be correct young man I am indeed the symbol of peace all might. And this is my true form. Izuku was reeling at this revelation trying to connect the mighty symbol of peace to this frail skeletal figure. H how is this possible? Izuku asked as all might wiped his mouth. You see this? He asked raising his white t-shirt to reveal a gruesome wound in his side. I got this about five years back. Lost my entire stomach and half my respiratory system. I can only do hero work about three hours a day now. I rushed off without giving you a proper answer before because I was short on time. By the time I got to the scene of that incident with the sludge villain I was already out of time. And then there you were in the thick of it trying your hardest to help that boy and it moved me to action. You Izuku Midoriya shall take on my quirk and succeed me as the symbol of peace. Do you accept? All Might asked holding his hand out to Izuku. Izuku was in shock. Could this really be happening? The hero of peace offering him his quirk. How is that possible and why him? All these questions buzzed through Izuku's mind like a kicked beehive. After all this time all the hard work I've put in. The blood, sweat, and tears have given me this. Izuku grabbed All Might's hand tightly. Yes I accept. All Might smiled and nodded clapping the boy on the shoulder. No hesitation I like that. Meet me tomorrow at Dagaba Beach I'll explain everything and then your training will begin. Izuku nodded as he let go of All Might's hand the two parting ways. Izuku headed back home to his worried mother and explained that he simply lost track of time wandering around the city. It was better than the alternative of telling her the whole truth and possibly have her pass out from shock. 
He went to his room doing the last of his workout routine and homework for the day before calling it a night. Izuku ended the call with Hamato-sensei. It was hard telling him that he wouldn't be able to train with him anymore. But unsurprisingly Yoshi seemed completely fine with it and even encouraged him to strike out on his own. I wish I could tell you the truth sensei, but even I don't know what that is. He said to himself as he left the kitchen after having cleaned up after his breakfast. His mother wasn't up yet. The sun wasn't even up yet but he couldn't wait any longer. He tore off a sticky note writing a quick missive to his mother explaining he was leaving for early morning training and stuck it to the plastic wrapped plate he'd left for his mother. He'd wanted to do something nice for his mother after all she made him breakfast every day without fail. And though he lacked her exceptional culinary skills he wasn't terrible in the kitchen. Izuku was dressed in a green muscle shirt that exaggerated his muscular frame. No one would accuse him of being a bodybuilder, but he was in great shape a definitive six-pack molded flush against the fabric of the shirt. He had on a pair of jean shorts and his trademark red shoes. Izuku walked out the front door locking it behind him as he stretched in the perdon hours before taking off at a loping jog towards Dagaba Beach. Izuku pounded the pavement cocooned in the early morning silence before the city came to life. He'd been in his run for more than an hour when he passed by a boy probably a handful of years older than himself. Izuku knew a lookout when he saw one, but pretended to ignore the other youth as he ran down the sidewalk past him and rounded the corner stopping once he was out of sight. I wonder what he's up to. Izuku said looking up the side of the building he'd rounded and smiled before beginning to climb the wall of the building. It wasn't easy now, but Hamato-sensei had taught him how to climb such surfaces and soon he was on the roof of said building and walked across it to look down into the alleyway the guy had been guarding and his eyes widened at what he saw. Look what we have here, the lead thug said. He was tall with hair that seemed to be made of slime that oozed down to his shoulders. What's a girl like you doing out here? He asked grabbing hold of Will Nothing. If it wasn't for the set of clothes floating in midair there would be no indication a person was there and judging from the skinny jeans and tank top it was a girl. I'll let me go please. A feminine voice rang out as the girl struggled against the grip of ooze goons one looked like a mind flare straight from D&D &D and the other had a long serpentine tail and a forked tongue. Sorry honey I can't do that you see me and the boys have a burning question. When we stick our dicks in you will we still be able to see them? Ooze laughed at his disgusting remark as Lizard flicked his tongue out against what he assumed was the girl's cheek. And there's only one way to find out right. He asked reaching forward to the button on her jeans. New MPHH. Right as the girl went to call out a tentacle wrapped around her neck choking off her screen. Izuku had seen enough he took in all the information he could and then vaulted off the roof falling right on Ooze's shoulders dropping him to the concrete hearing a crunch as his face impacted the cement. Squid face and lizard's eyes widened their shock leaving them wide open as Izuku rolled forward off of Ooze and punched squid face in the knee dropping him down as Izuku rose up with a palm strike to his chin driving his head back against the wall knocking him unconscious. Lizard hissed letting go of the girl as he spun whipping his tail towards Izuku who jumped off the wall to avoid the blow landing in front of the lizard man and drove his elbow into his stomach forcing all the air from him as he dropped to his knees clutching his stomach as he curled into the fetal position. Izuku turned back to the entrance of the alley seeing the lookout was gone. Now that there were no reinforcements coming he turned towards the girl only to be pulled into a spine crushing hug. Oh thank you, thank you, thank you. That was terrifying I can't imagine what would have happened if you didn't show up. Izuku awkwardly patted the girl's back even if he couldn't see her. The moisture on his neck let him know she was crying. Come on Izuku what would all might do? I it's alright there's no need to think about that now. I'm here for you. He said leading her out of the alley and into the first rays of dawn. I am Midoriya Izuku by the way. He said as the invisible girl finally detached from him wiping her face off. I'm Hagakure, Toru Hagakure. Thank you for helping me Midoriya. She said bowing to him slightly. Izuku waved his hands. It's alright anyone would have done the same. And please call me Izuku. He said smiling at her. Um do you live around here I'll walk you home. I don't want to leave you alone in case their lookout comes back with more guys. He said as Toru looked at him. Um alright call me Toru then Izuku and yes I don't live far. She said as she began to lead Izuku back to her home stopping in front of her house gate. Once again thank you so much. Izuku smiled about to tell her not to worry about it before he felt lips on his cheek and Toru rushing off into her home. Izuku stood there for a moment touching his cheek before remembering why he was out this morning anyway. Oh man I'm going to be late. He shouted as he took off towards Dagaba Beach. He arrived well after sunrise. And though All Might said to meet him in the morning which it still was Izuku felt as if he'd let him down. I'm sorry All Might I'm late I know, please forgive me. Izuku said bowing repeatedly to his idol who only laughed as he sat on top of an old refrigerator in his muscular form in a long-sleeved white t-shirt and cargo pants. You're earnest I like that, but don't sweat the small stuff young Midoriya. I asked you to come here in the morning and by my clock it's still morning. Now let's get down to brass tacks. I told you yesterday that I would explain everything to you before we start so you're not going in blind. 
Izuku nodded as he took a seat on an old space heater. All Might gave a cough before beginning his tale of one for all and all for one. Long ago when quirks were still fairly new there was a man who took advantage of the chaos of the time to build an army to do his bidding. That man's name was all for one. And he had the power to take quirks for himself or give them to others. He used his power and charisma to draw people to his side. The only one he couldn't convince was his younger brother who was sickly but had a strong moral compass. All for one forced a quirk on his brother whether as leverage or out of true concern for his brother I'm not sure. This quirk gave his brother the ability to stockpile power. But unknown to either the younger brother did possess a quirk of his own the power to give his quirk to others. These two quirks combined into the quirk I now have and the one you will soon inherit, one for all. And so you see young man this power created by evil and passed down from person to person to do good and one day rid the world of all for one once and for all. That is what one for all is and it's the power I'll be passing on to you as the ninth holder. But before that we need to get your body ready for it and that's why we're here. Izuku was still in a bit of shock learning about this ultimate evil with the power to take quirks and one day he would have to fight against him. He swallowed before acknowledging what All Might had said. Get my body ready what do you mean and what does that have to do with this place? He asked. All Might nodded seeing how Izuku adapted so readily to the situation at hand it was a good sign being able to come to terms with such outlandish circumstances. Yes you see one for all has been passed down through seven other people besides the original owner each of them adding power to it making it stronger and stronger and all that power will be housed in you. So if you're not ready for it, it will kill you or at the very least blow your limbs off. Izuku wrapped his arms around himself at the thought of losing his limbs to such a power. It's that strong hun. He asked taking a deep breath. Well I'm ready all might to do whatever it takes to make this power mine. Izuku said standing up ready for action. Good to hear young man. For the next 10 months I'll train you in preparation for the UA entrance exams. From what I saw in the tunnels you already have some training under your belt so this won't be as arduous, but we'll see. Now I'll write up a training regimen for you. But the first step is for you to clear this portion of the beach of all this garbage. He said waving around the immediate area. Izuku looked at all the large appliances and such already thinking about how best to move each piece. Remember this is a marathon not a sprint take your time and pace yourself. Now enough talk let's begin. Izuku jumped into motion grabbing the space heater he'd been sitting on and hauling it off. He did this for the rest of the day until sunset when All Might released him from training handing him several sheets of paper that detailed his workout regimen all the way down to his sleeping hours. Not only did Izuku accomplish All Might's goal, but even went beyond clearing the entire beach in half the time he'd given the boy. All Might walked down to the completely cleared beach seeing Izuku practicing his martial arts stances until he noticed All Might coming up to him in his true form in a deep blue jacket with a scarf and jeans. Young man you are truly surprising. You cleared the entire beach in record timing. I knew you'd probably complete it in less than 10 months I was thinking 7 or 8 9 at the most but 5, way beyond my expectations. Izuku smiled wide his eyes glowing with joy at the praise of his idol. Thank you so much All Might. Izuku replied stretching his arms and legs before coughing on the steam of All Might's transformation. Now that you've come this far I believe you are ready to receive my power. Now, eat this. Izuku looked at All Might as he plucked one of his silky blonde hairs and held it out to him. The teen cast his green eyes to the hair and back to All Might several times before speaking. You want me to eat your hair? He asked with a skeptical look as All MG Might nodded. Yes for you to have my power you need to take in my DNA. Izuku plucked the hair from All Might's fingers and after rolling it into a tight ball swallowed it shuddering heavily. Now what? Izuku asked as All Might took a battle stance. Now you survive until the power comes to you. He said before throwing a punch that Izuku barely dodged kicking up a large swath of sand with the air from his punch. Izuku landed to the left of All Might before smiling. Yes sir. He shouted as All Might appeared before him instantly and threw a gut punch that Izuku blocked with both his arms feeling as if his bones would crack under the weight of the punch as he was sent sprawling backwards before rolling to the side narrowly avoiding another blow. The sand kicked up by All Might's attack allowed him to get some space between him and the pro hero moving stealthily through the sand shroud before it settled. I can't stay on defense I have to attack. Stealing himself Izuku ran forward at All Might's back sliding between the hero's legs as he turned around to face the attack and once behind All Might he jumped to his feet and spun on his heel driving a kick into All Might's right side and that's when he felt at the power sparking to life within him and flowing outwards as he connected with All Might's side sliding the hero across the beach before Izuku fell to the ground clutching his leg as pain radiated through his body. Uh, he screamed looking at his bruised and broken leg. What happened I I thought you said I was ready. He said breathing harshly through clenched teeth as he looked at All Might in confusion. All Might transformed into his smaller form clutching his side. I think he broke a rib with that kick. It seems I was overly optimistic young Midoriya. You aren't ready for 100% just yet. 
But now that you know what it feels like to fire at all cylinders you can dial it back to a more manageable extent which will be the focus of these next 5 months. Right now I think it's best we get that leg of yours looked at. I think I just created a monster. All Might thought to himself as he and Izuku climbed into a cab to the hospital. Five months later, Izuku stepped foot onto the UA campus and took a breath. He was wearing his sleeveless forest green gi and pants with the symbol of his dojo on his back and the left side of his chest. This is it. All that training has lead up to this moment time to make it count, he said as an angry shout rang out behind him. Move it Deku you piss ant real talent coming through. Katsuki shouted as he shoved past Izuku who stepped back to avoid any contact with the explosive teenager. And a good morning to you too Katsuki. He said shaking his head as he started into the school as well noticing a cute brown-haired girl walking close by she seemed to be writing something on her palm and eating it. He smiled it was cute really. I should give her some calming techniques before the exams to help her focus. He thought before he lost her in the crowd and took a seat in the auditorium after getting his entrance card. He had just sat down when he felt someone squeeze him tightly around the neck as he looked down seeing a set of floating clothes hugging him. T. Toru. He said shocked at seeing or well not seeing Toru here. Fancy meeting you here Izuku I didn't know you were planning on going to UA2 what a coincidence. She said taking the seat next to him as the room dimmed and present Mike stepped on stage. Yeah I had no idea you were planning on studying to be a hero small world. Izuku whispered as Toru reached and plucked his card from his loose fingertips and looked it over before huffing. We're not in the same area that sucks I really wanted to see you. I mean see your quirk in action I didn't get a chance to see it when we met and you obviously know what mine is. She said giving him his card back to which Izuku gave an apologetic laugh. Sorry I guess. He said rubbing the back of his head as present Mike went on to explain the entrance exam. There will be three villains got me each one worth one, two, or three points respectively. The exercise is simple destroy as many villains as you can and rack up a high score. Destroy them by any means necessary. But there is no interfering with the other contestant, so no anti-hero nonsense if you understand say yeah. The auditorium was silent as a grave in response to present Mike's enthusiasm. Excuse me sir on this pamphlet there are four villains if this is a mistake UA should be ashamed of itself. And you two take your flirting elsewhere some of us are serious about studying at this illustrious academy and becoming heroes. Izuku arched a brow at this guy he certainly was a stickler and unknown to either of them Toru was making faces at the jerk with glasses. Present Mike cleared his throat to gain the attention of all the future students. Nice catch there. That fourth villain is more of an obstacle think of him like a natural disaster something best avoided if at all possible. Now if there are no other questions go to your designated battlegrounds. Give it your all plus ultra. They all dispersed to their battlefields Izuku stood in front of a massive gate as he looked around at all the other applicants not recognizing anyone except there was that girl he noticed in the crowd earlier. She seemed even more nervous than before and now might be the best time to offer her a breathing exercise or two to help calm and center herself. But right as he stepped forward a heavy hand fell on his shoulder. So are you planning to sabotage her from the start by interfering with her warm-up exercise? Izuku looked up into the face of the guy who'd called him and Toru out at the assembly. Is it your policy to jump to conclusions about people you've just met? He asked swiping the boy's large palm off his shoulder as the gates to the training field opened. There are no countdowns in battle go, go, go. Shouted present Mike as from the middle of the crowd a green light shot forward leaving the rest in its dust as Izuku barreled into the battleground jumping up onto one of the buildings taking note of the terrain and all nearby enemies and formulating a plan of attack. Alright one for all let's do this. He said as he closed his eyes and let one for all flow through his body green lightning arcing around and cloaking his body. One for all full cow. He said stepping off the edge and running down the side of the building before dive bombing onto one robot causing an explosion that shattered the windows around him. Izuku snatched the shards of glass out of the air as he ran forward and hurled the shards impaling three robots as he passed by before they exploded. The other applicants looked on shocked at the speed in which Izuku racked up points before they two joined in the fray desperately trying to catch up. In a monitoring room All Might stood in the back never taking his eyes off Izuku as he put his training to the test. He couldn't keep the proud smile off his face until he felt a whack to his shin. Oh, no, oh, no. Oh. Recovery girl why? He shouted hopping on one leg as he clutched his shin. Wipe that smile off your face or have you forgotten how many times I had to come patch the two of you up? The elderly lady in a doctor's coat and eye shield huffed. I told you I'm sorry we both got out of hand back then, but there's no need to worry now. He knows his limits. All Might said as he turned back to the screen just as the principal released the boss of this game. Izuku punched through a robot jumping back from the explosion and chopping through the neck of another robot as he landed watching it fall backwards and erupt in smoke. He was covered in a light sheen of sweat as he did some quick math. I should be at 97 just 3 more and I'll have an even 100. He said jumping up the side of a nearby building to take stock of how many enemies were left before the ground began to rumble and an immense shadow swept over him. 
He looked up seeing the natural disaster they were supposed to avoid. Natural disaster that's more like a cataclysmic event. He shouted shocked at the size of it. He was about to get out of the way of this thing before he heard a scream and looked down to see that brown-haired girl from earlier she seemed to be trapped under some debris caused by the appearance of the zero-pointer. I can't run, he said turning to face the giant robot and felt his face break into the widest smile ever. Shishishi well let's see if I can stop a natural disaster with a punch. Izuku thought he'd feel more fear or anxiety, but all he could feel was excitement. He crouched down channeling his full cowl into his legs before jumping upwards cracking the roof he'd been standing on as he rocketed upwards towards the robot's face. He remembered what All Might had told him about using one for all. Clench your buttocks and scream from the bottom of your heart smash. Izuku took a deep breath and right as got eye level with the bot and went to scream out smash something in the back of his mind shouted as well. Izuku reared back feeling one for all gather in his arm. Pistol smash. Izuku drove his fist into the robot's face caving it and his explosions burst from multiple parts of the robot's body as he began to fall laughing at first before he realized what was happening and looked for a way to slow his descent. Right before he hit the ground someone slapped him across the face and immediately stopped his fall midair. Before he was dropped to the ground and saw the cute girl with brown hair smile at him and then vomit on the pavement. Who thanks for that? For some reason I thought I'd be fine hitting the pavement until I realized I wouldn't be. He said as she gave a thumbs up continuing to empty her guts. Izuku stood up looking at his hand and arm seeing some light bruising and knew at least one bone in his arm was broken. Damn went past my limit. He said as recovery girl came forward handing out candy until she got to him and slapped his shin with her cane causing him to yell. Know your limits do ya? Yeah right. She huffed before healing his arm and taking the girl with her to ease her nausea. Izuku followed the rest of the applicants out of the arena before heading home. The faculty said it'd take week or so before he'd get word on whether or not he passed the entrance exam. He was heading out of the school when someone jumped on his back. He looked up and saw Sky knowing it was Hagakure. So how'd you do Izuku? She asked hopping off his back and walking beside him. He sighed rubbing the back of his neck. I had 97 points, but then I took out that big robot. That we were all supposed to avoid, so I don't know if that'll count against me for not following directions. He said sighing as Toru looked at him shocked. There had been one of those big guys in her area too. And she'd run like heck until time ran out, but he'd gone and destroyed it. That was insane. You're amazing Izuku. She said vibrating with excitement before she grabbed his hand and pulled a pen from her purse and scrawled a number across his palm. That's my number you call me right after you get your acceptance letter understand. The very second after you read it. She said letting go of his hand before rushing off. Izuku looked at his hand and then at the retreating figure of Toru. I'm okay. He said as he headed home. The next week was the longest of his life filled with exercise and repeated mailbox checks. He called Hamato-sensei to tell him how the exam went and was told by the guys they'd throw him a party when he got accepted. He smiled at the thought. He'd also been texting Toru, or well more like being bombarded with Toru's machine gun texts. It was like for every one he sent there was another 10 from her. He was pretty sure the strongest part of his body was his thumb now. As Izuku was lost in thought his mother scrambled into the house with a letter as if she'd wrest it from the hands of some evil organization that was hot on her trail. Izuku I I it's here why your AC acceptance letter. She said holding out the envelope to him. He looked at as if it was a vicious animal ready to rip his throat out before he grabbed it and retreated to his room. Izuku took a deep breath before tearing open the envelope revealing a small disc that began playing a hologram of All Might in his buff form and a yellow pinstriped suit. Greetings young Midori Asari I haven't been in touch this last week dotting is crossing TS and all that. Now I know you're on pins and needles and I'll answer your question right after you see this. The screen shifted from All Might to an image of the girl he'd saved. She was talking to present Mike. I heard him say he only needed three points to pass and yet he gave that up to save me. I I have to pay him back somehow can you give him some of my points? It's not fair he was so close and lost it because of me. She said clenching her eyes against her tears before present Mike put his hand on her head. Don't worry about him he's doing just fine with the points he has, there's no need to give him yours. The screen shifted back to All Might smiling as always in front of Izuku's passing score. How could a school of heroism reject someone for such a heroic act? Yumitoria have made it welcome to UA your hero academia. The screen cut off soon after that as Izuku stood in his darkened room tears spilling down his face as he turned and opened the door finding his mother pacing in front of it and snatched her into a tight hug. I I did it mom, I made it. He said squeezing her tightly as the two cried happily into the other. Izuku walked out of Hamato Dojo turning around and giving a bow to his sensei and his sibling disciples, his brothers and sister. Yoshi, Leo, Raf, Donnie, Mikey, and Mew all felt like family to him he didn't know where he'd be without them. Unlike their father Master Splinter's sons did have quirks apparently the four of them were quadruplets he'd adopted during his time in America and shared the quirk Kappa. They were all anthropomorphic turtles. 
Miwa was his biological daughter from his wife who passed shortly after giving birth to her. She also possessed a quirk. Lamia from the waist down Miwa had a white snake body while from the waist up she was humanoid with scales on her arms and even sported the forked tongue, vertical pupils and fangs. Thank you so much Hamato-sensei for everything I'll try to come by on the weekends to continue my training and see you guys. Splinter smiled patting Izuku's shoulder. It was my pleasure to train you Izuku you're like one of my own and I look forward to the things you will accomplish in the future. Splinter said smiling as he presented Izuku with a medallion with the Hamato symbol it looked like a turtle with four circles on the shell. I gave each of my children one of these when they graduated and now I give this to you. He said placing it around Izuku's neck before making way for his sons and daughter to see Izuku off. Leonardo came up and handed Izuku a small book. Being the oldest means being a leader and it's the same for being a hero the whole country looks up to the number one hero, so I figured this book might help. It got me through some of our rougher ordeals hopefully it will do the same for you. Izuku read the title of the book Perfection The Pointless Pursuit. Nobody is perfect you will make mistakes and I hope this will help you learn from them and keep pushing forward. Leo said bowing slightly to Izuku as Izuku did the same. Yeah, yeah move it. Raphael said pushing Leo to the side as he gave Izuku a new pair of Eskrima sticks. These should be able to handle that new strength of yours and Donnie may have teched them out a bit. Raph said before slugging Izuku in the arm. Knock him dead kid. He said before walking away as Donatello came forward shaking his head. Sorry about our resident brute anyway I talked with your mother about your hero costume and well I hope you like it. He said holding out a briefcase and then dropped a very thick book onto it. And this is the instruction manual everything you need to know about the suit read it memorize it. This is your Bible, Donnie said punctuating each of the last four words with a slap to the book. I think he gets it Donnie. Mikey said vaulting between the two and smiled before pulling out a box. This my friend is the limited edition SDCC exclusive box set of us when we were heroes in America bro. Izuku's eyes nearly burst from his skull as he looked at the collectible. Mikey I I can't accept this it's worth over $500. Izuku said trying to give it back, but Mikey refused. Don't sweat it little bro we all got one, but the bros just gave them to me so I have spares. He said smiling as he put both hands on Izuku's shoulder. I the holy chalupa bless your endeavor my brother. He said before tearing up. I promised myself I wouldn't cry. He shouted before dropping a smoke bomb and disappearing although his crying could still be heard from outside. Miwa sighed. He's so dramatic, here you go. She said handing him a white snake ring. For luck. She said simply before slithering away as Izuku stared at the ring and smiled to himself tearing up as he slid the ring on and looked at the five of them. Thank you so much. He said bowing one last time and then leaving putting Raph's and Mikey's gifts into his bag alongside Donnie's instruction manual. And hefted both case and gym bag as he left. He had somewhere else to go before heading home. Tomorrow would be the start of Yue and he wanted to pay his respects to everyone who helped and encouraged him. He made his way to Dagaba Beach and saw All Might in his small form. He'd called the hero last night asking to meet with him this morning and All Might had agreed. Izuku walked up to All Might setting down the briefcase and Jim back. Thank you for meeting with me All Might I know you must be busy. Izuku said bowing as All Might waved it off. You are my pupil and successor Izuku if I have time you are always my priority now I think I know why you called me here and there is no reason to worry young Midoriya. I had nothing to do with you getting into UA. You did it on your merits and yours alone, so there's no reason to doubt yourself. All Might said placing a hand on Izuku's shoulder as the young boy shook his head. Oh no All Might I would never assume you would break the rules for me. The reason I called you here was to thank you properly. I always wanted to be a hero and I strove for it pushing myself in my training. But I always knew that there was a greater chance of me not getting in without a quirk. Nobody thought I could do it except my sensei and my mother. But then you came along. The symbol of peace and you gave me your quirk. I'm so thankful and I want you to know I will do whatever it takes to make it to the top. I won't give up. Izuku shouted punching his fist into the air and smiling as wide as possible. All Might transformed into his buff form his blue t-shirt stretching tight across his muscular frame. Hahaha <laughs> that's what I want to hear young Midoriya go forth and show the world that you are here. All Might said punching his fist into the air as well stirring the sand from the beach as the morning sun shone upon them both. Izuku said his goodbyes to All Might before heading home seeing his mother waiting on him. Welcome home Izuku did you have fun with Splinter and his family? She asked hugging her son as he walked and kicking off his shoes. I'm home mom and yeah the guys sent me off with a bang. He said smiling as he hugged his mother picking her up off her feet a little startling her some. Izuku put me down stop showing off. She said playfully slapping his back as he set her down. I just wanted to say thank you mom you believed in me when no one else did. And you did everything to help me on my dream no matter what. Introducing me to Master Hamato helping me stick to my diet my UA instructor gave me. You've always been there for me and I want you to know I appreciate it so much and I love you. Izuku said looking at his mother as she teared up quickly the tears streaming down her face like a river as he hugged him. 
You don't have to thank me Izuku it's my job no matter what you do I will always believe in you. Izuku opened his eyes as he stood outside the door of class 1 and took a deep breath before releasing it. This is at the start of my journey to being a hero. No matter what happens I just have to remember the people who put their faith in me. Images of Hamato and his family. All Might and his mother rolled through his head as he opened the door and walked in on an argument. Either get your feet off that desk right now. You are disrespecting the history this desk has seen and all the future students who will inhabit it, shouted the glasses guy who called out him and Toru during the exam ceremony, and jumped to conclusions about what he had planned for the brown-haired girl who he saw was in the back of the classroom and when their eyes met her face flushed and she looked away from him. Get off my ass and get the stick out of yours four eyes. There won't be any future students after me because once I become the top hero they won't need anybody else, shouted Katsuki Bakugu his winning personality at full force this morning. Izuku thought about intervening before he sensed someone approaching him and turning threw his arms out to catch none other than Toru before spinning with her in his arms as she giggled before he sat her down on her feet next to him. Izuku you caught me. Toru giggled glad she was invisible so nobody could see her blushing like a stop sign. Sorry Toru you caught me off guard. He said before a pair of black eyes engulfed his vision. Toru, Izuku first name basis already. You move fast stud no wonder you were the top scorer in the entrance exam. Izuku took a step back to see who was talking to him. It was a pink-skinned girl with frizzy pink hair and horns with black sclear and yellow eyes. Oh checking me out already slow down buddy you don't even know my name. It's Mina Ashido by the way Izuku. She said eyeing him like a lioness before Katsuki interjected himself. Deku the top scorer that's a load of horse shit. Katsuki said rushing over to stand face to face with Deku. What's this shit about you taking out a zero pointer Deku? What you do bribe the judges, blackmail some of these guys with those creepy notebooks of yours. Katsuki shouted before a voice was heard at the doorway. It's too early for this nonsense sit down and be quiet class is in session. They all turned to see a sentient sleeping bag talking to them. The sleeping bag or man inside it stood and unzipped it as everyone took their seats. He reached into his pocket and clicked a stopwatch. My name is Aizawa Shota I'm your homeroom teacher. In the time it took you to quiet down hundreds of lives could have been lost if this were a hero situation. You all have no discipline, but I'm going to change that. We're going to have a quirk assessment test and the bottom scorer will be expelled. There was uproar from all the students as the boy with glasses stood up. That is completely unreasonable. You can't just expel us as you please. Their teacher gave a manic smile as a sadistic light shone in his eyes. Guess we'll see about that won't we? He asked as a shiver went through the students. Put your gym clothes on and meet me out on the sports field. And be quick about it. He said leaving out the door as the boys and girls split off to their respective dressing rooms. Izuku took off his clothes the medallion given to him by Master Splinter and Miwa's ring dangling against his bare chest as he began putting on his gym pants when someone spoke to him. It was a blonde boy with a large tail with a blonde tuft at the tip. You're a student of Hamato Yoshi correct? He said pointing at Izuku's medallion. I saw your medallion and thought I'd ask. Yes I'm Izuku Midoriya. Do you know Master Hamato? Izuku asked slipping on his gym shirt hiding his necklace from view. I know of Master Hamato from my own master. He praises Master Hamato as a warrior and skilled teacher. I'm Mashurao Ajiro nice to meet you Midoriya. He said with a warm smile as the two shook hands. And I am Tenya Eda we took the entrance exam together and I want to say I am sorry for my behavior obviously you had no ill intentions for that girl and saw through to the deeper meaning of the exam. I am truly sorry for my behavior. The boy with glasses said performing a perfect 90 degree bow. Izuku shook his head. Forget it we were all on edge and I can't be mad at you for trying to look out for someone else. Just, you know give people a little more faith. He said patting Ida's shoulder as they left the locker room gathering on the sports field. All right now that you're all here, we're going to do a series of physical tests in which you will use your quirks to get the best score possible. He said before looking at Midoriya and tossing the ball to him. You go first throw this ball as hard as you can. I'll measure its distance with this. Do whatever you need to as long as you don't leave the circle. He said pointing to the circle on the ground as Izuku walked into it and took a deep breath before green energy roiled around him. He took a pitcher's stance before hurling the ball as hard as he could. Aizawa looked at the readout screen of his device before turning it to show Izuku had hurled the ball 750 mt. The other student's eyes went wide at this as Izuku moved back to his standing position. Nice one Izuku, Toru said squeezing his arm against her chest Izuku's arm being squished in between her bests causing the other students to blush and one short boy with purple spheres for hair to bite his lip in a jealous rage. Next is you, Aizawa said cutting through the levity of the moment as he tossed another ball to Katsuki. He stepped forward glaring at Izuku before hurling the ball with a massive explosion. Die. The ball rocketed upward into the sky and out of sight. Aizawa showed off Bakugu's score showing he'd only thrown the ball 705 mt. He growled his palms smoking as he glared at Deku. 
This doesn't mean shit Deku I'll beat Yoris and everything else. He shouted stepping out of the circle as the test continued with the remaining 18 students. But all were astonished when the girl Izuku had saved during the entrance exam revealed to be Achako Yuraraka scored infinity putting all scores to shame before moving on to the next test a 50 meter dash. Everyone seemed to have adjusted to the pressure of the test adapting to the intensity of the moment. Until Izuku and Katsuki stood at the starting line of the 50 meter dash. The pressure seemed to ratchet up through the roof the very air becoming heavy under the tension between Izuku and Katsuki until the starting signal B Bresslaird releasing all that tension into forward movement between the two. Katsuki blasted forward like a horizontal rocket while Izuku pushed off the ground leaving indentions of his shoes in the ground soaring forward as a green bolt. The twos take off blasting air into the crowd of students nearly blowing away the purple-haired boy. But as quickly as it had started it was over with Katsuki crossing the line with a time of 4.13 and Izuku right on his tail with a time of 4.14. What I tell you Deku I'm going to crush you in every test. Katsuki shouted walking away as Izuku watched him go. He shook his head as he thought. I need to up my reaction time against Bakugou or an equally fast opponent me activating full cowl takes too long. The others watched the two boys in awe the quirk assessment didn't seem to matter to them in the least compared to whatever they had against one another. Their mentality seemed to infect everyone making them all push themselves harder. The fated battle of rivals starts here, stated Achako Yuraka as the next two stepped up to the starting line in the end tenyang it had took the top spot with a time of 3.04 seconds. The rest of the tests seemed to follow suit with Bakugou and Midoriya competing with one another rather than just trying to pass the test. In the grip test the top scorers were Izuku with an even 600 kg of force and Mizo Shoji behind him with 540 kg. Katsuki raged at the overwhelming defeat vowing to beat him in the next test, but wound up tying with Izuku as both cleared the sandbox even though Izuku landed farther than Katsuki. Neither gained a foothold in the next test seeing as how the purple dwarf destroyed the record for repeated side jumps. The three remaining tests were of no consequence to the two as they were sure they both were going to be far from the bottom. Alright testing is done and since it would be irrational to call out your scores one at a time I'll put them all up here. He said pressing a button on a remote that called up a hologram with all 20 test scores. Izuku looked and smiled seeing that he was in the top 5. The scores went from Momo Yeyurazu. Izuku Midoriya, Shoto Todoroki, Katsuki Bakugu, Tenya Ida, Fumikage Takoyami, Mizo Shoji, Mashirao Ajir, Ijiro Kirishima, Mina Ashido, Achako Yuraraka, Koji Kota, Rikido Sato, Suyu Asui, Yuga Aoyama, Hanta Siro, Denki Kaminari, Kayoka Jairo, Toru Hagakure, and Minoru Minda being dead last. The poor boy looked shell-shocked his very soul attempting to leave his body as Toru hugged Izuku. I was so close to being eliminated Izuku. She shouted sobbing against his chest in joy. Oh my it's okay Tori you passed in the end that's all that matters. He said patting her head awkwardly as some of the guys glared at him and the girls gave a unanimous awe, blushing at the tenderness between the two. Oh man I so want me some of that. Mina shouted pumping her fists up and down jealously, saying what all the girls in the class were thinking. Oh yeah that whole expelling the lowest scoring student was a necessary deception. No one is going anywhere as of yet. Aizawa said smiling. Go back and get into your uniforms you still have the rest of the day. So I wouldn't rest on your laurels any of the other teachers could do something like similar and they might not be lying. He said walking away as the students gave a huge gulp. Aizawa you're quite the liar. You have no problem expelling students so what happened this time? All Might said looking at Aizawa who rounded the corner the massive man had been hiding behind sporting yellow pinstripe suit. Aizawa cast a lazy gaze to All Might. You're right I would have expelled the last place student or all of them with no problem. The only thing that stopped me was those two. He said pointing at Izuku and Katsuki who seemed to be arguing while Tenya tried to break it up. Those two didn't give a damn about my test it was all about pushing past the other which made the others want to push past them. They inspired the other students to overcome their fear and do their best. That's what we need in heroes. He said simply before walking away from All Might who smiled his trademark grin. You're a kind man in your own way Aizawa. The school day was over and after what Aizawa sensei had put them through Izuku was more than ready to call it a day. He walked out of the locker room spotting Ajiro next to the door. Do you have a moment Midoriya? Ajiro asked as Izuku nodded. Sure thing Mashirao what can I do for you? He asked as Ajiro smiled. Feel free to call me Ajiro for starters. But I wanted to know if you wouldn't mind sparring with me from time to time. My master has the deepest respect for Master Hamato and I would like to face one of his students. You know iron sharpens iron. And brother sharpens brother. Izuku finished for him before holding his fist out to Ajiro. Of course Ajiro I'd be honored to spar with you and call me Izuku. He said as Ajiro bumped his fist against Izuku's. The two exchanged contact info and agreed to train at Dagaba Beach at the end of the week. Izuku smiled seeing Ajiro leave and walked out soon after stopping at his shoe locker to grab his sneakers. 
He walked towards the front door only to be pulled into a shadowy corner. He immediately went on the defensive grabbing hold of the person's wrist only to see that it was Yuraka wearing a pained expression. I am so sorry Yuraka sen I just reacted. He said rubbing the back of his head in embarrassment as Yuraka smiled bashfully her eyes darting to and away from his. It was my fault I shouldn't have grabbed you like that I am just wanted to talk to you alone. Izuku nodded thinking about what this could be about. Thank you for talking to the teachers on my behalf Yuraka sen I really appreciate it. That was really nice of you. He said smiling at her as he saw her eyes shine with unshed tears before she chuckled wiping her eyes. I, I was going to thank you for saving me during the entrance exam. You risked everything for me and now you're thanking me. You really are a nice guy Midoriya. She said wiping her face before looking at Izuku and pressing her lips to his. Izuku was caught off guard it was like some had shut off his brain. He just stood there as Yuraka kissed him. As quickly as it had started it was over. Like I said tth thank you. She said before rushing off. Izuku stood there in the shadow of the entryway of the school with a finger to his lips as he listened to Yuraka's retreating footstep. It felt like an eternity before Izuku walked out of the school building and heading home. Unknown to either there had been someone else there and she had seen everything. So that's how it is then, alright I'm all in. She said leaving the school once she was sure Izuku was gone and headed home to plan her own strategy to capture the greenette for herself. Izuku's head was in a fog after what happened yesterday after school. He'd brushed his teeth last night and this morning and he could still taste Yuraka on his lips. Not that he'd been trying to get rid of her taste he wasn't sure he ever wanted to not taste her. His face was as red as a tomato and people were taking notice. Toru walked over as they sat in class waiting for their teacher to show up. Apparently today was hero study and they had a special instructor for the class. Izuku are you okay? Toru asked placing a hand on his shoulder causing the boy to jump. Oh h hi Toru. No I am fine just I'm excited for class today didn't sleep much last night. He explained hoping that would ease Toru's concern. Or maybe you were up last night dreaming of a special girl and that's why you couldn't sleep. Had to get up early and change the sheets hun, boys sure have it rough. Mina said sitting on Izuku's desk causing the boy to start sweating. See here now, that is not a subject to be discussed in the classroom of all places, and it's Midoriya's personal business you should respect that Ashido-san. Tenya said coming to Izuku's rescue. Mina shrugged as she slid off Izuku's desk her skirt hiking itself up as she did so flashing Izuku a bit of her black and blue striped panties before it fell back into place. Calm down Ida maybe if you relieved some of that stress more often you'd be more chill. It's not healthy to hold back. Right Midori? Mina said as she walked back to her desk as Toru fumed some also heading back to her desk all the while Yuraka sat with her head in her hands her face scarlet as her thoughts were consumed of images of Izuku doing that while imagining her. Oh no Izuku wouldn't do that, he's too nice, but what if he did? I wonder what he imagined us doing. Iraraka felt something wet hit her desk and looked down at a drop of blood. She reached to her face realizing her nose was bleeding. She quickly reached for a tissue as the classroom door opened only to reveal All Might himself in his Silver Age costume no less. I am here to teach. He announced as the class was engulfed in awe of his presence. It's All Might can you believe it? Shouted a red-headed kid with sharpened teeth. Yes it is most incroyable, said a blonde boy with sparkles in his eyes. Yes students it is I all might here to teach your hero studies class, but before that I'd like you all to introduce yourself and your quirks in seating order. I'm sure with all that tension on the first day you didn't have a chance to get acquainted, he said waving his hand at the blonde boy with the perfect hair. He stood up waving his hands at the entire class. My name is Yuva Ayama my most mervelu quirk is naval laser, he said in a French accent flipping his hair in the most grandiose way possible before sitting down. Next was Mina. My name is Mina Ashido and my quirk is acid. I can produce acid from my skin that can eat through almost anything. She said smiling with a wink before sitting back down. The next was a girl with long green hair. And the most impressive poker face anyone had ever seen. I'm Tsuyu Asui please call me Tsu. My quirk is frog and I can do pretty much anything a frog can. Stick to surfaces, shoot my tongue out to 20 meters, jump extreme distances and such. She said before sitting down just as calmly. Next to Stan was Ida his arms bent at perfect right angles as he spoke in a clipped manner. I am Tenya Ida my quirk is engine. The engines in my calf allow me to augment my running speed. It is a pleasure to meet you all and thank you all might for allowing us this proper introduction you are truly a studious man. He said before bowing to their teacher who scratched his cheek bashfully. I'm your welcome young Ida. Man I'm doing great at this teacher thing. All might thought pridefully as the next student introduced herself. Achako stood up taking a deep breath casting an eye at Izuku to see he was looking to and away from her with a blush on his face. My name is Achako Yuraka my quirk is zero gravity. By touching something with all the pads on my fingers I can make something weightless until I release it by touching my pads together again. Achako sat down quickly looking to Izuku to see he was writing in a notebook and noticed he switched to a new page as each student introduced their power. 
Wonder what he's doing. She thought as the next person stood. My name is Mashur Alajiro my quirk is tail. He said as he flexed his tail seeing it bulge with muscles before sitting again. The next was a blonde boy with a black lightning streak through his hair. Hello ladies the name's Denki Kaminari quirk electrification. In other words I'll give you a shocking experience. He said winking at all the girls in the room earning a series of you amused faces as he sat down. Giving a cough the red-headed boy who spoke out first stood up. I'm Ijiro Kirishima my quirk is hardening. I can make my skin like stone. He as his hand became rigid before he released it and sat down. The next boy stood up he had a rock-like head and in his hands a piece of paper that read. Koji Kota quirk Anna voice. I can speak to and control animals with my voice. He quickly sat down as if the act of standing was too outgoing for him. The next to stand was a muscular boy with brown hair and thick lips. Rikido Sato quirk sugar rush. The more sugar I eat the stronger I get, but my intelligence goes down accordingly. After Sato was the tallest boy in class with silver hair covering one eye and a mask across his face, one of his nubs became a mouth to speak for him. My name is Mizo Shoji my quirk is duplirons I can replicate any part of my body with one of them. Nice to meet you, he said with a small bow before sitting back down. A girl took his place and stood with purple hair and earphone jacks trailing from her earlobes one of which she was twirling with her finger. Kyoka gyro quirk earphone jack. I can plug my jacks into almost anything and then blast my heartbeat into it, even directly into someone's brain. She said casting a vicious eye to Denki and the purple short stack who both gave a loud gulp. After her was a black-haired boy with a wide smile and long arms. I'm Hantasiro and my quirk allows me to shoot a tape-like material out of my elbows. He said giving a salute to the class as he sat down. After him was the most unique of all the students. A boy with a crow's head stood up. You may address me as Fumikage Takoyami. My quirk is dark shadow I have a sentient shadow beast within me that I use to do my bidding. As if to demonstrate said shadow beast came from his stomach giving a thumbs up. Yep that's me. It said before disappearing as quickly as it came once Takoyami sat down. After Takoyami stood a boy with two-tone white and red hair and blue and gray eyes. He had a large burn mark over his left eye. Shoto Todoroki quirk, half hot, half cold. I use fire with my left side and ice with my right. His face never changed and his voice was as flat as two-day-old open soda. Toru took his place her uniform vibrating with excited energy. And Toru Hagakure my quirk is invisibility and no it's not voluntary I've been invisible since the day I was born. It's so nice to share a class with you guys. Let's do our best. She said giggling happily before sitting down. Izuku placed his hands over his ears for what came next knowing what Bakugo would do and since he sat right behind him he didn't want to go deaf at such a young age. Listen up all you scrubs because I'm only going to say this shit once. I'm Katsuki Bakugu quirk explosion. In other words I'll turn you effers into ash in a heartbeat if you get in my way. Especially you, effing Deku. Katsuki said turning around to face Izuku who was taking his hands off his ears. Even with that precaution he could still hear Katsuki clear as day. He sighed as he stood up. Duly noted Katsuki. Hello I'm Izuku Midori and my quirk is stockpile. He said casting an eye at All Might who gave an imperceptible nod. I store energy in my body and then use that stored energy to augment myself, such as my enhanced strength. I look forward to spending the next few years with all of you, he said with a small bow before sitting down. Everyone was surprised to hear Izuku speak so eloquently after seeing him compete so fiercely with Katsuki they had assumed the two were more alike. But it was like night and day. Midoriya and All Might had talked about what to call his quirk since one for all was a secret he had to come up with something believable that explained everything. So to avoid lying outright they decided to just reveal the stockpile part of the quirk. The shortest kid in the class stood up his purple spheres shining in the classroom light. I'm mind to minoru my quirk is pop off. I can take these balls off my head and stick them to anything. Depending on how healthy I am they might stay for a whole day. He said tossing the ball repeatedly in his hand. They also don't stick to me. I want to get to know all of you especially all the girls. He said a dark gleam in his eyes that sent a shiver through all the girls in class as he sat down. Giving a polite cough the last student stood up. Her figure drawing the eyes of most of the students not to mention her perfect appearance from her coiffed hair styled into a bountiful ponytail and her perfectly pressed uniform she was the vision of order and decorum and spoke just as well. My name is Momoye Yurazu my quirk is creation. I can create any non-organic object given that I know enough about its structure. Pleasure to meet you all. She said taking her seat once more as All Might clapped. Wonderful. Wonderful now that you all know a little about each other I hope you begin to grow your relationships as well as your quirks. Now get dressed. He said as he pressed a button and small doors sprang out from the left wall with each student's number on them. The support companies worked hard on your specific costumes and now we'll put them in you to the test. Get into your costumes and meet me at testing ground beta for your lesson. He said before opening the door and running full speed away kicking up a small dust storm as he did so leaving his class to get ready for whatever the pro hero had in store for them. 
All Might stood at the entrance to training ground Beta as he heard footsteps and saw the students approaching in their hero costumes. Yuga appeared in something akin to knight armor with a violet sparkling cape. His belt also seemed to be modified more than his usual and on his face was a red wing-shaped visor. He seemed to shift position every few seconds to show off how magnificent his suit was on him. Mina came out in a purple and turquoise skin-tight bodysuit combined with a vest with fur along the collar and a white mask. Suyu's suit was also skin-tight colored black and green with yellow frog markings with goggles on her head and heels that mimicked frog feet. Whereas Yuga only took the knight motif so far Ada went all the way wearing full-body silver-colored armor with engine pipes along his legs and a helmet that fully covered his head except his eyes. Achako's suit was a skin-tight bodysuit colored black and pink with large cuffs around her wrists and pink boots with cushioned heels. Izuku could hardly take his eyes off her until he heard mine to say how awesome this school was. He looked at the boy and shook his head, not sure whether to be impressed by his brazenness about his perversion or pity him for the brutal retribution he would no doubt receive in the future. Minda was in a full purple bodysuit that came up over his head as a mask with yellow gloves, boots and cape. Izuku saw that Anjiro was sticking to his roots in simplicity dressed in a karate gi with a fur collar and a hole for his tail. Izuku nodded at his friend's choice of hero attire. Denki wore an open black jacket with white lightning patterns a white shirt underneath with black pants with white lines down the legs boots and some kind of communicator on his head. Hijiro wore a wired guard over his face and two dark red gear-shaped shoulder pads a belt with a red R in the center of it baggy black pants and a half cape with a ripped hem with black boots. Toda wore a dark yellow and red body suit with matching suit with his hero symbol being a set of teeth in the center of his chest. Rikido wore a yellow full body suit that transitioned into a half face mask where his brown hair stuck out from a seam atop his head and white gloves and boots. Shoji's costume was a two-tone blue sleeveless shirt that extended upwards onto his face ending right below his eyes. The bottom of his suit was a bronze belt around light blue pants that were tucked into dark blue boots. Gyro wore a black leather jacket ripped pink shirt underneath black pants and boots with speakers along the front and a pair of white fingerless gloves with speakers along the back of her hands with headphones on her ears. Red triangles under her eyes and a black choker around her slender neck. Sira wore a black and white full body suit with a yellow helmet that looked similar to a tape dispenser with a black full face visor. The sleeves of his costume were cut short and he wore white boots with shoulder pads matching his elbows. Takoyami wore a black full body cape and black boots. Todoroki wore a shite long sleeved shirt with matching pants while the left half of his suit from head to toe seemed to be encased in ice with one glowing red eye. Izuku was a little embarrassed to see that Toru's costume was a pair of light blue boots and gloves meaning that Toru was standing there naked, invisible or not that was a brave choice in hero attire. Izuku saw that Katsuki's suit was as intimidating as he would expect. A black sleeveless tank top with an orange X across his chest. His entire forearm was encased in gauntlets that looked like old-fashioned grenades with the actual things adorning his belt. He wore brutal-looking knee pants that were sure to leave a mark on whoever they landed with baggy pants and combat boots with a black and orange mask with flared ends. Momo's costume was the most eye-catching a simple red leotard with a large orange belt on the back of which rested an encyclopedia and matching red boots. Izuku's costume was a dark green full body suit while on the back there were darker green patches forming a turtle shell pattern. A green wraparound mask adorned the top of his head the remaining fabric flowing around the back of his head. His forearms were encased in black gauntlets with bracers and reinforced knuckles. He had on black combat boots and on his outer thighs was a holster for both of his eskrima sticks. He also wore a utility belt around his waist with numerous compartments. Wow Izuku who made your suit it's awesome man. Hiroshima said as Izuku smiled. Oh my brother Donnie has his own support company he and my mom worked together on designing this. He said as the other students took notice. You all look amazing super heroic. All Might shouted happily before getting down to the lesson. Alright you zygotes listen up. Today will be a mock indoor battle between two person teams. Hostage situations. Underground deals. Illegal trafficking all these take place inside buildings under unknown conditions. The premise of this foundational training will be as such. The villains will be guarding a WMD that the heroes will be trying to secure by either capturing the villains with this capture tape, All Might held up several rolls of tape between his fingers, or by securing the WMD. Of course the villains need only keep control of the weapon until time runs out or capture the heroes. Your teams will be chosen at random via these two boxes no come up and grab hold of your destiny. All Might said loudly as the kids all wore expressions of over-the-top much. Izuku was walking back from drawing his lot and passed by Toru who he bumped into feeling something squish against his arm. He jumped back waving his hands in apology. As so sorry Toru I don't I didn't see you there. He said unsure of how that would go over. No problem Midoriya I'm usually more visual than I am now don't worry about it. She said as she walked forward and drew her lot. 
There was another accident with the girls later on Gyro tripped over Toru dragging both into falling into Mina and Yuraraka. But other than that there were no other mishaps before the team was revealed. The first team up would be Midoriya and Gyro as the heroes versus Tenya and Bakugou as the villains. Izuku looked over locking eyes with Bakugou who wore a vicious smile. So it's been decided Gyro and Midoriya will take on Tenya and Bakugou. The villains will get a 5 minute head start to set up before the heroes are sent and everyone else to the monitoring room to watch. All Might announced as Tenya and Bakugou entered the building leaving Gyro and Izuku outside to wait for the signal. In the monitoring room Mina, Toru and Yuraraka were fuming each having saw Izuku's letter when he apologized to Toru for bumping into her. The three had then each tried to get the right one, but before any of them could check their lot Toru and Gyro had fallen on them making them drop their lots, which meant that they couldn't be sure who actually had the right lot not that it mattered now since Gyro was with Izuku. Izuku breathed a sigh of relief. He was still just shaken up about what happened with him and Yuraraka. If he had been partnered with her he wouldn't have been able to concentrate on the battle to come. He looked over to Gyro and smiled holding out his hand. Gyro said right. I'm glad to be working with you let's win this thing. He said as Gyro looked at him with an inscrutable gaze before shaking his hand. You're really into this aren't you? Or is it because you just want to beat Bakugo? What is it with you too? She asked letting go of his hand as the starting signal rang and the two walked into the building. The moment Izuku stepped into the building Gyro felt a change in him it was like he was hyper focused. The look in his eye sent a chill down her spine and heat through her core. It was like she was standing next to a lion. She bit her lip at the danger Izuku seemed to exude as her face blushed. I and Bakugou were friends for most of our childhood, but when he got his quirk he changed and started acting like a bully. I distanced myself from him and focused on my training which only upset him more and he began picking fights with me. I always tried to avoid that outcome, but now I have a chance to show him a better way and hopefully change him before it's too late. Gyro smirked. You really are a hero trying to save Izuku lunged towards Gyro wrapping his arms around her as he pulled her out of the way of an explosion caused by Bakugou who wiped away the smoke looking at Izuku who was on top of Gyro who lay on her back on the floor. Gyro was blushing madly as she stared at Izuku who had his eyes on Bakugou. She could feel the heat off his body and smell whatever body wash he was using. It smelled so good she felt like wrapping her arms around she rubbed her thighs together. In the monitoring room Kirishima could be heard complaining. A sneak attack Bakugou not manly at all bro. He said punching his fists together before he felt a wave of malice behind him. He looked over to see Mina and Yuraraka with intense glares on their face. And though he couldn't be sure it seemed like Toru was equally furious. See you guys get it too. That's no way for a man to fight. Hiroshima said feeling validated by the girl's outrage. Izuku stood up helping Gyro to her feet. Gyro I know we didn't really have time to come up with a plan. But for now just try to locate Ida and the bomb I'll hold off Bakugou and then come meet you. He said as Gyro nodded running off as Izuku and Bakugou stared each other down. Just you and me Deku it's time for me to grind you to dust like the shitty pebble you are. He shouted launching himself at Izuku with a right hook only for Izuku to catch his arm spin on his heel and slam him into the ground hard knocking the wind from him. I know everything about you Katsuki. You thought you were tormenting me these last few years but you were actually giving me the best training I could ask for. You always start a fight with a big right hook, Izuku said as he stood above Katsuki only to have Katsuki jump to his feet and unleash an explosion towards Izuku only to find the greenette gone. Now it's time I put that knowledge to use. Izuku spoke from the shadows. Well look at those moves Midori's really full of surprises, Mina said as the other students agreed before watching the smoke disappear from Bakugou's explosion only to find Izuku gone. Everyone began scanning the many camera screens not finding a trace of the green hero in training. He disappeared, Minda said looking around at the screens. The only one not surprised was Ajiro who said nothing and continued to watch. Izuku was hidden in a shadowy corner as he whispered in his communicator to Jiro. Jiro are you okay? He asked before hearing a reply from the sound girl. Yeah I'm good thanks for the save back there. You doing good over there? She asked as she moved the through corridors stopping to jam her ear jack into the walls making sure she wouldn't be ambushed by- I'm fine I've got Katsuki trained on me. Now I have plan if you want to hear it. Izuku said peeping around his corner seeing Bakugou angrily combing the hallways for him. I don't have a lot of time before he does something drastic. Izuku thought to himself as Gyro gave her reply. Yeah you seem to have this dialed in so what do you need from me? She asked as she made her way up a staircase. Find Ida he's no doubt guarding the bomb. I'll try to capture Bakugou and meet up with you. It's the only way if I leave Bakugou alone he'll know and no doubt come to Ida knowing I'll be there and with his explosions it's more likely the WMD will be blown apart rather than capture. I want you to monitor Ada as studious as he is he's not going to leave that bomb's side. Once you find him I'll give you a signal to enact the finishing part of our plan. Jiro nodded as she listened to Izuku's plan with a smile. I can totally do that dude just let me know when. 
she said smiling as she quickly climbed the stairs. This was going to be so rocking. In the monitoring room All Might fiddled with the camera controls switching it over to infrared to find where Izuku was hiding. But just as he did Izuku appeared above Bakugo dropping down on him with an axe kick that the blonde blocked with his sizable gauntlet before blasting another explosion engulfing the two in smoke. Hit and run tactics Deku Yukao. Katsuki received a kick to his right knee dropping him into a kneeling position before he countered with another explosion only to receive a stick to his left cheek sliding him across the floor before he jumped to his feet. Where are you? Bakugu shouted unleashing a spinning explosion ring around himself. But once he stopped he felt a kick to his chin launching him into the air before he backflipped in midair launching an explosion straight down. Izuku dodged the explosion feeling the heat off it as he slid back into the smoke. His eyes were closed as he listened for Katsuki to land. Splinter had taught him how to fight without his eyes. It was necessity for his training. He placed a palm to the ground as he felt the vibration of Katsuki landing and running to where he'd last seen Izuku. Izuku stood up moving slowly as he listened to Katsuki's heavy breathing before swinging at the back of his head with both of his eskrima sticks only for Katsuki to dodge and blast towards his stomach which Izuku kicked to the side bathing them both in smoke as he jumped over Katsuki bringing both his sticks down on his back dropping Katsuki to the ground before jumping back into the smoke. The hallway was completely bathed in smoke the cameras could only tell what was happening because of the infrared. How is he doing that it's like he's teleporting? I know Izuku said he had been trained in martial arts from a young age. But he never said that it taught him how to do this, Sato said before looking at Ajiro. Hey Mashurao you said that you knew Izuku's dojo can you explain what he's doing? Sato pointed at the screen as Izuku seemed to appear out of thin air and narrowly miss a roundhouse kick to Bakugu's head. I'm not all that familiar with this technique. This is my first time seeing it in person. Izuku trained under Master Hamato Yoshi a genius in the school of ninjutsu. My master has though and he said it's called phantom movement or shadow stepping moving silently around your opponent to disorient them before delivering a series of strategic blows to bring them down. I've heard that this technique was derived from a much deadlier ancient technique where the user can kill their opponent in total silence that the victim doesn't even know they're dead. It was called the silent killing. The entire class gasped at that piece of information. Midori is a ninja no freaking way. Siro shouted looking at the screen like a child at a new toy. I don't know man ninjas don't fight like real men. You should engage your opponent face to face no tricks. Kirishima said crossing his arms in disagreement. What no way ninjas are awesome they can sneak into anywhere like a girl's dressing room. Minda was cut off by Tsu's tongue slapping him across the face. Midori is not a pervert like that. Toru shouted before All Might clapped for their attention. Now students I can't say whether I agree or disagree with Midori as methods. But it is important to take advantage of everything a situation gives you. Who can tell me what Midori's strategy is utilizing? He asked as Momo raised her hand alongside Ajiro. Yeyurazu san All Might called out. Yes, Midoriya-san is taking advantage of his past with Bakugu allowing him to guess what Bakugu will do next. He's also taking advantage of the smoke from Bakugu's explosion allowing him to outmaneuver Bakugu. Though I can't explain how he moves so well since the smoke blinds him as well I will attribute that to his ninja training. Finally Bakugu's temper and stubbornness are also in Midoriya's favor. Instead of Bakugu retreating to a more advantageous area he's choosing to tough it out hoping to gain the upper hand while wasting precious energy. She said making air quotes around the phrase tough it out. All Might smiled weakly at Momo's perfect assessment. Yes well very good Yeyurazu. But you can't discount Bakugu's unwillingness to give up. There's always a way to turn any situation to your favor if you're patient and remain calm. Bakugu stood panting in the middle of the nearly destroyed hallway his body bruised and covered in sweat. His gauntlet glowed red for a second as he smiled before running to the end of the hall placing his back against the wall. Now there's no escape Deku. I'm going to blow you away. He shouted pulling back the trigger on his gauntlet releasing a pull pin. I hope you're ready to die. Bakugu shouted releasing an explosive wave down the hall. But the powerful explosion was too much for the already wrecked hallway. The ceiling collapsed under the force of the explosion. Bakugu watched the ceiling break apart above him. As it began falling he was snatched out of the way by none other than Izuku who slammed him to the ground wrapping the capture tape around his wrists behind his back. You idiot what were you doing? Izuku shouted hoisting Katsuki up. Was it really that important for you to beat me you'd put all of us in danger? He asked dropping Katsuki to the ground as the boy looked up at him with anger. Why didn't you use your quirk hun? Katsuki shouted. What? You think you're so much better than me you can beat me without it. I'm the best Deku you're nothing. Izuku looked at Katsuki shaking his head. I just beat you Katsuki you're captured, but that's not what this was about. I didn't use my quirk because you did all the work for me. I wanted to show you what your pride will do to you and your career if you don't wake up. Izuku said dragging Katsuki to the destroyed portion of the building. What if that had fallen on you or worse you brought the entire building down on all of us? Is that what a hero does destroys everything around him? 
You're an amazing person Katsuki you always have been. But your pride is going to hold you back or worse destroy you. Izuku dropped Katsuki in front of the rubble. I guess it's my fault too I shouldn't have let this drag out as long as it did. I suppose I wanted to get back at you for all the bullying and I was wrong for that. Look we're not friends I don't think we ever were. But maybe we can be. I respect you Katsuki, I do. But this the way you are now, this isn't going to help you. Izuku said before running off to execute the last of his plan leaving Katsuki in the rubble of his arrogance. Ada was standing in the top floor room in front of the bomb as the entire building rumbled. Bakugu, Bakugu what was that? Bakugu come in. Ada shouted into his communicator getting no answer until All Might's voice rang out over the PA system. Bakugu has been captured. Ada sighed thinking something like this might happen as he remembered Bakugu's ranting. That loser thinks he can F with me. I'll show him, put him in his place just like before. Ada shook his head as he got ready for a two-on-one battle. In the name of villainy I will not let this weapon go. On the outside of the door Gyro rolled her eyes. This guy takes himself way too seriously. At that moment Gyro heard Izuku's voice in her ear. Gyro I'm in position ready when you are. Gyro smiled as she plugged her jacks into the door blasting it open as she looked to Ada. Give it up hero you will never get this weapon from me. Ada shouted as Gyro plugged her jacks into each of her boots and sent out two pulses of sound into the room shattering the glass in the room as Ada raced towards her. Haha I knew you might try that so I stuffed my ears with paper. He shouted as he jumped into the air going for an engine powered kick before All Might spoke on the intercom. The heroes have secured the weapon. Midoriya and Gyro mission accomplished. Ada veered off course so as not to hit Gyro as he kicked out a portion of the wall next to her. Gyro's eyes widened in shock at the prospect of having almost been kicked by that. What? How? Ada said looking back to see Izuku sitting atop the WMD. Simple really I had Gyro send out a massive sound wave to shatter the windows while I hung outside on the wall. I knew you wouldn't be able to hear me over Gyro's sound and would go to take her out, so I just climbed in one of the broken windows and well here we are. Though if I had known you stuffed your ears with paper I probably would have just had her climb in a window seeing as you wouldn't have been able to hear her anyway. Ada hung his head in shame before taking off his helmet and looking and smiling at Midori. You really are quite the strategist Midoriya. Midoriya shook his head. Yeah but I should have been here sooner instead of dragging out my battle with Katsuki. He said as the three of them exited the building with Katsuki bringing up the rear as they entered the control room. Midoriya that was awesome you have to teach me how to sneak like Thaw. Minda was stepped on as the rest of the class gathered around the winning team. Midoriya how did you do all that disappearing stuff and those moves were really cool man. Siro said nodding at the boy's agility and speed. Why didn't you tell us you were a ninja man? Would you have to kill us if you did? Sato said sweating a bit at the thought of Midoriya sneaking into his room to slit his throat. You and I are kindred spirits, both one with the darkness. Takoyami said with a nod as Izuku arched a brow. Um thanks guys, but we all did our best out there. I wouldn't have been able to do it without Gyro. He said placing a hand on her shoulder as she blushed. Uh, it was nothing just doing my part. Gyro said twirling one of her jacks. In the back of the room Shoto looked at Midoriya and scowled. Incredible strength, analytical mind, peak martial arts. I'm going to have to keep an eye on you Midoriya Izuku. Shoto thought as All Might coughed gaining the class's attention. Yes well done Gyro and Midoriya. Now would anyone like to tell me where either team went wrong? This time only Momo raised her hand. Yes, Yeyurazu. All Might said a bit hesitant. The villain's first mistake was Bakugu splitting off by himself. He put his personal feelings above his mission to protect the WMD. Instead he engaged in a drawn-out battle with Midoriya that collapsed a portion of the building endangering himself, the weapon and the other participants. Meanwhile Midoriya drug out the battle longer than strictly necessary allowing for much more destruction that could have been avoided had he incapacitated Bakugu sooner. Izuku rubbed the back of his head at Momo's assessment having come to the same conclusion himself didn't stop the evaluation from stinging any less. Once again All Might was left with nothing to say in the face of Yeyurazu's assessment. Man this girl is good. Very good Yeyurazu. But the first match out of the way the other matches began in earnest with each student getting a breakdown of their flaws in battle from Yeyurazu except for Todoroki and Shoji who completely dominated their opponents in their match leading to Tor. Whining against Izuku's shoulder. I tried really hard Izuku you know that right. Toru said against his shoulder as Ajiro shook his head disappointed at such an overwhelming defeat. I it's alright Toru you'll learn for next time. He said patting her shoulder lightly as he did his best to ignore her bare bests against his chest. He cast an eye at Todoroki thinking of how he would have handled that in Toru's place and coming up with very few successful strategies. After class that day Izuku waited until he could get to Yuraka alone. It was time they had it out about what happened yesterday. He found her as she was heading to the train station and grabbed hold of her hand startling her. I am sorry Yuraka I was hoping we could a talk. He asked as she gave a wordless nod. The two walked over to the side of the street as Izuku took a deep breath only to be cut off before he started. 
I'm sorry I shouldn't have kissed you. Izuku nearly swallowed his tongue as he coughed waving his hand. No, no it's I mean I'm not sorry. I really enjoyed it, but I mean we um. Did you kiss me as a thank you or was it something dot more? He asked rubbing the back of his head biting his tongue in embarrassment at Yuraka's silence. He cracked open one eye and saw Yuraka with her hands covering her mouth and unshed tears in her eyes as she shook her head. It was so much more. You're so kind and smart. And you're just a really good person and I was wondering if we could go out sometime. She said pulling her hands away from her mouth. Izuku felt his mouth moving before he even registered what she'd said. I'd love to. He said pulling out his phone as he and Yuraka exchanged information. Right as Izuku was getting his wits about him Yuraka threw a stone into his gathering calm scattering it once again. See can we um k kiss again? Yuraka asked placing a finger to her lips. Izuku turned so red he was pretty sure all the blood in his body just went to his head. I oh well you see dot yes. He said looking at Yuraka's lip as they drew closer to his until their lips touched. She tasted even better than he remembered as he slowly wrapped an arm around her waist hearing a small eep as he did so before she melted into him more her lips were so soft as they caressed his until both needed air as they broke apart. They stood there panting looking to and away from one another before Izuku let go of Yuraka. The two shared a bashful smile before Yuraka left leaving Izuku alone stepping out onto the sidewalk and noticed Toru standing there. His eyes widened in shock. Did she see us together? No there's no way right. But what if she did what is she going to say? Izuku's mind was running at a hundred miles an hour as Toru stepped towards him. By Izuku you're still here. She asked walking up to him. Izuku breathed a sigh of relief that she hadn't seen him and Yuraka together. He didn't want Toru to see him like that. Oh yeah Toru just heading home what about you? He asked as Toru took his hand in both of hers. Izuku let's go out. She shouted all in one breath. Izuku felt like the wind was knocked out of him. I I really like you Izuku and well I want to know if you would go out on a date with me. Izuku was lost. In the span of five minutes he'd gotten two dates from two different girls. He knew what he should do, but he couldn't Toru was his friend. Before Yue she was probably his only friend and he knew this took a lot of courage to say. He couldn't hurt her by rejecting her, but he also couldn't two time on Yuraka he didn't want to be that kind of guy. Izuku looked up stealing himself to reject Toru's offer and saw tears hanging in the air. Those tears in her eyes broke his resolve. Of course I'll go out with you Toru, he said smiling sadly as his gut roiled in shame. Toru jumped up and down for a moment before hugging Izuku. You won't regret this Izuku I'll text you everything later. She shouted excitedly leaving Izuku feeling as if he'd swallowed Mina's acid. As Toru walked off she scowled. I won't let you come between us Yuraka you may have got the jump on me asking him out first, but I won't lose to you. Izuku had just left the house his mind on the two dates he suddenly had when he was grabbed from the side and pinned against a wall by none other than Bakugu. As if I didn't have enough on my plate. He thought as Bakugu let go of his shirt and looked at him. Look here I don't give a damn what you or anyone else thinks of me I'm still going to be the best hero there is. But you did beat me and that will be the only time Izuku you hear me. I'll be the best hero in my own way not yours so just stay the hell out of my way. He said walking away from Izuku. Izuku stood there frozen in thought. D did he just call me Izuku? He asked his brow arching as he felt a small smile on his face. Maybe I did change your mind a little Katsuki. He said a feeling of accomplishment blossoming in his chest as he made his way to Yue. Izuku took his seat in class as the bell rung and Aizawa walked in. Everyone in class shared the same feeling of anxiety at seeing the erasure hero standing there. Oh man what's he going to have us do this time? Izuku thought his heart pounding as Aizawa began speaking. Alright today we are going to dot pick the class representative and vice representative. Aizawa said as the entire class released a breath of relief before everyone started shouting for themselves to be nominated. As everyone clamored for the position Izuku thought about whom he would pick and the first person to come to mind would be. He was logical and a steadfast upholder of doing things by the book. And Yeirazu would be a good partner to his unbending adherence to the rules. She was more relaxed and more likely to keep Ida from going overboard. Everyone please this is not how we should conduct ourselves. Ada shouted his hand straining straight up in the air. Ooh Ada you want this more than anyone it seems. Sue said calling out Ada's mismatched words and actions. Ada coughed taking his hand from the air. Yes well I think we should hold this to a vote. Whoever receives the most votes will be our class representative and the secondary person will be the vice class representative. Ada explained. But wouldn't everyone just vote for themselves how would that work? Hiroshima questioned as Ida adjusted his glasses. Well yes if everyone is selfish and only thinks of themselves that will happen. But I believe that all of us as future heroes willing to put our lives on the line to save others are more than willing to do what's best for the class as a whole rather than for ourselves. Ida said as each student nodded. Just get it done I don't care how. Aizawa spoke already in his sleeping bag after having placed an empty box on his desk. 
All the students took out pens and paper writing down who they thought should be class rep and put them in the box on the teacher's desk. Aizawa stood up after everyone had handed in their votes began sorting through them before announcing the verdict. The class rep with three votes is Izuku Midoriya. Aizawa said in a lifeless voice before Katsuki stood up shouting, Which of you bastards voted for Izuku? He reviewed the room not being able to pick out any of the perpetrators before sitting down and growling as Yuraka whistled in the background. With two votes the vice class rep is Momoye Irazu. Aizawa said as Izuku and Momo stood in front of the class. Izuku looked at the class at large. He wasn't sure about this he'd never really wanted a leadership position, but he supposed that the book Leo gave him would be put to good use now. Um are you guys sure about this I don't really think I'm qualified for this. He said as he was met with disagreement. What no way bro you've got this I definitely trust you as our class rep. Kirishima said with a thumbs up. Yeah you even went so far as to try and show back Yugo what a jerk he is. If you went that far for him I know how far you'll go for the rest of us. Jairo said a slight blush on her face as Bakugu growled. F you earlobes. He shouted as he seethed in his seat. Izuku nodded in acceptance. Thank you all for the trust you have in me I'll do my best to not let you guys down. He said with a bow to the class. After everything was made official the rest of the day proceeded normally with Izuku sharing a table with Ida. Yuraka, and Toru at lunch. I'm glad to see you've accepted the leadership role Midoriya as one of the people who voted for you I can't wait to see how you bring the class together. Ida said as Midoriya arched a brow. Well that's ironic because I used my vote on you Ida. Midoriya said taking a bite of his katsudan as Ida sputtered. What really you thought I would be a good representative? Ida said adjusting his glasses. Midoriya shrugged looking at Ida. You enforced the rules trying to keep the class on the straight and narrow. You set a good example for what a hero should be. I think that's awesome and someone I can follow without question. Ida took off his glasses and rubbed his eyes before replacing them as Yuraka smiled. Awa Ida don't cry. Yuraka said patting Ida's shoulder as he smiled. No, no it's just he reminded me of my older brother there. He said something similar to me once. Ida explained as Midorian narrowed his eyes trying to remember what he knew about Ida. You said you came from a hero family right Ida? Your brother wouldn't happen to be in Genium would he? Asked Midoriya as Ida coughed on the juice he was drinking. H how did you know? Ida asked looking at Midoriya in shock who shrugged in return. It wasn't hard saying you came from a hero family and your engine quirk which has been a staple in every ingenium it was pretty obvious. He said as alarms started to go off and students began to leave the cafeteria in a rush. Ida managed to grab hold of an upperclassman that was passing by. Excuse me what's going on here, what are the alarms for? Ada asked as the older student explained saying that UAS perimeter had been breached and according to procedure all students should evacuate to the designated area. Midoriya who had been listening and waved to the class getting them out of the cafeteria. But the moment they stepped outside all of Wana was swept up in the raging river of the student body trying to get out as quickly as possible. Izuku was pushed and shuffled like clothes in a dryer as he was jammed against the wall downwind of Ida who seemed to be trying to tell everyone what was happening after looking out the window. But no one could hear him. Izuku grit his teeth as he watched Ida try to get hold of Yuraka. He didn't know what his plan was but Izuku trusted Ida and moved forward steadily before giving Yuraka a push towards Ida allowing her to make him float in midair before jettisoning himself through the air and landing above the exit. Everyone calm down it's just the press outside we are not in any danger. He shouted calming the student body in one fell swoop. Izuku smiled as the students placidly exited the school building. On their way back to class Izuku caught up with Ida and stopped him. Ida I'm going to hand over the position of class rep to you after what you did at lunch you des. Ida held up a hand stopping Izuku in his tracks. Midoriya I know what you're going to say and we both know that I wouldn't have been able to do that without your help. Ida said eyeing Izuku down his glasses. I know you pushed Yuraka towards me in order for me to inform everyone about what was happening. That is why you would still make better class rep. You help everyone without asking for anything in return even with no recognition. I know you'll do great. The taller boy said as he patted Izuku's shoulder and walked away. Izuku sighed smiling at his friend's faith in him. The school day was over and he and Yeirazu were the last to leave after cleaning the classroom. Izuku looked over his shoulder at the taller girl. He'd seen the disappointed look on her face when it had come out he would be class rep she really would be best for it. And he had no problem giving it to her. But it wasn't just himself he had to think about. Three people had seen fit to put their trust in him one of them being Ada who wanted the position more than himself, but had turned it down even after Izuku offered it to him. Izuku took a deep breath before walking over to Yeirazu. Yeirazu I know you really wanted the class rep position, and to be honest I think you would be a better fit for it than me. He said squeezing the handle of his broom tightly as Momo turned to the boy eyeing him. He wasn't wrong she did want that position, and she really didn't know why people put so much faith in Midoriya. 
He was powerful, good-natured, and to be honest kinda cute with those freckles of his, but she wouldn't say he inspired confidence as a leader. I know I'm being selfish, but I want to give this my best shot even though I know I'm not all that qualified for it. But I can't let down the people who voted for me at least not without trying. But I know I won't get anywhere without you by my side. He said stepping closer to Yeirazu who blushed at the close contact stepping back slightly realizing for the first time she was alone with a boy. I need you Yeirazu, so please just give me a chance. But if you say no I'll understand and hand the position over to you right now. I'd rather try with your help than stubbornly hold on to something that I know I'll fail at without you. He said bowing his head to her. Momo's head was spinning to say the least never before had she been struck with such blatant honesty. Looking at Izuku right now she could kind of see what it was about him that made people put their trust in him. Momo sighed before she spoke. Raise your head Midoriya I won't abandon you just because you got the position I wanted. I'll lend you my full support as your vice representative. She said holding out her hand to Izuku who shook it eagerly. Thank you so much Yeyorazu I'll try not to let you down either. He said with such a bright honest smile Momo felt as if she was staring at a new star as her heart skipped a beat. Izuku woke up that Saturday morning early as usual before the sun had even risen and taken his morning run to Tagaba Beach his feet hitting the sand just as the sun began cresting above the horizon. He was dressed in a long sleeve shirt and jean shorts his trademark red sneakers on his feet as he began stretching. He was meeting Ajiro here this morning for that sparring session they'd agreed upon. But at the moment that was farthest thing from his mind right now the only thing he could think of was the two dates he had with Yuraka and Toru. He was still conflicted about whether to date both of them, but the thought of rejecting either made him feel ill. Izuku you okay? Ajiro asked having called Izuku's name several times and not getting a response before clapping his hand on Izuku's shoulder watching the green-haired boy nearly jump out of his skin. Ojiro, Izuku said clutching his chest as he stared at Ajiro who wore an expression of confusion and concern. Are you alright Izuku you seem distracted. Ajiro said standing there in a plain white t-shirt and karate pants with black and white sneakers. Oh no, nothing really just enjoying the sunrise you know. Izuku said rubbing the back of his head as he gave a nervous laugh. Ajiro turned to the rising sun as well and took a deep breath of the salty sea air. Well it is nice to appreciate the simple things in life. He said before doing a couple stretches and then took a fighting stance. Are you ready? He asked his tail raised as Izuku nodded taking a fighting stance as well. Both waited for a moment before Izuku struck first a straight fist to Ajiro's face who ducked to avoid it sweeping at Izuku's feet with his tail as the green-haired boy back flipped out of the way landing on his feet just in time to catch a fly. Kick from Ajiro and threw him over his shoulder watching the boy spiral in midair before dropping to his feet standing there for a moment as the two stared each other down before engaging again each throwing and blocking the other's strikes until Izuku seemed to lose focus getting slammed in the stomach by Ajiro's tail being thrown onto his back. Izuku are you okay? The blonde asked holding his hand out to the down boy who took it and pulled himself into a sitting position on the sand as Ojiro took a seat next to him. Yeah I'm good just lost my focus is all. He said rubbing his stomach a little. Ojiro nodded having felt that Izuku's head was somewhere else since he'd arrived. That strike you used at the start was a sun fist right? Ajiro asked to which Izuku nodded. Which you countered with dragon sweeps his tail and then went into the shadowless kick. Izuku said as Ajiro nodded in agreement. That you countered with horse drinking water. I knew you would be a good sparring partner. Now do you want to tell me what's got you in such a twist? Ajiro asked as Izuku sighed deciding to trust Ajiro with his problem. I I have two dates today dot with two different girls. I don't want to reject either, but I also don't want to string them along just to avoid a hard decision. Izuku admitted looking at Ajiro expecting a stand-up guy like him to call him out on such a thing instead Ajiro wore a complete poker face. But as they say still waters run deep and though his face was placid inside Ajiro was filled with several conflicting emotions. The first of which was happiness at his friend's apparent success with the opposite sex. But on the other hand he was a little jealous. Within a week Izuku had gotten not one but two dates with different girls. The sting of being so outclassed was a bit much to bear. Ajiro took a deep breath calming himself as he thought about what to say to Izuku. Well I'm just going to go with what I think is best. I think you should go on both dates after all these are first dates right. Ajiro inquired to which Izuku nodded in agreement. I thought as much so I think you should just go ahead on both after all expecting yourself to make such an important decision without getting to know more about them is a decision doomed to failure. There's always going to be that what a feeling if you didn't go through with one. Izuku nodded his head thinking about what Ajiro had said and had to admit he was right he couldn't just shut one down without getting to know her. But wouldn't getting to know them make it that much harder to break things off with one? Izuku asked to which Ajiro nodded. Yes it would but then you'd have a clearer choice and wouldn't regret it as much because in the end you have to choose. Ajiro said as Izuku ran that statement around in his head before standing up. I guess so, but I don't want to keep this a secret either. I think being honest with them is for the best. Thanks Ajiro you really helped me out. 
Izuku said holding out his hand to Ajiro who took it as he stood up. No problem I hope things work out for you. Ajiro said as the two shared a fist bump before Izuku went on his way. Ajiro shook his head. Maybe I'm the one who has it easier not having to weigh other people's hearts on a scale. He said before making his way home as well. Uraraka was rushing down the sidewalk she was so late and knew it too. She'd spent so much time trying to decide what to wear and now she was late. I hope Midoriya hasn't been waiting long. Nice going Uraraka late to your first date. She chastised herself as she rounded the corner and saw Izuku standing under a tree at the entrance to the park. He was dressed in a long sleeve shirt pattern to look like All Might's Silver Age costume with jeans and his usual red shoes. He looked up seeing Uraraka and waved at her causing the girl's heart to skip a beat as she saw his smile. I'm so sorry Midoriya I know I'm late. She said clasping her hands in front of her pink and white checkered skirt her arms framing her bests in her cream yellow shirt. Izuku gulped looking away from her chest and scratching the back of his head. No, no I haven't been waiting long at all. He said knowing he'd showed up an hour early just to be absolutely sure he wasn't going to be late. Hiroraka smiled at his nervous lie trying to make her feel better about being late. Oh Izuku you're so kind. She thought to herself as he offered his arm to her to which she eagerly grabbed hold of. So what you said a walk in the park right? He asked as they began making their way into the park seeing people enjoying their sad thoughts of work and school millions of miles away. Izuku had no idea what to say to break the ice as they walked down the path arm in arm until something popped into his head. Hey Yuraka why did you decide to become a hero? I mean your quirk could be useful probably anywhere you go. Construction would probably be the most useful place for you. Moving heavy building materials with your quirk would definitely cut down on the manpower needed and expensive equipment. He said looking over at Yuraka who had a wide-eyed stare on her face before she exploded. That's what I've been saying for years. She shouted startling the green-haired boy. Yuraka covered her mouth as she blushed. Sorry, sorry it's just my parents own a construction company and once I got my quirk I thought the same thing you did. And they even have licenses for people to use their quirks in specialty jobs like construction and stuff, but my parents thought it wasn't a good idea. They don't want me to have to work a hard job like construction, so instead of doing that I thought if I became a hero and made lots of money I could provide for them like that. She said blushing as she scratched her cheek. That's a bad reason to become a hero though isn't it? She asked hoping she hadn't come off as some money-hungry girl. I don't think so. I think that you're a great person for wanting the money to help your family after all it's not like you're just in it for yourself. You have a goal beyond just you and I think that's special. He said looking down at her as she blushed staring into his brilliant green eyes. What about you Midoriya why do you want to become a hero? Izuku smirked thinking back to his childhood of how he wanted to be just like All Might the symbol of peace. My reasons have changed over the years. At first it was just to be like All Might and then it was to prove Katsuki wrong that I wasn't a Deku. But then once I helped you in the entrance exam it became clear to me. I just want to help people, no more, no less. I know what it's like to be powerless and I want to show people who feel like that there's always something more, something better. He said before chuckling realizing he'd been rambling. Sorry about that Uraraka I just got carried away. He said as he turned to her feeling her lips on his once again. He blushed as he pressed himself against her indulging in the moment before they pulled apart. I'm sorry it's just I think I fell for you all over again. Uraraka said blushing as they heard a whistle and looked to see a food truck owner with parfait in each hand. You two are so sweet together. Here have these on the house. He said as Izuku and Uraraka each took one. Way to go kid. The man said giving Izuku a thumbs up and a wink. Izuku blushed heavily as the two walked away to a bench to indulge in their sweets. Hearing Uraraka say she had fallen for him he knew what he had to do now before things went any further. Uraraka I I have something to tell you. I like you, I really do. I find you sweet, cute and a caring person, but I also have another date today with someone else, and it's not that I don't care for you, but I might also care for her. I'm not sure but I owe it to her and to us to find out if there might be something there. I don't want to have any regrets in choosing you and I feel like if I don't do this there might be this big what if hanging over our relationship. Do you understand? Izuku asked as Uraraka stared down at her pastry silently. Izuku feared the worst that he might have ruined something before it was even started. But to his shock Uraraka turned to him with a bright smile. I understand Midori. You have to do this for us in our relationship I totally get that and I'm happy that you were honest with me from the beginning. But can I ask you something personal you know just between us? Uraraka asked turning on the most deadly pair of puppy dog eyes he'd ever seen. As sure go ahead. He said swallowing. Uraraka smiled in gratitude. Why does Katsuki call you Deku? Is it not short for Deku you know as in you can do it? Uraraka asked as Izuku sucked his teeth at the question. It wasn't something he liked talking about, but given the context that Uraraka gave it, it showed him how nice a person she was. Well thanks for giving Katsuki the benefit of the doubt, but no. When I was a kid I wasn't very capable. 
and Katsuki thought it would be funny to change the letters of my name to mean Deku as in worthless. Izuku balled up the empty wrapper of his parfait in frustration at his once friend's cruelty. Yuraraka frowned darkly at the realization of how many times she'd heard Katsuki say that to him. I'm sorry for asking. I thought it sounded cool like the name of a really great hero and I was going to ask if I could call you that too. Yuraraka frowned at her oblivious insensitivity. Izuku smiled as he gave a laugh. Don't worry about it that's in the past. And sure after what you just told me I'd be more than happy to be called Deku by you. He said as Yuraraka smiled hugging Izuku from the side. Oh thank you Deku. She said as Izuku hugged her back before they got up and exited the park heading their separate ways. As Yuraraka walked away she bit her thumbnail thinking about what she'd just learned. I can only assume he was talking about Toru, but I'm not going to back down from this. Izuku told me about this date because he's obviously going to choose me. But what if he doesn't all be left out in the cold? I can't take that chance but what can I do? She said to herself. Later that evening around 5 Izuku stared at the building in front of him feeling as if an icy fist was gripping his insides. T Toru are you sure about this? He asked staring at the blinking neon sign. Toru giggled at his side clutching his arm to her chest as she whispered into his ear. There's nothing to be afraid of Izuku I'll make sure this is the best experience of your life. She said huskily causing the boy to shiver as she began pulling him inside. Toru walked up to the counter dressed in skinny jeans with white heels and a striped blue and white t-shirt the outfit accentuating her full figure. Izuku swallowed staring at Toru's butt in those tight jeans as she shifted from side to side in excitement. Toru turned around quickly spotting Izuku diverting his eyes from her and smiled as she grabbed his arm again as they were lead down a hallway and stopped in front of a door that opened into a karaoke room. Izuku was pulled inside and pushed onto the couch as Toru sat next to him grabbing the tablet on the table and going through the songs. Ooh I love this song. Toru said showing him a pop song he'd probably heard a thousand times, but never bothered to listen to. Well you should definitely go first. I'm not much into music, he said as Toru started playing the song and singing along. Izuku watched mesmerized by Toru's gyrating body as she became one with the rhythm. Even though she was invisible he could practically see the joy on her face as she let the song move her. This is what he loved about Toru. She was infectious propagating happiness and joy to whoever was around her. She was like a sun raining down rays of elation on everyone who was around her. Toru collapsed down next to Izuku panting slightly as their drinks arrived and she took sip from her pink lemonade while Izuku swirled the straw in his soda. He watched her chest rise and fall with each breath and the way her throat moved with each swallow. He found his mouth dry as the Sahara after watching her. You know Izuku I never did properly thank you for saving me. She whispered leaning against him her hair tickling his nose smelling of peaches. She nuzzled against him giggling some. You smell good. She whispered as she placed a hand on his stomach feeling the hard muscle there before dancing her fingers across his abs causing Izuku to laugh. Toru stop I'm ticklish. He said grabbing her hand as the other started dancing along his ribs causing him to fall to the side collapsing in a fit of laughter unable to keep Toru from climbing on top of him to continue her assault. Say uncle, Toru said as Izuku bucked upward slamming his pelvis against hers knocking the wind from her as Izuku grabbed hold of her arms holding them at her side. He took a deep breath to collect himself as the last of his giggles subsided. He looked up at Toru and then to where she was sitting and his eyes grew wide before trying to move out from under her grinding himself against her as he did so causing her to let out a small squeak before she plopped down on the couch. Toru I am sorry about that really I am. He said as he heard Toru speak. I felt it Izuku. She said sliding closer to him breaking the boy out in a sweat. It's okay I don't mind really. She said reaching toward his zipper before Izuku stopped her. Toru why I do feel that way about you, but I don't think we should go there just yet, he said as he looked at her holding her hand in between his. Today I had a date with Yuraka and I'm going to tell you what I told her. I like both of you, but I don't know which one to choose. But I know I can't of you both, that's why I went on both these dates today to see if I could sort this out. I like being with both of you. Toru you were my first friend in a long time and I love being around you. You brighten up everything around you, he said stroking her cheek as he stared into where he assumed her eyes were. I need time to make a decision, but I wanted you to know how I felt, he said as he sighed. It's okay Izuku I, I understand. You're such a good guy I bet you were tying yourself in knots about this weren't you? She asked cupping Izuku's face. It's a little sad knowing I wasn't the first to ask you out, but you still said yes. You risked everything to spare my feelings by telling us both the truth. That's the reason I like you so much. You're everything I want in a boy and even if you don't pick me I know you'll still be the best friend I'll ever have. She said moving forward and kissing him wrapping her arms around his neck as she crawled into his lap and wrapped her legs around his waist. It was like she was some amorous octopus and he was her willing prey. He could feel Toru's passion invading his body and her desperation to have this moment last as long as possible. 
Not wanting to disappoint Izuku squeezed Toru against him running his hands through her hair filling his nose with her scent as they massaged each other's lips before coming up for air. Both were panting as Toru climbed out of his lap rearranging her clothes as Izuku did the same both standing up. We should probably go our time's almost up. He said as he opened the door for her and the duo went out into the cool night air. Let's get you home Toru. He said as he offered her his arm again and the two walked off through the darkened streets before they were cut off by several familiar figures. Well, well if it isn't the little shit who ambushed us and stole our test subject. Izuku looked at the one who spoke a tall man with slime hair running down from his head alongside him were two other familiar faces the lizard man and squid face in addition to the three were several other males all looking at Izuku and Toru. What a surprise meeting you again. Now I can pay you back for what you did to my face. Slime shouted pointing at the scars across his face as the group advanced on Izuku and Toru. Izuku what are we going to do? Toru asked as Izuku stayed in front of her as they were steadily corralled into a deserted alley. He clenched his fists ready for a fight until he heard something and ducked pulling Toru with him as a spray of blood painted the walls where they had been. Slime watched in confusion as Lizard Man and Squidface fell to the ground headless. What the F? He shouted looking at Izuku and Toru before turning to the rest of his group finding them equally as dead and a man with a red scarf and cloth mask stood there. The long jagged blade he carried stained with blood as he looked at Slime with the intensity of the sun and coldness of a blizzard. The man moved and Izuku found himself moving as well blocking the sword swing at the man's wrist before going for a palm strike which the man avoided sliding to the side and dropping his sword from the hand Izuku held catching it with the other, swinging making Izuku let go as he jumped back from the blade. The two stood on opposite walls of the alley. Why would you protect this scum? The man questioned Izuku as Slime and Toru stood still. He may be a criminal, but I can't let you kill him, even he deserves the chance to change his ways in the future. Izuku said as he and the stranger locked eyes. The stranger smiled. Splinter has trained you well boy, but he's still not willing to do what's necessary. The stranger said rushing Izuku before jumping above him onto the wall and throwing a knife at Slime before climbing up the wall to the roof of the building. Izuku realized he had been faked out and activating full cowl dashed forward to grab the knife, but was too late the knife embedded itself between Slime's eyes. Izuku watched his body fall in slow motion before hitting the ground with his face forever stuck in that shocked expression. Izuku fell to his knees as Toru came to embrace him. Izuku are you okay? She asked as she pulled out her phone and called the police as Izuku stared down at the dead thug. I, I couldn't save him. I was right there and I couldn't keep him from being killed. He whispered to himself. This failure weighed heavy on him. How was it possible that even with this new power he couldn't keep a single person from dying? The police arrived quickly and took Izuku and Toru's statement before letting them go as Izuku was walking away he heard one of the officers commenting on the crime scene. Hero killer stain strikes again, but this is the first time he's saved someone, what's his deal? He goes around killing heroes and then suddenly decides to off some thugs. Doesn't make sense Izuku kept that thought in mind as he said goodnight to Toru. He couldn't help, but go over the fight with stain those moves the way he wielded his sword. They were all known to him, and worse he knew Master Splinter. What could it all mean? He thought to himself as he got home and went into his room his thoughts plagued by thoughts of Stain and his inability to save that thud. I couldn't save him, I failed. He whispered to himself as he fell asleep. Izuku looked around the space he was in it was completely pitch black he couldn't even see his hand in front of his face or so he thought until he realized that from his eyes down his body was completely blacked out as if it was part of the room itself. He struggled trying to move his body at all, and failed and without a mouth he couldn't even call for help wherever he was. But then suddenly he heard a multitude of voices. Can you believe how fast this is happening? One of us will meet him soon. Izuku looked towards the source of the voice, but couldn't make anything out except some shadowy figures in the distance. I told you he was special believe it'll. Another voice spoke before a female voice rang out. I know this is exciting and all guys but remember he is a lot younger than any of us were when we inherited one for all. It's our job to teach him how to use this power as such I think that. Suddenly the voices were cut off as if someone had shut a door and before Izuku stood a frail looking man reminiscent of All Might's true form with long hair that covered one of his eyes. The man gave a gentle smile before speaking. Sorry about them they're just excited about meeting you is all. I know you must have questions and I'll try to answer them in the time we have. I'm the original user of One for All. And the voices you heard before were the people One for All was handed down to. He said giving Izuku a moment to process what he was saying before continuing at the boy's nod. You are the most compatible person I've seen with One for All. You see One for All isn't just a quirk it's a collection of people's consciousness and powers as such it has a consciousness of its own. And it seems to like you. So much so it has started to open up to you giving you access to its stored power and us. Izuku's head was reeling from this. All Might did tell him that One for All had been passed down to multiple people and stored their power, but nothing like this. No doubt you're asking why Toshinori didn't tell you this, it's because he doesn't know. 
One for all has never opened to anyone like it has to you. The closest I can think of was when it let me speak to Toshi's predecessor allowing me to tell her of a change within one for all itself, but nothing like this. I just want you to know that no matter what happens we're here for you. You are not alone you carry all of us with you. The man said giving a smile much like All Might's before the darkness began to recede around Izuku pulling the strange man from him as he was thrust into consciousness. Izuku opened his eyes sitting up in bed and yawned. He remembered fragments of his dream from before the most notable part being, You are not alone, you carry all of us with you. Izuku felt a smile on his face at that as he climbed out of bed and went to do his morning routine. As he went through his morning thoughts of the fight last night ran through his head. Stained, he said walking out of the bathroom back into his room as he knew what he had to do today. Izuku got dressed in one of his many All Might shirts with jeans as he headed into the kitchen seeing his mother go about making breakfast. He smiled walking up behind her and kissing her on the cheek. Morning mom, he said sitting down at the table right as his mother set a plate of eggs and toast in front of him. Morning Izuku, you slept late today usually you're gone before I get up. That date you had yesterday must have really taken a lot out of you. Inko said causing her son to choke on his freshly buttered toast. Izuku pounded his chest as he looked at his mother in shock. H how did you know? He gasped out taking a sip of his orange juice to clear his throat as his mother wore a smile reminiscent of the Cheshire Cat. I'm your mother Izuku I notice things like my son getting ready for a date. She said smiling as she smeared jelly on her toast while Izuku sat there blushing and eating his eggs. I hope I get to meet this young lady soon. She said with a wink as Izuku began shoveling food into his face to hurry past this awkward mother-son conversation. I'm going to the dojo for a while I'll be back later. Thanks for breakfast mom. He said placing his plate in the sink as he drained the juice from his cup which quickly followed into the sink as Izuku sped to the front entrance and out the door after putting his shoes on as Inko gave a small giggle. I can't wait to tell Hisashi. She said smiling at her baby boy growing up. Izuku arrived at the dojo trying to remove his mother from his thoughts as he focused on the matter at hand. Izuku slid the door to the dojo open and found Master Splinter sitting at the front of it drinking tea. He must have just finished his morning training. Splinter's eyes opened after setting down the tea letting out a sigh of contentment. Izuku good morning what brings you here this early? Splinter asked as Izuku sat in front of him. Sorry to come by so early master, but I had a question only you can answer. Splinter nodded giving Izuku the signal to proceed. Izuku took a deep breath before starting in. I met a man last night. He was using our techniques dot to kill people. He murdered several men in front of me. They weren't good men, but they didn't deserve to die. I was hoping you might know who this is. Izuku asked as he looked into Splinter's glazed eyes. It seemed as if his master was a million miles away. Splinter closed his eyes for a moment as he released a shaky breath. Izuku this isn't something we should discuss. I have nothing to say on this matter. Sorry you came here for nothing. Splinter said rising to his feet. Izuku bit his lip debating on whether to leave or not, but shook his head. Sensei please. This man killed people in front of me using our techniques and I couldn't stop him. I tried to protect one and I failed. I wasn't able to save him please you have to tell me who this is. Izuku said standing to his feet staring at Splinter's back only for the older man to turn around. Yoshi looked into Izuku's eyes always so expressive. The boy wore his heart on his sleeve so Splinter could tell that this man's death affected him greatly. Izuku your compassion is remarkable. Splinter said before sitting back down and waving for Izuku to do the same which he did. The man's name is Oroku Saki, and he was once my brother in training. I was older than him by a decade, but I looked at Saki as my younger brother both training under my father. Both of us had a strong sense of justice and pursued heroics. But even then I knew without a quirk no one would accept me as a hero, so I protected this area as a vigilante while Saki went on to pursue a career as a licensed hero. Our paths split at that point. I found love in my wife Tang Shen and stopped being a vigilante. But Saki grew displeased with hero society and began exerting his own justice killing villains instead of taking them in. Splinter rubbed his forehead at remembering these dark moments of his past. At the time I didn't know this. I was too involved in myself to notice what was happening to my friend until Tang Shen was killed. Splinter swallowed hard trying to keep his tears from falling and Izuku felt his pain. He knew how important Tang Shen had been to his master. He felt awful making Splinter go through this, but it had to be done. Saki was killing people and had apparently been doing so for a long time without being caught. It was an accident drunk driving kids. Saki came to me wanting for us to get revenge for Tang Shen, but I refused. I couldn't do that to Miwa. I couldn't make my daughter an orphan, her mother killed and her father a murderer. Saki saw this as an affront to Tang Shen's memory, a woman he thought of as an older sister. He killed those kids and I didn't stop him. It was only after he had done the deed did I confront him. We fought, but I couldn't do what needed to be done. I let him go and excommunicated him from our dojo, but I couldn't live with the guilt of having let him kill those kids so I left Japan with Miwa heading for the US. I had only recently returned when your mother asked me to train you. 
I had my reservations. But the look on your face back then the determination to follow your dream gave me hope and now seeing the man you've become lets me know I made the right decision. Splinter said placing a hand on Izuku's head. Don't do what I did. I let Saki go because of our past. Don't let the murder of those men cloud your judgment. If you choose to pursue him do it the right way understand. Promise me you won't break the rules for him or to catch him. Izuku stared into Splinter's amber eyes and gave a single nod. I promise Sensei I will bring Stain to justice the right way or not at all. You shouldn't feel guilty about choosing not to seek revenge for your wife. It was an accident and though I never met Tang Shen I think she would be proud of your choice. He said smiling and filling Splinter with pride as the boy stood up and left. Izuku returned to school the next day this being his first official day as class rep he was eager to pay back everyone's trust in him. As Aizawa walked in Izuku lead the morning greeting to their homeroom teacher. Stand. Bo good morning Mr. Aizawa. The seated all students followed suit before sitting down again. Izuku breathed a sigh of relief glad he hadn't forgotten or said anything wrong. Out of the corner of his eye he noticed Yuraka giving him a stealthy thumbs up before Aizawa began speaking. Good morning now today we'll be taking a trip to one of the training fields, so get in your costumes and head out to the bus. He said simply before leaving the classroom as the students headed for their respective locker rooms. In the boys' room the standard male comrader he could be felt as the boys discussed what they'd done over the weekend. Ajiro looked at Izuku as the two got dressed. So how the dates go? Ajiro asked keeping his voice low but apparently not low enough as Maita was pulled from trying to listen to the girls through the wall zeroing in on Izuku who he pounced on being caught on instinct by Izuku. Minta what are you doing? Izuku shouted shocked halfway through pulling on his suit as the purple midget writhed in his hand like an angry ferret. Who was your date with Midoriya? Minta shouted alerting all the boys to the brewing situation. What no way Midoriya had a date with who tell us? Denki said sitting on the bench nearest Izuku as most of the male students crowded around the green-haired boy aside from Bakugu, Todoroki, and Takoyami. Izuku looked at Ajira who held his hand up vertically in front of him in apology as Izuku was then swarmed with questions about who he was dating. In exact opposition to the noise the boys were making the girls' locker room was silent as a crypt due to the thick veil of tension that emanated from two girls, Yuraka, and Toru. The other girls looked on at the two slowly dressing trying hard not to breathe too loudly. What's up with those two? Tsu asked Tomomo as she zipped up her uniform and began tightening her gloves. The creation girl shook her head before. I don't know, but we can't let this continue. She said walking over to Toru and Yuraka. Um excuse me girls I know we aren't all that close, but as vice class rep it's my job to make sure everyone in class is doing well, so what seems to be the problem? She asked as Toru and Yuraka turned towards her radiating death and malice. Momo felt a chill run down her spine as she took a step back. No I can't Midoriya is counting on me to help keep this class in order. I can't let him down. She thought before stepping forward only for Mina to slide in between the trio. Isn't it obvious? It's about a guy. She shouted breaking Yuraka out into a blush and judging from Toru's fiddling fingers she was also quite embarrassed. WWW what an no it's not T. Yuraka objected hurriedly getting dressed as Toru slid past the other girls and out the door. The tension having left the room completely at Mina's outburst as the girls evacuated the locker room the last being Gyro who pulled her earphone jack out of the wall her face red. Midoriya had a date, with who? She thought to herself as she followed her fellow females outside meeting up with the boys as they gathered onto the bus. The last person to board being Izuku after having made sure that no one was left behind. He climbed on and began heading towards one of the only seats open next to Tsu. He didn't notice the multiple looks of disappointment by the other girls each having had their extra seat taken. I hope you don't mind Asui. Izuku said as he thought about what he'd learned from Splinter and then about Stain himself, the memory of his failure still fresh in his mind. Not at all Midoriya and please call me Tsu. The frog girl said looking at Izuku noticing the dark and involved look on his face. She felt bad for him wondering what could have the boy in such a state. Midoriya what's wrong you look sick. She said drawing Izuku from his ruminating. It's nothing Asui. I am couldn't help somebody when they needed it is all. He gave her a half truth not wanting to tell her how he'd let someone die right in front his eyes. Were they a friend of yours? She asked looking at him curiously as Izuku shook his head. No I didn't know him at all he wasn't he wasn't a good person. But I think he could have been a better person if given the chance it just sucks I couldn't help him. He said as the eyes of that thug swam across his vision. He looked confused as if he didn't know that he had died or why. Izuku's fellow students looked at him somberly to know that the Greenettes felt sorrow for not helping a complete stranger one who he said wasn't a good person no less. While well, Midoriya that's heavy bro. Hiroshima said from his seat next to Tsu who took Izuku's hand. Izuku I'm sure even if you didn't help him the fact that you tried meant a lot to him. Take solace in that. Su said patting Izuku's hand before letting go causing the greenette to smile before Katsuki put in his opinion. Stop being such a whiny beach Izuku. Next time try not to be such a cat. Katsuki shouted causing the other students to sigh in exasperation. 
Come on Bakugu that's not cool man. Kirishima said as Denki shrugged. He's just being himself I guess. We all know Bakugu's personality is flaming shit mixed with garbage. Denki said as Katsuki's eyes glared a hole into the electricity user. What you say shit stain? Bakugu shouted as Izuku smiled a new light in his eye that Su took notice of. What's with that smile Izuku Bakugu just laid into you pretty harshly. Su spoke as Izuku shook his head. That's just Katsuki's way of telling me to do better. He knows I'll wind up doing something like that again if it comes down to it. He said as Su touched her chin in contemplation. Mina sat across from Izuku staring at the boy as she licked her lips. He's such a good guy I wonder what he's hiding under all that sweetness. I hope it's something naughty. She thought to herself rubbing her thighs together as Momo and Yuraka stared at the green-haired boy both enamored by his strong sense of justice. Toru was a bit conflicted she knew who Izuku was talking about and she couldn't say she agreed with him completely. That guy had tried to assault her and the only reason he and his friends had been there was to get revenge on Izuku for stopping him. Karma was not to be trifled with. For her part Jairo remained stoic, but even she was touched by Izuku's fervent desire to help everyone he could. Alright that's enough we're here everybody off the bus, Aizawa said as the students filed out of the bus and were greeted by none other than Rescue Hero 13. Everybody say hello to your guest instructor 13 she will be in charge of your exercises today. Aizawa explained as the class said hello to 13. It's a pleasure to meet you all and welcome you to the Unforeseen Simulation Joint or USJ for short. 13 explained as she lead the class into the massive structure in which was housed five different areas. Izuku could hardly believe they were still inside a building. Today's lesson will be comprised of you all carrying out mock rescue missions in each of the five zones those being the mountain, landslide, conflagration, ruins, flood, and downpour. Every day there are all kinds of natural disasters ranging from earthquakes to forest fires. It is our job as heroes to use our abilities to assist the victims of these disasters. I know some of you are thinking your quirk couldn't possibly help in rescue mission, but that's not true. 13 held up one of her fingers to the class. My quirk is black hole one of the most destructive forces in the universe, but I use this quirk to clear debris and remove harmful materials. But if I'm not careful I could accidentally kill someone, and that goes for any quirk. We need to think about how best to use our quirks in every given situation. Izuku nodded taking in this information. It had to be divine fortune that today he'd be going through rescue operations after all if he knew what he was going to learn today during Stain's attack maybe he would have been able to handle it differently. But as 13 continued with her speech Aizawa turned suddenly as a black shape took form in the middle of the USJ plaza as he looked on figures started to emerge from the steadily growing portal. The students took notice of their homeroom teacher's demeanor with Kirishima walking forward. I thought we were doing rescue op. Aizawa held out a hand in front of his students stopping their approach. Stay back. This isn't part of the exercise. 13 protect the children. Kaminari try to get a signal out to the main building. I'll hold them off. Aizawa said as he pulled his goggles down over his eyes and then bounded down the stairs engaging the foremost villains after erasing their quirks. Izuku moved towards Ida getting the taller boy's attention. Ida you need to get out of here and warn the teachers outside. He whispered as Ida looked at him. But Midoriya Kaminari is already working on that. Ada said before Kaminari gave out bad news. Sorry guys no go there's something blocking my transmissions. We're completely cut off from the outside. The lightning blonde spoke disappointedly. See we need you to get out of here and to warn the other teachers. You're the fastest of us after all. Izuku said as the warp gate user appeared before them. Sorry to interrupt your school day students, but we desperately need to have a word with All Might and we're told he would be here today. But since he doesn't seem to have appeared just yet I'll have to ask you students to keep my comrades company for a while. Stand back students all hand. 13 stepped forward popping off the cap to one of her fingers and began sucking the warp gate user towards her, but had to break off her attack as Kirishima and Bakugu jumped towards the villain breaking her line of attack before inevitably being drawn into the villain's portal. How rambunctious you all deserve a timeout. The villain spoke as he began to engulf the majority of the class. Izuku looked at Ida as he managed to save Yuraka from the portal. Remember Ida you need to get out of here. He shouted as he was swallowed by the darkness only to come out seconds later above a large body of water and crashing through the water's surface. He opened his eyes seeing nothing around him before starting to swim to the top only to notice a swift shape moving towards him. Sorry kid I'll try to make this quick. The shark-like villain snarled opening his mouth wide as Izuku curled his finger. He wasn't sure if this would work underwater, but he had to try. He waited for the villain to close in, but right before he could flick his finger Tsuyu appeared slamming her feet into the villain's face before springing off him out of the water and dragging Izuku with her onto a nearby boat. Izuku took a large breath of air as he sat up only to hear someone speaking before a purple body was slammed onto the deck next to him. Mind are you alright? Izuku said checking to see if the boy was still conscious after a hard slam like that. 
He looked to be fine as Izuku turned to Asui guessing what might have happened to make her slam him onto the deck like that. Thanks for the save Asui I wasn't sure how long I would have lasted without you. Izuku said as Minta sat up looking over the railing at the gathered water villains. I told you to call me Tsu and don't thank me we're not out of danger yet. They have us surrounded and outnumbered. Tsu said in her traditional monotone as Izuku cupped his chin thinking about what to do. Look all we have to do is stay put the heroes will get here and they'll take care of this. Minta said tugging on Izuku's suit. Besides it's not like we can do anything look at these guys. Minda shouted tossing off a couple of his balls and then pointing at the futility of his attack as one of the villains made small waves with his hands to keep the balls from getting near him. Su looked at Minta and in traditional Asui fashion asked, Minda are you sure you want to be a hero? Causing the grape-haired boy to glare at her. Shut up frog girl of course I want to be a hero, but we don't stand a chance. Tell her Midoriya. Minta said as he noticed the green-haired boy staring at the villains and their reaction to Minta's balls. We can't wait Minta. Eventually either they're going to come onto the boat or more likely sink the boat and pick us off once we're in the water. We have to fight and I might have a plan but I can't do it without either of you. Minta's eyes filled with tears as he stared between the green-haired duo. You two are nuts. Not all of us are badass ninja warriors like you Midoriya. Izuku dropped down to a knee placing his hands on Minta's shoulders. I know that, but you two are badasses in your own way. I can't save all three of us, but if we work together we can get all of us out of this. I need you to trust me, both of you. He said looking between Tsu and Minda who after a moment nodded in agreement. Good now here's the plan. One of the villains in the water was tired of waiting as he swung his hand creating a wave of water that sliced the boat in half watching both halves sink right before one of the kids jumped over the railing green lightning arcing around his body. Dumb move kid. The attacking villain shouted ready to slice him to pieces. Full cowl 100% smash. Izuku punched down towards the surface of the water the pressure of his punch carving through the water pushing it outward all the way to the floor of the lake making a fist-shaped hole there before the water started to wash back in. Izuku was pushed upward from the force of his punch before Tsu's tongue wrapped around his torso and pulled him along with the jumping girl as he saw Minda throwing ball after ball into the swirling villains causing them to clump together into one large mass. Izuku looked back at Minda who was bleeding down the left side of his face and smiled. That was totally badass Minda. Izuku said giving Minda a thumbs up as Tsu smiled. The both of you are badass, she said as they landed near the shore of the lake looking onto the battle between Aizawa and the villains. At the USJ entrance the remaining students looked on as 13 unleashed the full power of her quirk against the warp gate steadily sucking him towards her. Give up villain I will not allow you to harm these students, she shouted increasing her suction. The students looked on as Ida stared at the front door Izuku's words in his head. You have to get out and warn the teachers Ida. Tenya stood up looking at the door. Midoriya put his faith in me I can't let him down. Ida felt a hand on his shoulder and saw Yuraka at his side smiling. Deku trusts you Ida so we're going to do everything we can to help you. Yuraka said even though she was worried about Izuku she had to help Ida like Izuku had wanted. It was at that moment that the fight between 13 and the warp gate took a turn as a portal opened behind 13 turning the suction of her black hole on herself tearing through the back of her suit gravely injuring the hero. Yuraka pushed Ida towards the door as she ran to 13 along with Mina. Go Ida, she shouted as the boy turned and ran full tilt towards the door, but the warp gat was right on him. I won't allow you to ask. Kirajiri was cut off as he was enveloped in a web of flesh by Shoji. Get out now, Shoji shouted squeezing tightly around the warp gate as Ida ran to the door pulling it open as he ran through. Thank you everyone I won't let you down. He shouted back engaging his quirk fully and speeding away from the USJ. Aizawa stood in the middle of a circle of down villains his hair falling back over his eyes as he panted there. He was covered in sweat and felt as if his eyes were covered in sandpaper. He couldn't keep this up for much longer. You're slowing down Eraserhead. The time between your cancellations is getting bigger and bigger. The ringleader of this attack stated from behind his mask. Aizawa grit his teeth before rushing the villain and slamming an elbow into his stomach only for his elbow to be engulfed in pain. Aizawa hissed jumping back and looking at his elbow. It was completely destroyed the skin having flaked off like old paint revealing muscle fiber and bone. What happened? My arm's useless. This lapse in focus gave an opening to the massive creature that had been accompanying the hand mask villain. Aizawa looked behind him into the creature's face before he was slammed to the ground face first as the creature slammed its massive hand on his uninjured arm breaking it completely. Why in the He screamed in pain before his face was slammed into the ground. Oh man I was sure All Might would be here by now. Tamura said as Kirajiri appeared next to him. I'm sorry to report to Mira, but one of the students escaped and is no doubt bringing reinforcements. I suggest we make a retreat. Tamura glared at Kirajiri scratching his neck violently before sighing. Alright then, 
but I suggest we leave All Might with a parting gift, such as the death of his precious chicks. Timura said suddenly appearing before Izuku. Minta and Tsui's hands reaching out for Tsu and Minta and after having seen what it did to Aizawa's elbow Izuku was filled with sick dread, but right as Timura touched Tsu nothing happened. You really are so cool a racer hat, Timura said looking over his shoulder at Aizawa and grinning broadly. Izuku took this moment to attack launching from the water in full cow and channeling 20% of one for all in his fist. That should be more than enough to lay this guy. He thought to himself as his fist struck something kicking up dust and sending the water receding from the coastline dragging Minta and Tsu away from him and the villains. The dust soon receded revealing the form of Namu standing there not having moved at all from the strong punch he'd taken to the gut. Izuku grit his teeth as he moved to jump back only to be stopped by the iron grip Namu had on his forearm. Izuku could feel his bones straining under Namu's strength before he was lifted off his feet and slammed to the ground. He felt his arm jerk at an excruciating angle signaling his broken bones. Izuku tried to pull free from Namu's grip going all in with 100% of one for all. But he couldn't budge the monster's immense strength as he was lifted into the air again and slammed to the ground once more coughing up blood. Su and Minta were paralyzed in the face of Namu's brutality as it proceeded to punch Izuku's body deeper and deeper into the ground. Izuku's vision grew dim the pain a far-off feeling as the color drained from his vision leaving him in a world of black. Izuku looked around at the black atmosphere of where he was and remembered this place from his dream. He looked up as the sounds of footsteps could be heard. Izuku turned towards the sound and saw a small red light coming towards him growing bigger by the moment until it was revealed that the light was coming from a man. His body glowed a brilliant red hue as he soon bathed the entire area in red including the once black parts of Izuku's body were now dyed in the man's color. The man had a slim muscular build dressed in blue trousers with large cuffs and a yellow sash around his waist, sandals and an open long-sleeved red button-down cardigan. Topping his messy black hair was a straw hat with a red band across it. He had a wide grin on his face crinkling the scar under his left eye. The most eye-catching aspect of this man was the X-shaped burn scar across his chest. Well looks like I was able to get here before the others could stop me. Jishishishi. The man laughed as he sat down in front of Izuku cross-legged. I'm Luffy the sixth holder of one for all known as the Pirate King in my day and me and you are going to bust up that bird brain something good. He shouted slamming his fist into his other hand. Nama walked away from its victim towards Shigaraki unable to see the red steam that was wafting from the boy's body. All Might leaned against the back of the couch in his true form he'd been resting on since he'd gotten to UA that morning. He'd foolishly gone past his limit this morning and couldn't make it to class, but worst of all he's being held captive by Principal Nezu and his long-winded speeches. Now All Might had immense respect for the principal, but this was bordering on torture. All Might are you listening? Nezu asked having climbed onto the back of couch to stare Toshi in the eye. All Might jumped having been roused from his inner turmoil coughing up a bit of blood moving so suddenly. Of course Principal Nezu, I was just thinking maybe it's time I head out to the USJ you know make an appearance at least. All Might said transforming into his buff form as he opened the lounge door. Oh very well All Might I'm surprised I was able to hold you here this long. But go ahead, Principal Nezu said sipping his tea as All Might gave a wave and dashed out of the room before the principal changed his mind. If I hurry I can maybe even give a few tips on rescue operations. All Might thought to himself as he put on even more speed. Izuku looked at the man called Luffy before him and cocked an eyebrow. King of the pirates what's that mean? Pirates are evil aren't they? Why would someone entrust one for all to a pirate? He thought to himself as Luffy stood up throwing a few punches completely unaware of Izuku's quandary and because Izuku's body wasn't completely formed in this world he couldn't say anything. Luffy looked at the boy and smiled again. Don't worry kid I'm going to help you out my quirk is totally the best to beat that guy to a pulp. My body's rubber sea. He said pulling his cheek nearly a foot from his face before letting it snap back into place. Izuku's eyes nearly shot from his skull at the ridiculousness of Luffy's quirk. So blunt force doesn't work on me, but I'm not sure what exactly it'll be like for you. One for all has been boosting all our quirks while storing them so my quirk might be a little unwieldy at first. But that's why I'm here. I'll guide you with it giving you all my knowledge and together we'll send that guy flying. Luffy held out his hand to Izuku who looked at it for a moment. He didn't really understand what was going on, but all he needed to know was that this guy was going to help him protect his friends from villains, and that was good enough for him. For the first time since discovering this place Izuku was able to move and gripped Luffy's hand firmly. Tamura Shigaraki was clapping his hands as Namu moved towards him his fists coated in the blood of that boy. Ha 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 well done Namu, Tamura said clapping like an excited child having watched some amazing stunt be performed. That'll teach these kids to respect their elders. Tamura was interrupted from his gloating as an explosion of steam could be seen from the hole Izuku had been pounded in. A tall pillar of red energy wafted from it like steam as a figure stood in the middle. 
The steam was so thick it could even be seen from the entrance. What is that? Nina asked squinting her eyes as she looked on with the others. Minta and Tsuhu had climbed out of the water and had been trying to sneak close enough for Tsu to grab Midoriya's body from the hole until that powerful red steam had erupted from the crater. What is Tha? Tamura couldn't see what happened but suddenly Namu's hand was in front of him and he was splattered with the creature's blood. Nama what are you doing? He shouted angrily trying to clean the blood from his face only to see Namu's hand having been completely destroyed and was in the process of regeneration. It was then that Tamura got a good look at Izuku. His suit was destroyed leaving him topless with shredded pants. Izuku's arms and legs were coated in a reddish-black sheen that terminated right before his shoulders. Izuku's green hair was wafting above his head like fire. Izuku released a breath steam ejecting from his mouth as he looked at Namu whose fist had just regenerated with the creature giving a bird-like screech. Tamura had no idea what had happened to this boy. But Namu was meant to kill All Might this kid didn't have a chance. Give it up brat nothing you do will work. Namu has regeneration. And shock absorption not to mention ungodly strength not even All Might can beat him. Tamura laughed before pointing at Izuku. Kill him and OMU. The creature bounded toward Izuku as if struck by a whip. Midoriya get out of the way. Su shouted not wanting her friend to be hurt anymore. But Izuku either couldn't hear her or chose to ignore her advice as he raised his left hand up palm out as if telling Namu to stop before he pulled his right hand back folding the first two joints of his fingers inward. In his head Izuku heard Luffy speak. Just wait for him line him up with the tip of your left index finger keep him there and then fire. Izuku waited a moment right as Namu got within striking distance of him there was a sound like a whip crack and Namu went flying backwards the ground around Izuku and Namu cracking under the force of the attack. Mamba smash, Izuku said right as he seemingly disappeared from sight. Namu thrust its hands into the ground to slow its flying body leaving two furrows in the ground before coming to a stop and standing up. Izuku appeared above Namu placing the soles of his feet together and kicked downward towards Namu who punched upward the two attacks clashing as wind swirled around the impact. Spear smash. Izuku shouted as Namu reached forward with his other hand looking to grab Izuku's legs only for the boy to kick off the giant's fist and land a few yards away from the beast the two staring at one another. Izuku stretched his leg back before whipping it forward and kicking Namu in the knee shattering his skull knee pad and bending the joint backward. But it seemed Namu didn't even feel the pain as he fell to the ground and grabbed hold of Izuku's leg and began swinging the boy around in a circle slamming him into the trees of the small forest they were in before pulling Izuku toward himself. Block now. Izuku heard as he brought his arms in front of him in an X watching as Namu's fist impacted his arms. Izuku expected to hear his bones break once again. But instead Namu's fist sunk into his arms before he was thrown upward towards the ceiling. Chishishishi one for all really is amazing it somehow made my rubber quirk tougher than it was before. Luffy spoke in Izuku's mind. So it's more like the vulcanized rubber on tires then. Izuku spoke getting a better grasp of his power now. Yeah like that now, turn around and dig your hands into the ceiling. Izuku spun Madare on Luffy's command and slammed into the ceiling his arms sinking into themselves to cushion the impact as Izuku hung there for a moment before jumping to the side to avoid Namu who had launched himself into the ceiling after him. Now you've got him throw your fist back as far as you can and then let him have it. Izuku nodded throwing his right arm back and then yanked it forward as Namu started climbing over to him leaving himself completely open as Izuku went to slam his fist into his face Namu dodged to the side. Oh no he dodged it. Luffy shouted. But Izuku felt like he could still hit Namu with his attack. No I believe in you one for all there's nothing we can't hit. Python smash. He shouted as red electricity crackled along Izuku's arm turning it at two angles to slam into Namu's back driving him from the ceiling the massive creature began to fall. That was amazing now finish him with this. Drop from the ceiling and throw your arm out behind you and twist it like a corkscrew. This was my trusty rifle smash. Luffy said in Izuku's mind as the green-haired boy followed his lead. In his mind Izuku had felt that the form he'd taken was best suited for the snake style he'd learned from Master Splinter being able to stretch and strike quickly from unexpected directions was the epitome of the style. And as such he'd named all his attacks after snakes and this one would be no different. Izuku's arm stretched to the limit as he spun it around before pulling it back towards him his fist unwinding at blistering speeds his arm beginning to glow with the friction of the air before bursting into flame. All of USJ looked up at the glowing figure that was Izuku as he fell from the ceiling like a meteor on re-entry. Katsuki and Kirishima looked up from the villains they'd trounced at the bright figure in the sky. Is that Midoriya? Kirishima asked covering his eyes to get a better look as Katsuki stood next to him his fists clenched an angry smile on his face. Izuku, he growled, staring at his once victim moving ahead of him even more. Todoroki looked up from his position in the landslide zone staring up at the figure in the air. Midoriya, you're full of surprises aren't you? He stated as unknown to him Toru who had been hiding behind a rock as not to get frozen stared at Izuku and shook in awe. Just how awesome are you Izuku? 
she asked herself. Momo and Gyro who were being threatened by one of the villains looked up at the false star in the sky as did the electrical villain who was holding Kaminari hostage. Taking this moment Gyro connected her jack to the speaker on her leg and blasted a sound wave into the guy knocking the him out and letting the stupefied Kaminari free. Gyro smiled as she helped the electrical user up. That's our class rep for you, helping us out whenever he can. Gyro said with a blush on her face much like Momo who clutched her chest. A guy like that is depending on me. Oh what am I going to do? Momo thought as she bit her lip. At the entrance all the students looked at Izuku taking on the creature that had savaged their teacher so badly and cheered. Go Midori you've got this hun. Mina shouted as Achako smiled tears in her face. You never stop moving forward Izuku. How's a girl supposed to keep up? She asked amidst the cheering. Izuku stared down at Namu as he closed in his fist rocketing forward. Sidewinder smash. He shouted as his fist connected with Namu's gut exploding in flame as the monster was dropped to the ground in a massive plume of smoke with Izuku landing next to him his springy legs absorbing the shock completely. Tamura and Kurajiri stared at the boy as he stood there seemingly victorious only for the rubble of Namu's crash to be thrown away as the burnt creature stood up beginning to heal the damage. What he's still standing? Izuku said as his body began steaming more. His muscles felt as if they were on fire. We've almost reached our limit, but we can't stop now. We're so close. Luffy said in his head as Midoriya raised his fists hearing Tamura laughing not too far away. Didn't I tell you fool? Whatever you do Nama will heal no matter how hard you hit him he'll absorb it. He's the ultimate creation of my master made to kill all might. Tamura shouted out gleefully. I I can't beat high. Izuku was cut off by Luffy shouting in his head. Yes you can. Nobody is invincible. If he can heal we'll beat him until he can't. If he can absorb hits then we'll hit him more than he can take. We don't stop, never give in. Luffy shouted his unbending will infecting Izuku as he smiled clenching his fists energy crackled around the boy's fists forming into the heads of two snakes before throwing them forward again and again each faster than before until it looked as Izuku's arms began multiplying. Namu held up its arms to block the blows as it continued to advance on Izuku, but there were just too many getting through. For every one Namu blocked ten more got through until his encroachment was halted and then began pushing him back each fist hitting like a missile. H-Y-D-R-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A
That's not the case Nezu sir. I only arrived here moments before you did. The students did the heavy lifting none more so than Izuku Midoriya from what I'm told. He fought the creature called Namu and defeated him. Nezu's face didn't change all that much, but for All Might who had known the mysterious creature for so long he could tell he was shocked. I see so that's what happened. We called the police on the way over and they just informed me they found a large creature far from here. I'm guessing that creature is the Namu. I think we should pay Midoriya a visit, Nezu said climbing onto All Might's shoulder. But before the number one hero could leave he was stopped by the fellow students of Class 1A. How is Midoriya and Mr. Aizawa doing? Asked Yeirazu stepping into her role as vice rep. Yeah Midoriya went all in like a man we gotta see him. Kirishima spoke pounding his chest. Asil Vu's plate I must wish him well. Seeing my twinkling visage will no doubt ensure a speedy recovery. Ayama said swishing his cape back and forth. Principal Nezu raised a paw to quell the anxious student body. Children please there will be time to see Midoriya after recovery girl gives the okay. And we've spoken with him. For now please follow Ectoplasm back to class. Disappointedly the students followed Nezu's orders and were lead back to the school building by said teacher as All Might and Nezu went to the nurse's office finding recovery girl there administering the final touches to a groggy Izuku. All Might you're okay. Izuku said trying to stand only to fall back on the bed. Easy there young Midoriya you've pushed yourself really hard today. All Might said helping Izuku lay properly in the bed. That's an understatement he's completely exhausted so whatever questions you have for him will have to wait and I need to speak with you most of all Mr. Symbol of Peace. I've called a cab for the boy and one of the teachers will make sure he gets home safe. Recovery girl said whacking All Might in the back of the knee. Why yes ma'am. All Might said rubbing his leg as he began to follow Chio before Izuku called out to him. All Might before you go I I have to tell you something. All Might turned around at the boy while his eyes drooped. I I saw one of them All Might, the P previous users of One for All. I saw the Pirate King, he said before nodding off. All Might looked at Izuku unsure what he meant. The Pirate King, who's that? Nezu asked All Might who shook his head. I have no idea sir. But I do believe Izuku when he said he met a former user of One for All. All Might crossed his arms and thought before Chiyo coughed gaining his attention. First things first gentlemen. Izuku is in a state of complete exhaustion after my healing. His muscles are the biggest priority. Before I healed them it was as if they'd been torn apart. But I managed to heal them. From what I was told from the teachers by the students he should be more injured. Broken bones, ruptured organs, but nothing. I have no idea how to explain it, she said sitting down and tapping her cane as the two males took this new information and then looked at the boy in the table even more amazed. Shigaraki walked into the mahjong bar and grabbed the nearest chair reducing it to dust before kicking over a table as Kirijiri sighed watching the tantrum before their master spoke ending the childish tirade. Tamura what's wrong? All for one asked as Tamura looked at the screen in the back of the room. Namu failed master. Not only did he never see All Might he was taken out by some kid with more than one quirk. All for one frown from where he was as his doctor questioned Shigaraki. My Namu defeated by a child. Impossible he was perfect. Well perfection lost you quack. Tamura shouted before all for one spoke again. What quirks did he have Tamura? All for one asked as Tamura sat at the bar tapping his fingers against the surface. Strength for one and he could stretch really far. All for one frowned deeply as memories of a man in a straw hat ran through his mind. He rubbed his stomach as the memory of numerous fists impacting him was dredged from the depths of his mind. Izuku slowly opened his eyes as he looked towards the ceiling of his own room and not the nurse's office. He turned his head to the side noticing a plate with a sandwich on it and a glass of water. He smiled as his stomach growled. He sat up to satisfy his hunger when he noticed he was still in his school uniform and there was something in his pants pocket. He remembered that his hero costume had been completely destroyed so obviously someone had dressed him in his school uniform before sending him home. He reached in feeling a bundle of cloth and pulled it out as he turned on the lamp next to his bed unfurling the bundle only to come face to face with a pair of purple and black panties. WWHW what? He shouted before covering his mouth hoping he hadn't woke his mother as he looked at the underwear in his hands. There was a note inside the underwear that he fished out noticing how moist the paper was in his hands and blushing furiously as he peeled the folded note apart and looked at the words on it. Give these back when you're ready. I won't wear any others until you do. Don't make me wait or do if that's what you're into. Izuku swallowed hard as he stared at the note and the panties in his hands. There was an address on the note, and he knew it wasn't from Toru whose house he'd been to several times, so whose were they? Izuku got dressed in his school uniform again as he looked at the wreckage that was his hero costume. Oh man Donnie worked so hard on this, he said with a sigh placing the destroyed costume in its case and was about to heft it onto his shoulder before his mother appeared and took the case from him. I'll take care of this Izuku dear, I don't think you should be going to school, with how exhausted you were, but the least I can do is bring this over to Donatello and explain what happened, though I doubt I'll have to. The whole country knows about what happened there, 
Good thing none of you kids were hurt. Inko said shaking her head as she looked her son over brushing his hair and then sighing. Just like your father I never met a comb that could tame that hair of yours. She said with a chuckle as Izuku blushed before heading out. As he made his way to school his mind inevitably turned to the largest mystery at hand. The wadded up pair of panties he had in his backpack. I can't believe I have those with me. I could have just gone back home after school and got them. He said before shaking his head. No I have to return them as soon as possible I mean come on there's a girl at school going completely commando. He said whispering quickly to himself causing people on the street to give him a wide berth all the way to school. Izuku arrived at Yue and before he could even get fully in the school All Might appeared before him in his yellow pinstripe suit stretched across his massive frame. Excuse me young Midoriya I hate to pull you away from class but there is an urgent matter we must discuss. The pro hero said placing a large palm on Izuku's shoulder who nodded speedily rushing past the hero to the lounge room eager to keep All Might from his backpack. As if he was sure the hero could sense the offensive garment in his back. Izuku and All Might sat in the lounge with All Might reverting to his true form conserving his dwindling strength. First off young Midoriya I wish to apologize for my late entry. Because of my foolish actions that morning of stopping so many crimes on my commute to work I wasted my energy and forced you to accept a large burden. All Might said bowing his head in shame as Izuku waved his hands. No All Might I wouldn't think of blaming you. You were doing hero work. And well you showed up when it really mattered. Thank you for keeping all of us safe. Izuku said issuing forth nothing but pure gratitude. All Might sighed knowing when he was beat. Nothing he could say would ever convince Izuku that he was negligent in his duties. Well all that aside Midori I want to talk to you about what you said to me before falling asleep after the attack. Izuku arched a brow trying to remember what had happened after he woke up in the nurse's office. Oh yeah about Luffy. Izuku said remembering the man who called himself Pirate King. Oh yes the Pirate King you called him. All Might said confirming they were speaking about the same person. You said you met with him correct? Izuku nodded. Yes it wasn't just him though. I've been having dreams of the past users of One for All. I met the originator of the quirk and then when Namu knocked me unconscious I met Luffy the Pirate King. He helped me beat Namu teaching me how to use his quirk. All Might's eyes widened at this statement. You used his quirk. Can you still use it? All Might asked wanting to know if this was a one-time deal or something Izuku would have from now on. Izuku hadn't tried to access that power since he'd woken up. Well I I can try. He said standing up and activating his full cowl. He held up his fists concentrating on it and he could definitely feel something there. But it was as if it was just out of reach. I can feel the power, but it's like it's out of reach or something. He said letting full cowl fall as he sat back down. All Might nodded cupping his chin before deciding it was best to let it go for now. If it was something Izuku could still access he'd have to trigger it on his own. I'm sorry young Midoriya that I can't be of more help. I've never experienced any of what you've told me. Nor did my own master mention anything like this to me while I was under her tutelage. He said as he stood up placing a hand on Izuku's shoulder. But I will help in any way I can what do you say we meet up this weekend here at one of UAS training grounds and see exactly what this new quirk has to offer. Izuku smiled as he stood up. That sounds great All Might I'll see you then. Izuku said before heading out to class. He truly felt relieved that All Might would be there to help him through this. Izuku entered the classroom and was shocked to see what he assumed to be a mummified Aizawa. MMM Mr. Aizawa. He said looking over the bandaged man. Yes it's me, now take your seat Midoriya. He said holding up a bandaged hand pointing out Izuku's seat. Izuku took his seat as Aizawa began speaking. I know what happened at the USJ was unsettling. But if you plan to be heroes you're going to have to learn to shake these things off and move forward. Point being that the sports festival will be upon us very soon. You've all seen it at least once before. Bigger than the Olympics the sports festival is your chance to make your mark and show the world what's your capable. Heroes from all over will see and judge your skills and if they find you worthy they will offer you an internship at their office. These internships can make your career and set you up for success even before graduation. Aizawa let his words sink in for a moment before continuing. One chance per year three in a lifetime, so I suggest you don't waste their time and put your best foot forward. The students of Wana began talking about the major opportunity that was heading towards them. Oh yeah this is it a chance to go all out and show what we're made of. Hiroshima said looking over at Bakugu who was smirking like a cat who cornered a mouse. You peons don't stand a chance with me there. He shouted before turning around looking at Izuku. I'm going to enjoy wiping the floor with you Izuku, you two half and half. Bakugu shouted singling out Izuku and Todoroki. But the most determined was none other than Achako exuding a combat aura of immense proportions. Let's do it Deku we're going to wreck house. She shouted shocking Izuku who hadn't seen this side of Yuraka before. As she stood there Izuku leaned over trying to make sure Yuraka wasn't the one who was going panty less. He was mostly sure considering the address on the note. But still he had to be sure. But as he was moving into position he felt a presence next to him and turned nearly pressing his face against mine. Fancy meeting you here Midoriya. 
I had no idea you were a fellow comrade. Izuku sat up looking at the purple short stack who smiled perversely. Don't worry I'll keep your secret Midoriya and if you ever need something to get you through the weekend I have you covered. It's the least I can do after getting me out of that situation at the shipwreck zone. Minda spoke giving a thumbs up before walking away as Izuku shook his head. Izuku sat up as Aizawa called the class to attention again and began his lecture. As lunch came around Izuku stood up looking at each girl in his class. How on earth am I going to find out who it is? He thought before spotting Yeirazu and smiled. Knowing the keen eye Momo possessed he was certain she'd spot something off about the other girls. He walked up behind Yeirazu and placed a hand on her shoulder only for the girl to jump and spin around looking at him. And Midoriya. She shouted blushing at her reaction to the boy. Man the villain attack must have really shaken her up. Sorry Yeirazu I didn't mean to startle you. He said apologizing as Yeirazu composed herself. No, no it's my fault I overreacted. Was there something you needed? She asked as Izuku smiled at her moving close causing Momo to blush at their closeness. W what is he doing? He wouldn't not are right here, right? She asked herself looking at Midoriya's lips as they got closer to her. Hey Yeirazu have you noticed anything off about the other girls in the class? He asked looking at Momo's red face before placing his hand on her forehead. While you're really red maybe you should go see the nurse. He said as Momo felt her knees tremble and nodded. Um and maybe I will. But to answer your question I haven't noticed anything too out of the ordinary with the other girls why is there something you noticed? She asked wondering what had brought on Izuku's sudden curiosity. It was Izuku's turn to blush as he stepped back. And no nothing in particular sorry to bother you Yeirazu you should get to the nurse's office. I'll take you if you want me to. He said smiling awkwardly as Momo shook her head. Um and no that's quite alright I can make it. She said walking off to the nurse's office. Izuku let go a sigh of relief as he turned around and felt Toru there. Oh hey Toru did you need something? He asked as Toru held up her lunch. Um want to eat lunch together? She asked as she fidgeted in place. Izuku smiled glad for such a normal request. Sure let's go. He asked following Toru to the cafeteria. But as soon as he and the invisible girl sat down they were immediately crowded by most of the class. Midori I never got a chance to tell you how awesome you were at the USJ that quirk of yours is pretty flashy bro. Even from the ruin zone me and Bakugo were at we could see you coming down like a freaking meteor. I thought your quirk only enhanced your body I didn't know you could create fire. That's up there with Todoroki having two quirks. Kirishima said punching Izuku in the arm. Izuku laughed rubbing his arm as he thought for a minute how to explain what he had done. It was good that no one had seen any of his attacks close up or he'd have to explain how he stretched. Ooh thanks Kirishima it was what any of us would have done. I didn't really create fire thought. You know how heat is nothing but friction and M molecules vibrating quickly I pretty much just forced a lot of my stockpiled energy into my fist really fast and it sort of exploded. He said before Tsu cut in. It was pretty reckless of you to go fight that thing. But if you hadn't I'm sure those villains would have done a lot worse before All Might could get there so thanks. Tsu said as a light pink dusted her cheeks. Well we couldn't really see anything from where we were at the entrance. But we all know you gave it your all, so thanks Izuku. Achako said at his immediate right looking down into her tray of food as she blushed. Totally if you hadn't distracted that villain I wouldn't have been able to save this idiot from getting his brain fried even more than it already is. Jiru said elbowing Kaminari who rolled his eyes. I was only fried trying to save you girls. You could be a little more grateful Jiru. Kaminari said crossing his arms. Izuku smiled at his classmates. Given his track record he never thought he'd have people around him who genuinely liked and respected him. But now he was class rep and his classmates came around him eagerly. Life really was filled with twists and turns he supposed. Then he noticed a feeling on his leg. He moved his leg a little thinking it was just an itch or his pant leg, but soon it returned. He reached down to scratch his leg and grabbed hold of a foot. Izuku snatched his hand back violently causing the entire table to look at him. Midoriya is something wrong? Ada asked looking at him from his right aside Ochako. Izuku hurriedly shook his head. Oh uh, nothing just a little shock is all. Darn static electricity. He said shaking his fist in false frustration as he looked across the table seeing who was across from him. He doubted it was any of the guys on the opposite end or well hoped it wasn't one of them, so that left who? The closest girls to him on that side were Mina and Jiru, so it had to be one of them. He looked at Jiru who had been eating a chicken salad before their eyes locked. They stayed connected for a moment before Jiru looked away blushing heavily. Could it really be Jiru? He asked himself before looking at Ashido who met his eyes with a simple smile. What's wrong Midori is there something on my face? She asked her eyes never wavering from his. Uh, and no it's nothing Ashido sorry. He said looking back to his katsudan. At a cafe sat two girls looking across from one another. They were in a booth in the back of the cafe and the tension between them was palpable. On one side sat Achako Yuraka and on the other sat Toru Hagakir. Both had drinks in front of them untouched as the two stared at each other. 
Even though one was invisible anyone could tell these girls were locked in a contest of wills. Achako reached towards her orange cream soda taking a sip from the long straw before speaking. We both know why we're here, so let's not procrastinate any longer. This is about Izuku. Toru reached for her strawberry slush swirling around the icy mixture before taking a sip as well. It's as you say Uraraka we both want Izuku, but only one of us can have him. I'm not backing down I've been in love with Izuku since before school started. Toru said sitting forward as Achako did the same. You may have known him longer, but I asked him out first, and I was his first kiss, so isn't it only courtesy that you step aside? Otherwise you'll just be chasing your own selfish satisfaction not caring about Izuku's happiness. Toru sat back slapping her hand on the table as she stared at Achako. You're saying I'm the treacherous mistress. She hissed as Achako sat there sipping from her drink. I'll do whatever it takes to make Izuku happy, and I know that it's me who will do that for him. Achako sat her drink down before sitting forward the vicious aura she had at the announcement of the sports festival was back and even more intimidating. If that's how you feel let's settle things at the sports festival then. I plan to win it all. But let's just say whoever makes it the farthest. After all Izuku is reaching for the top and needs someone at his side who can attain those same height. So whoever gets closest or surpasses Izuku in the sports festival earns the right to be his girlfriend. Achako held out her hand to Toru who after a moment accepted the deal. That Friday Achako Achako walked towards her shoe locker inside. Izuku was being really distant today. She thought to herself remembering how Izuku seemed to avoid her. Maybe he found out about me and Toru's confrontation and is disappointed in me. She asked herself as she reached into her shoe locker and found a note. Meet me at the park on the far side of the lake after school I'll give you my answer. Achako's heart went into overdrive as she read the message. This was definitely Izuku's handwriting. So that's why he was being so aloof today. She thought as she changed shoes and headed out immediately to the park. Achako thought about going home to change, but didn't want to keep Izuku waiting especially if it was good news she couldn't afford to postpone this. She arrived at the park and looked around before heading to the other side of the lake. She neared the opposite side of the lake from the entrance and expected to see Izuku there instead she was met with Mina. Mina what are you doing here? Achako asked as the pink-skinned girl turned around holding a piece of paper. Oh well hey Achako I you got a note in my locker asking me to come here and well I found this here. But it said I should wait until all six of us are here. Mina explained as Achako paled a little. All six of us. She asked thinking that Izuku her first boyfriend had invited more girls to this. No Izuku wouldn't do that. There must be something else going on maybe it's a prank. She thought but she knew Izuku's handwriting and was certain her note was written by him. As Achako stood there chasing her own thoughts another set of footsteps could be heard and in came Gyro panting as she bent over her knees trying to catch her breath. I am here. Sorry for being late. She said opening her eyes to the two girls and arched a brow. Okay what the hell I thought I was supposed to be meeting mid I mean someone else. She said blushing as she looked away. That makes three of us were halfway there. Mina said smiling coyly causing both girls to look at her with suspicion as more footsteps began to come into range those being Toru. And after her Momo and the last one being a surprisingly shy Asui. Yay we're all here now I can get started. So first off I lied there's nothing on this paper. Mina said flipping the page around to show the girls both sides were blank before stuffing it in her pocket. Also Midoriya isn't here either he wrote the notes. But only because I asked him to and since you all showed up as quickly as you did guess that means you're all super interested in the guy. Mina said as the girls around her wore differing shades of embarrassment at having been found out. Oh don't be shy girls I totally see why you want him. But before we get to him we need to settle some things between us. As Mina said as the sun began its descent into the horizon bathing Mina in shadow so that the only features visible were her Cheshire grin and golden eyes. Yeyarazu and the others all stared at Mina for a moment as if the pink-skinned girl had grown another head. Before Momo spoke. What do you mean talk about us? She asked crossing her arms under her considerable bust as Mina smiled. Well you see all six of us are interested in the same guy, but we're clearly not all on equal footing. For instance Uraraka here was Izuku's first kiss and has gone on a date with him as has Toru over there. Mina said singling out the gravity user and invisible girl. Momo, Jairo, and Asui all looked at the two girls who blushed under their scrutiny. Is this true Achako? Asui asked feeling a little betrayed she thought she and Achako had a special friendship and yet she hadn't told her that she was dating Midori. But that also went back on Sue after all she hadn't told Achako she'd started to have feelings for the green-haired boy. But in her defense she'd only just realized how she felt after the USJ incident and having a front row seat to Midoriya's determination to save his classmate. Achako looked at Sue knowing that she couldn't lie to her arguable closest friend. Yes it's true Sue. Achako admitted before looking at Mina H how did you know that? She asked knowing that Izuku wouldn't say anything without telling her and they'd both been super careful about not revealing their situation by accident. So how did Mina know? Mina shrugged. Well if you're thinking that Midori told me, then you're wrong and shame on you for doubting him. 
I doubt even lengthy torture could get him to spill the beans. But as to how I know it's simple. I saw you kiss him that first day of school as thanks for saving you during the entrance exam. It was really touching. And well Tora was just too obvious I'm sure everybody in class could see you had a crush on the guy in visibility or not. Mina shrugged as Toru dug the toe of her shoe into the dirt embarrassed by her lack of subtlety. Wait you're saying he's dating the two of them and from the way they're acting you two obviously knew about each other right? Jairo asked looking between Achako and Toru who each looked the other in the eye. Yes we know. Izuku was up front with us that he had been on a date with the other and said he would make a decision on who to continue dating. But Hagakir and I knew it would eat him up inside to break one of our hearts so we decided to let the sports festival decide who would be with him. Whichever one of us got the furthest the other one would back off from Izuku. Toru said staring down Achako as Momo nodded. I see that would be the best way taking the strain off Midoriya who would be more likely to stop dating both of you than to make a decision. Very well then I will also take part in this competition. Momo said placing her hand on her chest. I've come to care for Midoriya very much while working beside him as his vice representative. He just has this drive about him that brings out the best in me and I want to support him not only professionally, but personally as his, his G-girlfriend. Momo said her face bursting out into a blush. Guess there's no choice I'm in too, Gyro said nodding confidently. Ribbit I'm not going to give in either. Sue said before laughter burst out from Mina as she clutched her sides looking at the five girls. I am sorry girls really I am. But it's just kind of funny you think that by winning the festival you'll win him over, or that the others will just forget their feelings for him, but the real kicker is that you're all fighting over second place. Mina said wiping an eye as she took out her phone and pulled up a video. I recorded this for those nights when I need a little extra to get me there. She said before pressing the play button. The quintet of girls gathered around Mina's phone as the video began to play and one by one their faces erupted in red as Momo turned away from the screen. WWW what is that? Gyro shouted as Mina giggled. Exactly what it looks like me and Izuku getting intimate. You see while you girls were all busy twiddling your thumbs I came in and made the big play and it worked out perfectly. Guess what they say is true fortune favors the bull. Mina said turning off the video and stowing her phone away. All of you were being so selfish. Making poor Izuku choose between you instead of doing what was best and thinking about how to share him. Mina said as she stared at the other girls. Achako walked up to Mina and glared at her face to face. I won't let you have him. She whispered as Mina smiled. It's not your choice Achako it's none of our choices. But if that's how you want to play it feel free to fight amongst each other for my sloppy second. Because I gave everything I had to Izuku and if any of you think you can take him from me all for yourself I won't allow it. Mina said as she leaned back against the railing as Achako stared at her. She couldn't believe this. All this time she thought Toru was her biggest competition completely unaware of the other girls and that laps had given rise for Mina to take Izuku from her. And now she had to either share him with the others or lose him completely. Toru was floored had she lost already Izuku was the only man she wanted and she'd been too slow in seizing him. She didn't fight hard enough and now he was gone. I'm fine with that, Asui said as she stood next to Mina looking at the four remaining girls. Otsu I knew you'd see reason, Mina said hugging the frog girl tightly. On the outside Mina had been cool as a cucumber, but on the inside she'd been a nervous wreck. Oh thank god somebody came over to my side if it had just been me there was no way I could have stopped them from tearing my plan apart. Achako stared agape at Sue's decision. Sue W what do you mean you're okay with this? Achako asked as Sue placed a finger to her chin. Well the way I see it, we have two options. Either we argue amongst ourselves tearing apart the friendships we've made and causing Midoriya more pain. Or we hold on to our friendship and compromise with Ashido's plan. I like Midoriya I really do, but I also like you girls. I want us to stay friends and be with Midoriya, so I agree with Mina. She said as Gyro sighed looking at the two girls before walking over to Mina's other side. When you put it like that I can't disagree. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few and all that. Besides it's not the strangest thing I've heard of. She said with a shrug. The group was split evenly with Momo, Toru, and Achako facing off against Mina, Sue and Gyro. Seeing this Mina knew that the three wouldn't buckle so she played her trump card. Alright then girls will do this your way. If me, Sue or Gyro make it furthest in the sports festival we get Izuku as our. But if any of you win then whoever makes it the farthest out of the three of you gets him. Can you agree to that? Mina said holding out her hand. The six girls exchanged looks between each other before their hands atop Mina's. Deal. Izuku walked up to the gate of UA on said he was here for that training session with All Might. He shouldered his gym bag higher as he remembered the text he'd received from Mina last night. Everything is going to plan. But don't make any moves until after the sports festival we should all keep a clear head. Midoriya agreed with that completely he didn't want to interfere with everyone's training and with this new quirk of his he would need his full concentration. Still though Mina hadn't told him anything about how the meetup had gone and he was nervous. Was she hiding the fact that it had gone poorly and was trying to spare his feelings? He took a deep breath. 
Focus on the task at hand, he reminded himself. Midoriya swiped his student ID as he walked onto the campus and there was All Might standing there waiting for him. He was dressed in jeans and a blue t-shirt. Good morning young Midoriya are you ready for some training? All Might said as Izuku nodded feeling his heart pound in anticipation. Yes sir All Might. Izuku said excitedly as All Might cupped a hand to his ear leaning closer. I can't hear you. I said are you ready for some training? Izuku took a deeper breath seeing what All Might was doing. Yes sir All Might. All Might stood up straight and nodded. That's what I like to hear now let's go. He said jogging off towards ground gamma with Izuku keeping pace with him before stopping in front of the large doors to the site. This young man is ground gamma where we'll be seeing how that quirk of yours works. All Might spoke walking in as Izuku looked around at the industrial area. Wow Yue really goes all out doesn't it? If he didn't know better he'd swear he was actually in part of some large city. I've been trying to reach out to that new power All Might. But I haven't had much luck it still feels out of reach. Izuku said afraid he'd disappointed All Might. Never fear young Midoriya mental training can only get you so far. But now we can get into the physical stuff. I want you to remember what it was like to have that new power flowing through you. What were you feeling? What were you thinking about? All Might asked as Izuku closed his eyes. Thoughts of that day flowing through his mind. The pain of his broken body as Namu pummeled him. The flashes of his friends' faces being broken by that monster. His anger at not being able to do more. But most of all the feeling that even with All Might's quirk he still wasn't good enough. He needed more power to go beyond who he was now. Izuku clenched his fist as full cowl activated around his body. But instead of the usual green lightning crackling around his form the energy was red and looked like steam wafting from his body as his hair rose up flickering like fire. All Might's eyes widened at the transformation seeing Izuku's fists turn dark with a red sheen that traveled halfway up his forearm while seeing the same thing happen to his legs all the way to his knees. Izuku opened his eyes as he looked at his body clenching his teeth. Now how does that feel? All Might asked. Izuku released a breath seeing it steam from his mouth. It's like clenching a muscle if I lose focus it'll stop. Izuku responded slowly raising his fist. It'll get easier with time now that you've activated it yourself try throwing a punch at me don't hold back. All Might said raising his arms to guard as Izuku raised his fist and then punched. All Might stood still as a nearby pillar of steel was punched through behind him seeing Izuku's fist retract throwing the boy off balance as he spun and fell to the ground. You were supposed to hit me Midoriya. All Might clarified as Izuku sat up. Even though the punch didn't connect All Might could see the power it packed looking at the pillar it had punched through a perfect hole with no warping to the metal all the force was centered on the point of impact. I was trying All Might, but my fist is just so fast and the farther out it gets the less control I have. It was easier when I had Luffy in my head he helped me guide it, but now it's too much. Izuku said standing up seeing his transformation had ended. All Might nodded at that. It was true that Izuku's fist had been too fast for even All Might to see and he was used to traveling at incredible speed, but Izuku had probably never come across something so fast. All Might placed a hand to his chin as Izuku concentrated on bringing back his full cow. How can I put him on the right track without giving him the answer outright? All Might thought to himself before getting an idea. Instead of focusing on the stretching part of the quirk why not focus on some of the other things Rubber can do? All Might said as Izuku cocked his head thinking about all the things he knew Rubber could do. Over the last few days he'd read a lot of books about the properties of rubber. Let's see rubber can stretch, but it can also bend, bounce, expand dot and retract. Izuku said summoning his new full cowl he'd have to think of a name for it later. Izuku clenched his fist drawing it back and watched as his fist sink into his wrist and then his wrist into his forearm. All might look. Izuku shouted losing his concentration as his fist shot out slamming into the hero who blocked just in time as he was thrown back into a wall. All Might, Izuku shouted as he ran over to the hero who was coughing as he waved the dust out of his face. All Might I'm so sorry, I lost focus it just shot out. Izuku apologized profusely as All Might stood up mostly unharmed. Never fear Midoriya it will take more than that to hurt me. But now you see that you can control this quirk. By withdrawing your fist into yourself it's like loading a bullet into the chamber of a gun. Instead of trying to aim the bullet yourself all you have to do is learn to keep your arm steady and let it guide your fist. All Might explained as Izuku looked down at his arm nodding. You can't expect to grasp a quirk in its entirety at first it's like putting together a puzzle dealing with one piece at a time until the picture comes together as a whole. All Might explained. Izuku raised his hand in front of his face before clenching it. One step at a time. Exactly. Now come on young man we have much more to learn so come at me. All Might shouted as Izuku taking his stance ready to train. All for one sat in his chair as he watched Tamura through his camera. The boy was still pouting about his loss at Yue and had begun developing an obsession with the boy who defeated Nama. All for one had to admit he shared his student's interest for the boy. He gave a yawn as he leaned back getting comfortable in his chair beginning to doze off. He didn't sleep often, and when he did it was fitful at best. His body was a mass of pain. 
Sure, he was alive, but everything hurt all the surgeries left scars not only on his body, but his mind as well. Of course he would never admit to any of it. All for one stood on Japan's coastline he'd been planning this for a while now the submission of Japan's navy it was time to cut off this island from the rest of the world cementing his control of the nation. As he stood there his army of quirk users barreling towards the shipyard a cannonball shot from the ocean landed in front of his rushing army exploding on impact and stopping his army in its track. He turned towards the ocean seeing a lone ship heading to the coast, its flag that of a skull wearing a straw hat. All for one had seen this flag before yet another person entrusted with his foolish brother's quirk, the Pirate King Luffy or so he called himself. Some called him a hero in truth the man was nothing more than a selfish person wanting to do as he pleased. But nonetheless people rallied behind him most notably his nine crew members. All for one had faced him once before with Luffy's brother. He had the king dead to rights and was going to kill him if not for his brother sacrificing himself and allowing Luffy to escape. The sound of another cannonball was heard as it soared through the air. All for one raised his arm using his air cannon quirk to blast the ball away only to hear a yell above him. He looked up to see a giant fist barreling down on him. He was riding on the cannonball. All for one thought as he used his power of flight to get out of the way as the massive fist impacted the ground shattering it and sending a quake through his army. You reckless fool. All for one shouted as he rained lightning from his palm on the man creating a cloud of dust. Out of my sight you. Suddenly two arms shot from the cloud of dust grabbing hold of all for one's shoulder as Luffy pulled himself towards him slamming his head into all for one's. That's for my brother, shouted the pirate king before punching all for one in the stomach sending the older man to the ground only for him to stop inches above it before dodging to the side to avoid Luffy's foot. Rubber stamp smash. Luffy shouted as he fell to the ground in front of all for one taking a fighting stance. It's over all for one. Luffy said as he threw his fist back only to sling it forward towards all for one who countered with a punch of his own. Kinetic booster. The two fists clashed together throwing both men back. Not done. Second gear. Luffy's body began to issue forth steam as his body became red only for the pirate to disappear appearing at all for one's side. Jet pistol smash. All for one's body crumpled around Luffy's fist as he grabbed hold of the boy's chest. The Malaysian. Luffy's chest caught fire as he was thrown back sliding across the ground before getting to his feet displaying the X-shaped burn across his chest. Your brother's quirk is quite something. All for one said his hand catching fire as Luffy glared at him. I'll crush you. Luffy shouted as more steam issued forth before Luffy took off racing towards all for one who crossed his arms. Let me show you what I can really do with your brother's quirk. Fire form, stone skin. All for one's body erupted in flame as his skin became jagged and cracked like a mountain face only for the stone to start to melt and fall like lava. You can't touch him. All for one was cut off as Luffy's fist slammed into his face. He felt the blow and smelled burning flesh only for another fist to slam into his chest and then his stomach, shoulder, face, ribs. Jet gattling smash. Luffy shouted ignoring his burning fists as he pummeled all for one. Impossible he's willing to go this far. You won't defeat me. All for one thought as he slammed his hands into the ground injecting it full of flame before causing it burst out around Luffy bathing him in molten stone. I'll take my brother's quirk back thank you. All for one spoke rushing towards Luffy only to be shot in the shoulder from one of Luffy's crew before a monster with antlers rose up behind Luffy grabbing hold of him and slamming its hand onto all for one driving him deep into the ground. All for one jolted awake breathing hard as the remnants of his dream ebbed away. Just a memory. He stated as he grabbed a glass of water gulping it down as he shook off the dream. He clutched his abdomen feeling the pain of those blows all over again. Izuku walked with the rest of his class entering the large stadium present on UA grounds the structure was packed to capacity as the crowd cheered at the class entrance. You know them the class that recently fended off a villain attack. Hero Course 1A. Present Mike shouted as the crowd went wild. Wow I never thought we'd get this kind of adulation leaves me kind of embarrassed. Izuku said as Katsuki stood next to him. Shut yours Izuku soon enough they'll be cheering for me when I win this thing. The blonde growled his red eyes locking onto Izuku's green ones. This time I'm going to crush you and prove my view of heroes is the right one. So you better give it your all you nerd. Katsuki shouted as Izuku eyed him. Sure thing Katsuki, I won't lose. Izuku said as Kirishima moved between the two slinging an arm over both their shoulders. That's some manly words guys. But don't forget about us you two aren't the only ones with something to prove. The redhead said as Bakugu turned from both boys leaving Kirishima hanging solely on Midoriya's shoulder. Well guess we'll see who's on top in the end, right? Kirishima said shaking Izuku who smiled at him. I'm looking forward to taking you on as well Kirishima. Izuku said slugging the redhead in the side as both smiled with Kirishima walking away rubbing his ribs a little. I'm looking forward to overcoming the fruits of your new training Izuku. Anjiro said smiling at the green-haired boy. Don't worry Anjiro I'm hoping to go against you as well. 
Izuku turned from the boy to look at the girls in the class they were separated dispersed throughout the crowd except for Mina, Jairo, and Tsu who were grouped together. The three girls looked over noticing Izuku looking at them. Jairo blushed twirling her earlobe while Tsu looked down blushing. Mina smiled at the two shaking her head before waving at Izuku. Izuku gave a shy smile and waved back as well. He wanted to go over and talk to them. But Mina had asked him to keep focused on the sports festival saying she didn't want either of their feelings to cause them to lose focus and Izuku had to agree so he kept to himself for now. Mina had promised to tell him how the rendezvous had gone after the festival was over. He looked towards the main stage as Midnight walked onto it to numerous cheers, catcalls, and wolf whistles. Hello everyone I'm the R18 Pro Hero Midnight and I will be your announcer today. I hope you're excited because I sure am in fact some might say I'm sopping wet with enthusiasm. More cheers could be heard at this little innuendo. But enough about me this is about our glorious students putting their all on the line chasing their dreams for this UAS sports festival. To start off our wonderful sports festival I would like to call upon Izuku Midoriya to give us our opening speech. Midnight announced pointing at Izuku who immediately began sweating before he felt a push to his shoulder looking back at Ajiro who was giving him a go on gesture. Izuku took a deep breath before walking up on stage. I just want to say that all of us have our own reason to be here and pursue the path of a hero. We're all putting everything on this sports festival to achieve our dream. It makes me proud to be studying alongside such courageous people and I look forward to pitting my will against all of you. My sensei has a saying that I believe fits all of us here. As iron sharpens iron brother sharpens brother. Let's all grow sharper plus ultra. He said punching his fist into the air as the entire arena exploded in applause. Even the students who had previously showed up at class 1 of thinking all of them were a bunch of pompous jerks were soothed by Izuku's open-hearted pledge to give his all. Guess all of class isn't a bunch of jerks, stated Tetsu Tetsu as Izuku stepped down giving Midnight the floor once more. Well that was a positively orgasmic speech from class 1A's Izuku Midori. Now then on to the first event. This will be an obstacle course race. The students will exit the stadium and make a full lap around the prepared track entering through the opposite entrance to the stadium. Simple yes, but as they say simple does not mean easy the course is full of obstacles that if you're not careful will put you out of the race before you know it. Now with that out of the way. On your marks get set. Go. Midnight struck her whip against the concrete signaling the start of the race. The students crammed themselves into the exit tunnel rushing to get out as soon as possible. Izuku looked at the crowd at the tunnel and shook his head. They're testing us to see how we get through this. He thought as he rushed for the door just as he was nearing it he felt a blast of cold air and instinctively jumped to the walls of the tunnel before doing the same jumping from wall to wall until he flew out over the ice crowd thanks to Todoroki. But it looks like he wasn't the only one to avoid Todoroki's trap, seeing Bakugu, Yuga, and Momo seemingly clear it with no problem. You're going to have to do better than that icy hot. Bakugu shouted as he exploded himself towards the dual quirk user before noticing much bigger targets. These bastards again. Bakugu cursed as Todoroki took in this newest obstacle. So these were in the regular entrance exams were they? Hun I wish they had thought of something more challenging after all my dad is watching. He said placing a hand on the ground as ice erupted from it jettisoning towards the large robots encasing them in ice in seconds as Todoroki ran through their massive legs. Hey that kid did it this is our chance we can get through now. Someone shouted as Izuku looked on at the robots and the obvious trap Todoroki had left them. I wouldn't if I were you. I froze them off balance. On purpose, Todoroki said just as the robots started to fall. Izuku grinned. You must be really underestimating us. Izuku said as he jumped upwards towards the first falling robot slamming his fist into it like he had done during the entrance exam shattering it completely as icy robot parts fell to the ground. Remember the training. Izuku thought as he channeled new energy into his legs as he hit the ground following Todoroki. His legs began to compress into themselves before springing back rocketing Izuku forward. Todoroki looked back as he saw Izuku crash into the ground only to then spring out of the dust cloud like a jack-in-the-box catching up to him in an instant as they neared the gorge filled with pillars of stone. Izuku you bastard trying to show me up I won't let you. Bakugu shouted catching up to the two frontrunners quickly. Sorry I'll leave him to you. Todoroki said over his shoulder as he began to ice slide across the numerous threads connecting the pillars to the other side. Izuku smiled as he watched the twin-haired boy increase his lead. You won't shake me that easily Todoroki. Izuku shouted as he began running faster full tilt towards the edge of the gorge before jumping off it into the air managing to avoid Bakugu's explosive energy as he fell. Bakugu looked down seeing Izuku falling further and further before spitting and beginning to blast across the gorge. What the hell, is he crazy? Shouted present Mike as he noticed Izuku's swan dive into the gorge. At home Inko Midoriya clutched her chest before shaking her head. No I trust you Izuku I know you've got a plan. She said picking up her tea with a shaking hand. Oh to hell with it I'm still your mother and you're going to give me a heart attack. 
she shouted. Izuku began falling to the bottom of the gorge before clenching his fist the same transformation that had taken over his legs now appearing on his arm. Izuku flashed back to his training with all might as he pulled his fist into his arm and aimed it at one of the pillars before releasing it and feeling his fist slam into the pillar his fingers biting deep into the stone as his arm went taut. Izuku swung on it like a vine through the jungle and at his apex he released his hand flinging himself high into the air seeing Bakugu blasting himself from pillar to pillar as the other contestants began to make their way across the gorge. I can do this. He said as gravity took hold he shot out his arm again swinging himself across the gorge completely as he hit the ground on the other side rolling to conserve his speed as he got to his feet making a beeline for the next obstacle seeing Totoro in front of him and hearing Bakugu right on his tail. Okay level with me eraser what was that we just saw? Does Midoriya have another quirk besides strength? Present Mike asked looking at eraser who shrugged. No, but I'm guessing during his fight at the USJ he might have developed a new way to use his quirks. After all Midoriya's quirk is stockpile allowing him to use the energy he's stored to augment his body. This might just be something he's learned or invented. This is what heroes should strive for. Everyday new villains with new quirks threaten society, and each one needs to be dealt with uniquely. Present Mike nodded. Wow that was actually some good commentary there buddy I knew you had it in you. Present Mike shouted clapping Aizawa on the shoulder. Todoroki looked at the spots of freshly turned earth and the warning signs about mines. I could ice it over, but that would make it easier for others to cross. It can't be helped I'll have to take this slow. He said stepping slowly and gently through the minefield. As things stand now Todoroki from class 1 is in first place having reached the minefield. But don't worry these mines aren't going to kill you all the same avoid them unless you don't mind some heavy bruising. In second place is a jockeying match between Bakugu and Midoriya also from class 1A. Present Mike said laughing a little. Midoriya avoided an explosive palm before retaliating with a finger flick that Bakugu managed to avoid feeling the force of the wind snatch at his shirt before Izuku stopped to look at the minefield in front of him thinking how best to get across. Standing there and analyzing as Bakugu careened past him cautiously, but hurriedly making his way through the field. What's the matter Izuku scared of a little explosion? Bakugu taunted Izuku who looked up at him for a moment before taking action. Izuku summoned his full cowl and slammed his fist into the ground creating a dust cloud that the other students had to run through. Once the dust cleared people could see Izuku positioning two large chunks of earth side by side with a small distance between them. Okay I don't get this eraser. Midoriya has fallen from second place to almost last in order to build a rock sculpture. What could he be planning? Eraserhead was also a bit confused as he watched the boy bolster the base of the two massive chunks of rock. Young man what could you be thinking? All Might said ruffling his hair in confusion. Sue passed by Izuku as she deftly crawled between the hidden mines unable to risk jumping through them and setting them off. Sorry Izuku I'll be going ahead. She whispered trying to keep her lead against the other girls. Izuku wiped sweat from his forehead as he looked over his launch pad. And then smiled before summoning his red cowl on his arms before grabbing hold of the two large boulders and began walking backwards his arms starting to stretch more and more until Izuku picked up his feet and his arms quickly retracted slinging him forward completely bypassing the minefield and landing on the other side right as Bakugu and Todoroki did hitting the ground running as he took the lead away in one fell swoop. Can you believe that folks all the time Izuku was building a slingshot to launch him clear across the minefield and snatch first place like a thief in the night? The entire stadium roared with enthusiasm as they saw Izuku running for all he was worth in front of Todoroki and Bakugu. At home and Ko shot to her feet punching the air in victory chanting at the top of her lungs. Go Izuku go, go Izuku go. Izuku ran full tilt into the stadium capturing first place to the adulation of the crowd. But all he could hear was All Might's voice. This is your chance young Midori as the next symbol of peace used the sports festival to announce to all that you are here. Izuku smiled as he walked further into the stadium and locked eyes with All Might giving a thumbs up. I did it All Might. I'm here to win. And there you have it folks first place in the obstacle race goes to. Izukumidoriya of class 1A. Midnight announced as Todoroki and then Bakugu entered the stadium capturing second and third place. Bakugu grit his teeth as he stared at Izuku. It seemed no matter what he did Izuku has the upper hand. F that. Go ahead Izuku take this win it'll only make it all the better when I beat you in the end. Bakugu shouted before looking at Todoroki. Don't think just because you got second place it means you're better than me icy hot. Bakugu said kicking the ground as he walked away clearing space for the remaining contestants. Alright everyone good show. But unfortunately only the top 42 will continue on from here. Now for the 42 qualifiers the competition continues immediately. I hope you've got enough left for round 2. The next event is a cavalry battle. You will all team up in teams of 2 to 4 people. 
Each member will be getting a point value determined by their placing in the obstacle course with the last place finisher being worth 5 points and each place above that will increase by 5. But the first place winner will be worth a whopping 10 million points. At this moment Izuku felt a wave of hostility centered on him. He swallowed hard and tried to put on a brave face even though he could feel himself break out in a full body sweat whether it was from excitement or anxiety he couldn't say. The object of this battle will be to steal other teams' headbands and accumulate more points in the allotted 30 minutes. Now making another team fall on purpose is against the rules and you will be disqualified for it. But even if your headband is stolen or your team falls you can get right back up and continue competing. Now you all have 15 minutes to begin building your teams after which you will be given a headband with your team's total score on it. The headband must be worn from the neck up. Midnight explained as a timer came on the screen behind her counting down from 15 minutes. Izuku looked around trying to find someone to team up with but found himself completely shunned by the other competitors even Ajiro turn ran from him. I expected as much nobody wants my massive target on their back, but there has to be someone I can team up with. He said looking around before he felt a hand on his shoulder. He turned around coming face to face with Achako. Let's team up Deku, she said giving a thumbs up. From where she was standing next to Bakugou Mina's eyes widened at Yuraka teaming up with Midori. She hissed angrily. I asked Sue and Jiro not to team up with Izuku seeing as it would be unfair to the other girls to just ride on Izuku's coattails. And from what I could see Momo and Toru seemed to be on the same page. So I didn't think I had to ask them that but apparently Achako likes to play dirty. Mina's eyes darkened with anger before she turned back to Bakugou shoving past the gathered students. Pick me as your teammate my acid will stop anyone from getting close. She said gripping Bakugou's shoulder hard enough to grab the boy's attention more than anyone else's. Alright I'm going to need to know all your names and quirks. Bakugou shouted. Momo had also taken notice of Achako's underhanded move and bit her nail. I know this is a competition, but that is just bad sportsmanship. She said before looking back to Todoroki listening to what he wanted from her. As sure thing Achako are you sure though? I have a pretty big target on my back. Izuku said scratching his cheek. Achako smiled with a slight blush. I don't mind Izuku I want to partner with you after all it's best to partner with people you like. She said blushing and holding her hands to her face. Izuku felt as if he had been punched in the stomach by Achako's cuteness there was no way he could deny her anything. Well okay let's see if we can't find some other teammates. I have one in mind already. Izuku said walking hurriedly to his destination unable to see Achako's wide smile. I'll walk through Hellfire as long as I can be by your side Izuku. She said trailing behind him. Izuku stopped in front of Tenya. Hey Ida do you want to partner with me and Yuraka? We could really your speed. Izuku said only to have Ida shake his head. We're friends Izuku. But I wouldn't feel right being on your team. In the end I'd be avoiding going against someone who I respect immensely. I want to measure myself against you Izuku therefore I have to respectfully decline. Ida said stepping towards his chosen team and placing himself in Todoroki's camp. Izuku was shocked at this before he felt a smile on his face. Well I can't say I'm not disappointed, but I respect your resolve and I will answer it in kind Ida. Izuku said walking away as Achako stood there for a moment glaring at Tenya before turning away unnoticed by anyone except Momo. I wonder what that was about Achako seemed more than disappointed almost angry, scratched that she was downright furious. Momo shook her head. No I have to focus. Izuku was walking around thinking who else he could enlist all too aware of the dwindling time he had before someone grabbed his arm yanking him face to face with a pair of crosshair eyes. You're the top ranker right. The name's Mei Hatsum genius inventor from the support course please let me be on your team. Izuku pulled back getting a full look at this girl. She had pink dreadlocks with yellow crosshair eyes and was dressed in UAS gym clothes adorned with several machines. Um I don't. Izuku was interrupted as Mei placed a finger against his lips. Say no more a stranger coming up to you and asking to be on your team is a bit much. So to show you how beneficial I am I'll show you this. Mei shouted slapping a backpack onto Midoriya only to have it then blast him a few feet in the air. See it's a jetpack. Lightweight and powerful and combined with these hover boots it'll give you exceptional maneuverability. My babies are too impressive for words aren't they? Izuku looked at the jetpack and boots and had to agree they would definitely give him the edge in avoiding the other teams. Not to mention that he had seen this design before. You based this off of the Hero Air Jet right? He asked examining it some as May smiled wider. I see you have discerning eye and yes the base is based on his. But with my own modifications of course. Hatsum replied. Alright Hatsum welcome to the team. He said relieved by this stroke of luck. Now then we just need one more person. Izuku said looking left and right before finding exactly who he needed. Join me. Time's up students the teams have been chosen the headbands have been handed out and now take your position. Begin. The field erupted into chaos as the students began moving around all with one goal in mind. Midori is 10,325 points, but they would find it difficult as Izuku rocketed his team around deftly avoiding all opposition. 
Any who got too close were rebuffed by Dark Shadow and its master Takoyami Fumikage. Way to go Takoyami. Izuku said as Dark Shadow blocked another team. Takoyami smirked a little. Izuku was one of the most powerful students in Wana so for him to come to Takoyami and ask for his help was surprising to the raven-headed boy. It was nothing you didn't already expect of me after all you did ask me to be your shield. Takoyami said as Izuku lifted them into the air. Yeah I know, but still your quirk is amazing. So are your machines Hatsum as long as we can stay out of the other team's reaches we can win this. Izuku wasn't able to see the annoyance on Achako's face. I'm the one doing the heavy lifting here. She muttered but was drowned out by Hatsum's voice. Of course my babies are amazing I made each one from scratch myself. Izuku looked up seeing Katsuki coming up from below ready to knock them from the sky and take Izuku's headband. Izuku you bastard hand over that headband. Katsuki shouted slamming an explosion down on them only to be blocked by dark shadow. Katsuki looked around the shadow creature and dodged his head to the side feeling something whiz by his cheek splitting it. He looked at Izuku who locked eyes with him his fist drawn back as Katsuki fell back to the ground being reeled in by Sira. Katsuki wiped his cheek seeing a smear of blood on his hand and looked at Izuku. Was then another air flick. Katsuki thought to himself. Izuku's team landed looking at the myriad of teams coming at them. Guys were going to go airborne again get ready. Izuku shouted only for Achako to yell out seeing she'd stepped in something. Deku I'm stuck. Izuku looked down seeing a purple sphere sticking to the boot. That's one of Minta's balls. But where Izuku suddenly dodged to the side narrowly avoiding a purple sphere that landed in front of them. He looked back seeing Shoji rushing towards him. But suddenly within the dark confines of his enclosed arms he locked eyes with Minta. Sorry Izuku I know I still kind of owe you for the USJ, but this is a competition. And though it pains me to attack a comrade like you I have no choice, relinquish the headband. Minta screeched throwing his balls around Midoriya's team even with Achako's hover boot being stuck fast Izuku had no choice. But to try and lift them into the air destroying the boot completely listening to Mei's moans about her broken invention while narrowly avoiding Tsu's tongue. Don't forget about me Izuku. And Achako. Tsu said angrily locking eyes with Yuraka as the two glared at one another. The boot's broken now we can't move like we need to. Achako stated as Izuku nodded. Guess we're grounded we'll be leaning on you even more now Takoyami. Sorry. Takoyami shook his head. I expected as much Midoriya I'll hold fast to our pack don't worry. He said just as Todoroki's team made its entrance. I warned you Midoriya I will defeat you. Todoroki stated as both boys locked eyes. Izuku's mind was transported back to their time in the waiting room before the festival. Todoroki had come up to him and blatantly stated, Midoriya my quirk is more powerful than yours I know this to be true, and yet All Might backs you, but even with that I will defeat you. Izuku had looked Todoroki in eye and grinned. You may be right that your quirk is more powerful than Todoroki, but even so I'm going to win this thing and if that means I have to go through you then so be it. The other teams assuming that the top two teams seemed to be distracted by one another decided to go on the offensive most notably team Shoji who just discovered that somehow their head had been stolen no doubt while pursuing Izuku's team. Yeyurazu now, Kaminari do it. Todoroki commanded as Yeyurazu created an iron shaft from her arm stabbing it into the ground while simultaneously making a cloak to block Kaminari's electricity. Anticipating what was about to happen Takoyami released dark shadow blocking Kaminari's lighting as it engulfed the other teams shocking them in place before Todoroki iced them to the ground taking the time to steal their headband. Midoriya used the opportunity to gain distance from Todoroki's team who quickly began pursuing them. Todoroki grabbed hold of the iron shaft Yeyurazu had created using it to ice the ground creating a wall of ice to block any further pursuit and lock down Midoriya's escape route trapping them both inside the ice enclosure. We're too slow they're catching up Takoyami. Izuku shouted as the bird-headed boy commanded Dark Shadow to attack, but was blocked by the concrete slab created by Yeyurazu. That electric attack must have damaged the jetpack my poor baby. Looks like you'll be needing some upgrades. They moaned at the loss of not one but two of her precious babies. She's too fast with her creation quirk and we can no longer outrun them we might have to go on the offensive just to keep them at bay. Izuku stated as his team continued to retreat only to stop at the edge of the arena seeing ice walls on either side of them. Damn he's got us caged. Bakugo looked at Todoroki engaging Izuku and grit his teeth. If Icy Hot thinks he's going to win this he's got another thing calm. 
At that moment Bakugu's headband was stolen by a Class B student named Nito Monoma. Class A certainly is full of themselves to think you were all so focused on getting the top spots in the preliminary how foolish. Guess that's why none of you even perceived that we had a plan in the works to steal the spotlight from you all. We knew that not many of us would get cut from the first round so all we had to do was wait in the middle and watch you all try your hardest for a temporary victory like horses with a carrot in their face. Monoma said putting on Bakugu's freshly stolen headband. Say you're kind of famous aren't you? You were attacked by the sludge villain you have to tell me about it sometime. It's a shame always being victimized. Monoma said as his team began to run off. Bakugu sat atop his team completely engulfed in fury. Kirishima. Bakugu growled as Kirishima looked back eyes widening at the waves of anger coming from Bakugu. F everything else right now our one and only objective is making that bastard eat his effing words. He shouted as Kirishima tried to placate him. Look if we go for Midoriya now we can definitely make up the difference and then some. Bakugu rejected that idea on the spot. F that we're going to show that blonde a hole who's the boss here no exceptions. Bakugu shouted as Kirishima sighed. Fine don't make us regret this man. Kirishima said as they rushed after Monoma's team. Great now he's after us Monoma way to go. One of class B shouted to Monoma who shrugged. It's nothing new heroes are always chased after by stupid villains who have a score to settle. Monoma said easily parrying one of Bakugu's explosive blows only for the explosion user to turn around and receive an explosion to the face as Monoma slapped Kirishima's hair. What the he has the same quirk as you. Siro said shocked watching Monoma fire off some small explosions in his hand. Wow I can see why you like this quirk so much. Monoma teased before Bakugu released another explosion at him. But when the smoke cleared Monoma had hardened his body to block the explosion. Now he has mine what gives. Kirishima shouted as Bakugu glared at Monoma. This bastard has some kind of copy quirk. Bakugu explained as Monoma smiled. Bondo now. Monoma shouted as the yellow-headed student of Class B sprayed a liquid trapping Bakugu's team in place as Monoma's team began to retreat. No he's getting away. Bakugu shouted. I got this I'll melt it with my acid. Mina said spraying acid from her foot to free them so they could continue the chase. I'll be damned if I'm going to let this guy knock me out of the running I've got a lot riding on this. Mina thought to herself as they sped after Monoma. Get back here you copy bastard. Bakugu shouted as Monoma sighed. Don't you ever give up. Knowing when you're beaten is a fundamental lesson you know. Monoma said turning around as Bakugu closed in on his face only to be blocked by a disc of solid air slamming his fist into it repeatedly. Ha you look pretty funny fighting with air. Laughed Tsuburaba only to have his disc shattered by Bakugu's fist who then snatched two headbands back before being reeled in by Siro's tape. Warn us next time alright. Kirishima shouted only to be ignored by Bakugu. Not yet we're going to be the undisputed champion of this battle. Now go he still has my headband and I'll be damned if I let him keep it. Elbows do it. Bakugu shouted pointing at Monoma's team. The name's Siro. Hanta shouted shooting a string of tape past Monoma's team. Nice aim. Monoma taunted unaware of what was coming next. Raccoon eyes acid now. Bakugu commanded to Mina's intense irritation. My name's Mina you jerk. She responded throwing acid on the ground as Siro reeled them in towards Monoma's team as Bakugu released an explosion yet again shattering Tsuburaba's defense and stealing the last of Monoma's headband. Now on to Izuku it's time to win this. Bakugu shouted staring at the ice blockade. Izuku stared at Todoroki making sure his team stayed on Todoroki's left side each time they advanced. Your smart Midori is staying on my left side and out of range of my ice. If this keeps up you'll just run out the clock. And I can't have that. Todoroki thought to himself. Todoroki saw Izuku lean down talking to Takoyami who soon after summoned his shadow beast sending it out to attack them. Kaminari. Todoroki shouted as the electricity user channeled his lightning causing dark shadow's fist to fall short slamming into the ground cratering it as he was forced to retreat again. If he keeps us at this distance we won't have a chance to get his points. Todoroki stated as Ida then spoke up. Everyone I'm going to do something that'll make me useless afterwards. But there's no other choice with only 60 seconds left drastic measures must be taken. Ada said getting ready to run for all he was worth. What exactly are you going to do Ada? Todoroki asked. I'm going to force the torque and RPM of my engines into overdrive. It'll boost my speed for about 10 seconds but after that my engines will stall for some time. It's our last ditch effort to win this. Todoroki bit his lip. Ada was the power of his team allowing them to move at incredible speeds if this failed not only would they lose out on Midoriya's headband but be sitting ducks for any other team. It's as you say Ida we have no choice, do it. Ada activated his recipro burst dashing towards Midoriya's team faster than almost anyone could see them. Todoroki was taken back by the speed, but reached forward towards Midoriya's headband only for something to strike him in the face right between the eyes making him blink and miss his grab as they zoomed past Midoriya's team. Todoroki rubbed his eyes clearing them of the debris as he looked at Midoriya who had a victorious smile. 
That was close I thought I would miss. He said tossing some pebbles with his other hand and that's when Todoroki realized what happened. When Dark Shadow had attacked them and fallen short that was on purpose Dark Shadow had torn up the ground in order to supply Midoriya with ammunition to keep them at bay. A pebble to the eye would make anyone flinch. Midoriya released a pent-up breath it was only thanks to his high-speed training with All Might that he was able to track it as super-fast movements and strike Todoroki with his pebble. You bastard with the power you displayed at the USJ I forgot about your ninja training it's a common tactic for ninjas to blind their enemies right. Also the use of makeshift weapons is right in your wheelhouse, Todoroki said glaring at Midoriya. It's as you say Todoroki in an enclosed space like this where escape is impossible I had to focus on misdirecting you and it worked. Midoriya stated as an explosion could be heard from the ice wall as Bakugou careened through looking between Izuku and Todoroki seeing that Izuku still had his 10 million points. I see you 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 you. Bakugou shouted reaching out for the green-haired boy just as the final bell rang out ending the cavalry battle with Bakugou falling flat on his face. And that's it folks the end of the cavalry battle and as you can see there's barely been any movement among the top ranked students. In first place managing to hold onto his massive lead is Team Midoriya with their 10,325,000. In second place we have Team Bakugou with 1,350. In third place is Team Todoroki with 1,175. Now here's where things get interesting. In fourth place is Team Kendo with 520. Let's give it up for all our hard-working students as we break for an hour lunch. Come on Eraserhead let's eat. Announced present Mike. Midoriya climbed off his team smiling as he shook hands with Takoyami. I knew I was right to pledge my dark powers to your cause Midoriya, said Takoyami before walking away. Thanks for all the help Takoyami I appreciate it, Izuku said before Achako jumped onto his side hugging him close. We did it Deku we stayed on top despite the odds. Oh yeah, Achako said punching the air in victory. I won't lose to any of you I'm the only girl Deku needs. Achako thought as she looked at her rivals who all shared the same look of aggression. Yeah I guess we did your Uraka. Thanks for teaming up with me in the first place. You would have probably had an easier time with another team, but you chose me anyway that means a lot. He said smiling at her causing the girl to blush. Oh when he looks at me like that I I just melt. Achako thought rubbing her thighs together. I it's no problem Deku like I said it's best to team up with people you like and well I like you. A lot. Achako said looking up only to find Izuku's attention taken by Mei. Thank you very much for allowing me to use your fame to my advantage. And remember if you ever find yourself in need of support items think of Mei Hatsum genius of the support course. Mei said waving goodbye to Izuku who scratched his cheek. Well being honest is the mark of a good hero, but did she have to be so blunt about it? He asked stretching a little feeling himself relaxed now that that was over only to feel a hand on his shoulder. He looked back staring into Todoroki's mismatched eyes. We need to talk, was all he said before walking away from Izuku who took a moment to consider this before following after him. Izuku stood across the hall from Todoroki the two looking at each other for a moment. What's this about Todoroki? Izuku asked seeing that the boy had something to get off his chest. Are you All Might's bastard child or something? Todoroki asked with a completely straight face. Needless to say this threw Izuku for a loop. W what of course I'm not. Though even if I was I guess I'd still say the same thing. I assure you that the only connection I have with All Might is that of teacher and student. Todoroki looked at Izuku as if he didn't believe him but dropped the subject nonetheless. Do you know the flame hero Endeavor? Todoroki asked suddenly switching gears. Yeah he's the number two hero right after All Might. Though his popularity is pretty low. Why do you ask? Questioned Izuku. He's my father you see. And all that man cares about is beating All Might and for that reason and that reason only is why he married my mother. Izuku's eyes widened at this admission as Todoroki continued. It was a quirk marriage. He married my mother for her ice quirk in order to create a child with a more powerful quirk. You see this burn on my face. I got it from my mother. Under my father's abuse she simply broke one day and poured scalding hot water on my face. And then my father sent her away as if she never existed. She'd served her purpose after all so why keep her around? That callous nature of his is why I refuse to use my left side. I don't want to have anything to do with him or his power. I'll win on my own with nothing but my right side, Todoroki stated as he stepped away from the wall. I'll beat you and show my old man that I don't need his power. Todoroki walked out of the hallway before hearing Midoriya speak. Be that as it may Todoroki I fully intend to win, was all Izuku said as Todoroki walked away. He sighed falling against the back of the wall. Oh man that was intense, he said walking outside and making his way to the cafeteria. Alright everyone the third and final event of the sports festival. One-on-one -on -one matches between the finalists. Use your quirks to knock your opponent unconscious, or out of the ring, or make them cry for their mamas to achieve victory. Simple right and of course colorful commentary will be provided by me and Eraserhead here. Now we hand things over to Midnight. 
Midnight cocked her hip and pointed her whip at the collective students. All right students the bouts will be determined randomly. But if any of you feel as if you aren't up to this simply raise your hand and bow out. No judgments will be made. It's a mark of a good hero to know when they've reached their limit. An arm was raised. I would like to. Withdraw please, said Ajiro Mashurao. Izuku turned to his friend and sparring partner. Ajiro what do you mean? Were you injured or something? Izuku asked as Ajiro shook his head. It's just I don't feel I deserve to be in the finals. I don't remember anything from the second match, but the very end. My honor will not permit to take advantage of such a shameful victory. Anjiro clarified looking at Izuku. Forgive me Izuku I really was looking forward to facing you in the finals. Izuku sighed knowing that if Anjiro was doing this he had a damn good reason to do so. There's nothing to forgive Anjiro do what you feel is right that's all any of us can do. He responded as another student raised his hand. I must withdraw for the same reasons. It would not be right to profit from something I truly did not compete in, stated Nironjiki Shoda. Midnight nodded. Very well then Mashurao Ajiro and Nironjiki Shoda have withdrawn. Are there any others? Midnight asked waiting a moment and seeing no others decided to continue. If that is all look to the screen behind me for you matchups. Midnight said pointing to the screen as a tournament bracket was displayed with the beginning slot cycling between the remaining contestants before coming to a stop revealing that Izuku Midoriya and Hitoshi Shinzo would be the first match. Izuku swallowed before taking a deep breath before he heard someone call out to him. Here Izuku Midori you're right. Asked a purple-haired boy with bags under his eyes and a grin. Izuku was about to respond before he felt Anjiro's tail cover his mouth. Not a word Midoriya, come with me. Anjiro stated glaring at the purple-haired youth whose grin never faltered as Izuku and Anjiro left to speak in Izuku's waiting room. What was that about Anjiro? Izuku asked sensing he was missing something critical. I have some things to tell you Izuku and though I have no concrete evidence I implore you to believe me. Anjiro pleaded before Izuku placed a hand on his shoulder. Calm down Anjiro I trust you say what you have to say. Izuku stated sitting at the table as Anjiro took the seat across from him. As I said before I have no memory of the cavalry battle except the very end of it. The only other thing that comes to mind is the beginning of the cavalry battle. I remember you asking me to be on your team and I refused and then the guy who just talked to you. He asked me something and then nothing but blackness, so maybe not talking to him is the key. Somehow I was on his team and we won. But that's only what I've heard from other people. I don't know what he did but he used me to gain victory without my knowing. Izuku placed his hand on his chin thinking it through. Maybe he erased your memory of it. Or possibly he took control of you somehow, but what's the trigger for his quirk? Izuku muttered at high speed as Ajiro smiled weakly watching his friend nerd out for a moment. The only thing I know is that I bumped into another team and suddenly I was myself again. But by then it was too late. I know that isn't very helpful. If an outside force is needed to break whatever his quirk is that's not something you'll have in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Izuku nodded before watching Ajiro stand up. Well I've eaten up most of your time so I better get going. Ajiro stated before holding his hand out to Izuku. Good luck man and I know this is a bit selfish on my part. But beat that guy for me too alright. Ajiro said as Izuku took hold of Ajiro's hand. Count on it Ajiro. Alright ladies and gentlemen this is the first match of the finals and here are our two contestants. From the left from one a hero course and the undisputed winner of the obstacle course race. And the cavalry battle I-Z-U-K-U-M-I-D-O-R-I-Y-A. The crowd went wild at this statement while many heroes spoke about Midoriya. Did you see him in that obstacle course the kid's a genius and the way he uses that quirk of his is amazing. One hero said, yeah and the way he commanded his team in the cavalry battle was quite tactful. That kind of forward thinking will get him far in the future, said a heroine. At home Inko was waving a green flag with Izuku's face on it back and forth. Yeah Izuku show them what you can do. Go Izuku go. She shouted repeatedly as she swung the green flag with all her might. Wow Master Splinter Izuku's really strutting his stuff. Mikey said brushing his fingers against his chest. I taught him that. Oh please it's obvious my tactical training was the reason he took first place in the cavalry battle. Leo spoke sitting on the floor. Yeah, yeah but this is where my teachings come in. Knock him flat Izuku, Raphael said punching towards the screen. If only they allowed him to use his hero costume my new design would have done him a hell of lot better than that girl's invention. Donnie said with a sigh. Quiet boys it's about to start. Splinter spoke leaning close and bunching his hands in his robe. Show them the fruits of your labor Izuku. From the right we have Hitoshi Shinzo from General Studies and man look at those eye bags. He could give you a run for your money eraser hat. Mike commented as Aizawa glared at him for a moment before looking back at the two students' dossiers. Him seems that Izuku outclasses Shinzo physically. But after looking at Shinzo's quirk he has a fighting chance at least. Either way this will be over quickly. Aizawa thought to himself as the two boys stared at one another across the platform. Alright you two let the battle. Begin. Shouted Midnight signaling the beginning of the bout. 
Man can you believe that monkey? I gave him a golden ticket to victory and he threw it away because of honor. Ridiculous. Shinso said as Izuku glared at him rushing forward. What you saw? Shinso smiled as Izuku's eyes glazed over and he stopped there only after a few steps. Ajiro shot up from his seat. Damn it you fell for it. Ajiro groaned slapping his hand against his forehead. He not only felt bad that Izuku was caught in Shinso's trap, but also because Izuku got mad on his behalf. Well that seems to be it doesn't it? I know it's rather underhanded but we all do what we must to achieve our dreams Shinso asked before pointing at the opposite end of the arena. Now walk out of the arena like a good little hero and lose for me. Izuku turned around and began walking towards the arena's boundary. What is this? Izuku is obeying Shinso. Whatever for? Present Mike asked before Aizawa gave an explanation. Shinso's quirk is called brainwash. By getting someone to respond to something he says he overrides their mind making them a slave to his commands. It doesn't happen on every question just when he wants it to. He obviously goaded Midoriya into talking to him so he could control him and make him forfeit the match. Izuku, shouted Yuraka as she stood up staring down at the arena gripping the back of the chair in front of her. No he can't lose come on Izuku you can beat this guy. I know you won't let him win because. Come on Midori you've got this. You're aiming for the top right you can't let it end here. I know you'll make it because. Mina shouted shaking her fists in front of her. Midoriya you got me and mine to out of harm's way at USJ. And even defeated that monster I know you're stronger than anyone could imagine show me that strength please. Because, implored Sue clutching her hands together in front of her. Toru was wringing her hands though no one could see it. Midoriya I I believe in you and know you'll find a way out of this so please win because. Toru thought to herself never taking her eyes from the green haired boy. Midoriya I've never seen someone with as much courage as you. So I have no doubt you will see this through to victory. After all. You went out of your way to help a jerk like Bakugu change. If you're willing to go through that then there's nothing you can't do and that's why. At the same time each girl thought the same words. You're the man I love. All Might stood in Izuku's entry hall shaking his head and waving him back towards the arena. No kid stop. You can't let it end like this. You're the next symbol of peace right. Izuku saw himself walking closer and closer to the edge of the arena. I I can't stop myself. My body won't listen to me. He thought to himself as he did his best to pull his body back under his control. But as he did the arena began to lose its color becoming monotone as a silhouette appeared in the entrance corridor he'd entered the arena from. Izuku couldn't make out who it was or whether they were male or female for that matter. But that question was soon answered as a male voice spoke to him. You idiot. Your friend told you what to do and you still screwed it up. Izuku balked at being called an idiot. But it's not like it wasn't deserved he did fail even after Ajira went through the trouble of trying to help him. I did screw up didn't I I let my emotions get out of hand and lost control. Izuku chastised himself before hearing laughing. Yeah I'd like to chew you out. But honestly I would have done the same thing if some guy was talking trash about my friend. So that's why I'm going to help you out. The figure held up its hand and an orange ball of energy came to life in his palm. You're not ready for my full power yet so this is just a sample until you are. The man said before crushing the ball in his hand. Izuku felt full cowl envelop his body. Wait who are you? Izuku asked before the figure shook his head. Let's hold off on that until we get a proper meeting. I don't think it'll be that long before we meet again. The man spoke as he faded away but as he did Izuku felt power gather in his left hand before releasing in an explosion of wind. Shinso threw up his arms to guard against the onslaught of powerful air. And when he put them down he saw Izuku standing just inside the boundary line and clutching his left hand. What did he do was that just from his left hand? Shinso asked as Izuku turned around staring dead into Shinso's eyes. He broke my control, but how? How did you do that? Shinso shouted as Izuku stood up straight and looked at his left hand. There was a spiral of lacerations on his palm as if he'd placed his hand against a rotating blade. They weren't too deep and the pain was manageable, but that wasn't important right now. He decided as he began to advance on Shinso. Look at that people the tables have turned once more. With a powerful gust Midoriya who was just at the mercy of Shinso is now advancing on his opponent all traces of former obedience gone. Announced present Mike as Aizawa eyed Izuku's hand. I'm not sure what he did but it's pretty clear he injured himself to break free. A rational decision in my opinion. Aizawa thought as Izuku made his way to Shinso ignoring his further goading. You're so lucky to have a powerful quirk like that. I mean you nearly caused a windstorm with just your hand. It'll be so easy for you to achieve everything you want. How blessed you must be. Shinso said as Midoriya remained silent. He's not going to answer me now. That monkey must have told him. Shinso thought as he glared at Izuku who got within striking distance. I have dreams of my own. Shinso shouted as he threw a punch that Izuku easily dodged and retaliated with a solid punch straight to Shinso's face. There was a crunch as Shinso's nose was broken and he was thrown back tumbling end over end until his legs landed outside the arena boundary. Shinso has been ejected from the arena the winner is Midoriya from Hero Course 1A. Midnight stated raising her whip above her head in Izuku's favor. 
That's what I'm talking about. A rock-solid punch straight to the face. Way to go Izuku. Raf shouted throwing a couple punches at the TV. Master Splinter released the tension in his hands as he gave a sigh of relief. Good job Izuku, Splinter said as his sons celebrated their junior's victory. At the Midori a household in Ko was cheering her baby boy on with all her heart. She almost couldn't believe the tiny baby she'd given birth to was now this amazing young man. It made her so proud. I hope Hisashi is watching, she said as she sat back down. Izuku looked over at Shinzo as they stood across from each other. You're right you know, I am blessed. I've only gotten this far because people believed in me and gave me the courage to work hard. I know that natural ability counts for a lot, but I learned that hard work counts for more, and I think the people here have learned that too. Izuku said as Shinzo looked at Izuku as he was walking away and did the same. I don't need your lip service. All everyone saw was a general studies student get his butt kick. Shinzo was interrupted by his classmates. Hey Shinzo that was a pretty close call, you nearly had him, and I think the heroes saw that too. His classmate said pointing out some of the pros talking about Shinzo. What an impressive quirk. With something like that capturing villains would be easy. Yeah I can't believe he's only in general studies UA must be slipping. Another said shaking his head. It can't be helped with so many students applying it's only natural that a few good ones slip through the cracks. Shinzo looked back at Midoriya's retreating figure remembering what he said. Hard work counts for more and I think the people here have learned that too. Shinzo smiled rubbing the back of his head as he walked into the tunnel. Izuku sat in the nurse's office as recovery girl bandaged his hand. That was amazing kid. But how did you beat Shinzo's brainwashing? All Might asked as Izuku thought back to the last thing he remembered before getting control of his body. I think another former user of One for All helped me out. Izuku answered as All Might took a seat. So it wasn't Luffy this time. All Might asked as Izuku shook his head. I'm sure it wasn't I couldn't see the person fully. But his voice sounded different and the power he used was completely different from Luffy's. Izuku said looking at his bandaged hand. Are you able to access this new aspect's power? All Might asked worried for his protege. Izuku has barely gotten control of Luffy's power and if he had another one to deal with All Might wasn't sure he was equipped to handle so many different powers or help Izuku train with it. I need to think about how best to handle this influx of new abilities. He thought to himself as he noticed Izuku shaking his head as he stood up. No I can't, I don't even feel that power anymore. The man did say I wasn't ready for his power yet, so maybe it'll come to me in the future. I should leave, Shinzo may come by and I'd rather not keep him waiting. Izuku said with a bow to both All Might and Recovery Girl before leaving. You're worried aren't you? Recovery Girl asked looking at All Might who nodded. I took this job with almost no teaching experience and I've been making it so far, but this is almost beyond my scope. Izuku is an excellent student and takes in everything I give, but let's face it with these new quirks coming at such a breakneck pace I don't think I can keep up. He needs more than I can give. Chiyo shook her head as she clucked her tongue. You're not alone All Might you have an entire network of friends and colleagues who would be willing to help you teach Izuku. Maybe you should reach out to some of them. Chiyo suggested as All Might stood up pulling out his phone. You may be onto something there recovery girl. All Might said with renewed vigor as he left and began scrolling through his contacts. Shoto walked out of his waiting room heading to his first match of the finals before running into his father. Shoto you're putting on a pitiful display. You've fallen from second to third place and it's all because you refuse to use your flames. You could have easily won both the first and second events. But instead you're trailing behind All Might's protege like a dog. Shoto grit his teeth as he walked past his father. It doesn't matter where I'm at in the rankings now because I'll win this entire thing while only using my mother's quirk. I don't need your flames, Shoto said walking away only for Endeavor to speak once more. I have no doubt you can win this with just your mother's quirk you are my greatest masterpiece after all. But even if you do there'll come a point where your mother's quirk won't be enough and you'll have to use mine. Shoto didn't stop walking but the glare on his face was evident as he stepped onto the stage. And here we have from Hero Course 1 of the Master of Ice and Fire Shoto Todoroki. Shouted present Mike over the roar of the crowd. And his opponent also from Hero Course 1 with the weird elbows hand to Siro. Siro wore a grin as he stretched his arms out. That was uncalled for don't you think? Siro griped at present Mike's entrance speech for him. He looked at Todoroki who was standing completely still as if not even aware the match was about to start. I don't feel like I can win this to be honest. Siro spoke as the start signal went off. But I really don't want to lose either. He shouted shooting out twin lines of tape wrapping up Todoroki completely before starting to swing him towards the boundary line. It was at this point that Todoroki looked up his eyes full of malice. Apologies, was all he said before a massive crash could be heard from the stadium. The people outside the stadium were awestruck by the massive glacier of ice arcing over the stadium wall that had appeared in an instant, while inside the audience was forced to lean back as far as possible to avoid the slope of ice in front of them. Siro was captured in ice as he shivered in place. P don't you THT think that was a BB bit overboard? Siro asked Todoroki through chattering teeth. 
Tell the truth Ciro can you move? Midnight asked also shivering as her entire right half was frozen over. Are you Jay joking obviously and not? Ciro stated. Ciro is completely immobilized so the wind goes to Todoroki. Midnight said as Todoroki shattered the frozen tape on his body and walked up to Ciro beginning to melt him free of the ice. The crowd looked on at the defeated boy and began chanting. Nice try. To lift Ciro's spirits. Sorry about this that was over the top. I was irritated about something else and acted childishly. Shoto explained looking down at the ground. The finals were put on hold to clear out the glacier Shoto had created. But afterwards the next match was Kaminari vs Ibarra which also ended in an instant with Denki short-circuiting himself in an all-out electrical assault which Ibarra blocked with her vines before capturing Denki earning her the win. The next match was also decided rather quickly if in an absurd manner. Tanya was made into Mei's unwilling assistant as she used him to display most of her inventions gaining the interest of the support companies before deliberately walking out of bounds affording Ada the win though he seemed incredibly displeased with this fact. At this point Izuku got up from his seat and headed to one of the waiting rooms specifically the one Ashido was in. As Izuku was about to knock on the door it was opened and Ashido nearly bumped into him before seeing who it was. Oh Midori hi, I don't think this is the time for a quickie, but I can't refuse you if you really want to. Ashido said causing Izuku to blush heavily while shaking his hands. And no Ashido it's nothing like that. I I know you said I should keep my distance from you girls until after the festival was over. But I just wanted to come and you know wish you good luck. He said with a blush as Mina began to pout confusing Izuku some. You um what's wrong Ashido? He asked seeing Mina's attitude sour more. Ashido, Mina said looking at Izuku. Who wore an expression of confusion? Ashido, she said once more before something clicked in Izuku's mind. MMM Mina, he said as quietly as possible only for Mina to lean forward. You were coming to say good luck. Ashido asked once more before Midoriya stood up straight and took a deep breath. Good luck Mina, he shouted as Mina smiled petting his head. There's a good Midori and thanks for that, but I've already got a pretty nice good luck charm right here. She said pushing the waistband of her sweats down revealing a familiar pair of panties to Izuku who only blushed harder. W well I I'll let you get going now. He said rushing back to his seat as Mina giggled stepping out of her room and noticing a presence around the corner. Achako had followed after Midoriya seeing where he was going and though she hadn't been able to see anything because of the open door, she'd heard most of it and it caused her to grit her teeth exuding a presence of anger. I know you're there Achako and I just want to let you know I am going to win this thing on my own merits. She shouted before going out to fight Ayama and make good on her word, quickly defeating the laser user and advancing in the finals to the chagrin of Achako. Momo, and especially Toru who had not made it into the finals and was only barely keeping her composure. Momo bit her nail as she got up to go to the waiting room and looked at Midoriya who wore a smile on his face, no doubt overjoyed by Mina's victory. I'll win too Midoriya. I want to be closer with you than just as your subordinate, she thought walking behind him to the waiting room. Yeyarazu walked out onto the arena facing Takoyami. I defended against Takoyami's attacks during the cavalry battle so I know he's got an advantage on attacking. But if I can defend against him and getting close the battle's mine. She thought so wrapped up in her planning she barely heard the start signal until Dark Shadow was nearly upon her. Yeyarazu created a small shield which Dark Shadow slammed into pushing her off balance before coming back around for another attack repeating this maneuver again and again before suddenly stopping. Now's my chance. Momo thought as she created a long pull only to be stopped by Midnight's announcement. Momo Yeyarazu has been pushed out of bounds the winner is Fumikage Takoyami. Momo dropped the shield and pull as she watched Takoyami bow and then walk off. She cast an eye to Midoriya who also wore a face of empathy for her loss. She gave a sad smile as she walked off the field. That was really one-sided. But I'm not surprised Takoyami played to his strengths and after facing her in the cavalry battle he knew how best to handle her quirk. Izuku stated as Achako smiled. That's one less opponent with Toru, Su, and Gyro already knocked out it's just down to me and Mina as it should be. She's the cause of all this. Achako thought as she cast an eye to Mina who was also looking at her. They both knew what was at stake now. The next battle was between Kirishima and Tetsu Tetsu and out of all the previous matches it was one of the longest with both having virtually the same quirk it would drag on for a while. Seeing this Izuku made another trip to the waiting room this time to speak with Hiroraka. He knew that he was once again going against what he promised Mina. But he was sure that Mina knew he wouldn't be able to keep his word for long. He knocked on the door before opening it and finding Ida there already. Oh hey Midoriya come to wish your Raka good luck as well have you. I am pleased to see our class representative taking such a hands-on approach when it comes to our classmate. Good show sir. Ada complimented with his usual robotic movements. Deku what are you doing here? Achako asked looking at him as Izuku coughed. Well I know you're going up against Katsuki in the next match and I want you to know he's not going to go easy on you no matter what. I don't think he's capable of holding back to be honest. 
but that's why I wanted to give you this. He said holding up his hero analysis notebook. I've known Katsuki since we were kids, and have had a front row seat to how he uses his quirk. I think I have a plan that can help you win. He said before Achako pushed the notebook back towards him. She remembered the last thing that Mina said to her, calling her out on what she did during the cavalry battle. I can't accept this Izuku. I'm happy that you want to help me, but I can't ride behind you forever. I want to do this on my own and prove to myself that I can stand with the best on my own power. She said hugging Izuku and whispering in his ear. I know you believe in me but I want to do this on my own, so give me something special when I win. She said as Izuku nodded. You can count on it and good luck Yuraka I'll be watching. Izuku said pulling away from her as Ida nodded as well. We both will Yuraka. Ada stated as the two left before Achako made her way to the arena following a double knockout with Kirishima and Tetsu Tetsu. Bakugou stood across from her glaring as usual. The next match is Hero Course won Akatsuki Bakugou the runner-up in the cavalry battle. Announced present Mike as the crowd cheered. Then we have also from Class 1 and my personal favorite to win Achako Yuraka. Shouted present Mike feeling Aizawa glaring at him from the side. I thought you were supposed to be impartial. Stated Aizawa disappointed in his colleague's obvious bias. This is your one and only chance pink cheeks bow out or get hurt simple as that. Stated Bakugou who was met with an intense glare rivaling his own. I'm not quitting. I have too much riding on this to lose to you. Bakugou grit his teeth he glanced up at the stands seeing Izuku there. You sound just like him. Fine I'll put you in your place and then do the same to him. Bakugou shouted as the start signal was sounded and Yuraka bolted for him her hands outstretched to grab hold but was rebuffed by an explosion throwing her back to her starting place. Izuku clenched his fist looking at Yuraka as she attempted the same maneuver. So what are her chances Izuku? Ajiro asked knowing that most Izuku's prior outcomes had come true. It's going to be hard normally Yuraka's quirk would be the end all after all almost nobody can move around in 0G, but Bakugou can. Izuku stated as Anjiro arched a brow before remembering how well Bakugou moves in the air with his explosion. You're right even if he's sent floating he can still maneuver with his explosions. So it's pretty much hopeless then. Anjiro asked wincing as Achako was thrown back once more by Bakugou's explosion. Not entirely the way I see it if Yuraka is quick she might be able to make Bakugou float long enough to get him outside the arena. But that would require an amazing amount of circumstance. Izuku stated clasping his hands in front of his face. Yuraka got up once more wiping the dirt from her cheek as she looked at the smoke-covered arena. I have to win not just for Izuku and my family, but for myself. I want to win. I want to have Izuku for myself and I want to support my family. Yuraka thought to herself as she took off her jacket and sent it floating towards Bakugou before circling around him and coming at his back. But it didn't work with Bakugou's inhuman reflexes he turned unleashing a massive explosion nearly sending Achako out of the arena. The crowd erupted in boos for the explosion user who was unfazed by them as he kept his eye on Achako. She keeps getting up. Why won't she stay down? He thought to himself as Achako stood up and pressed her fingers together. Thanks Bakugou without you I wouldn't have been able to use this move. Yuraka stated as she looked up at the massive collection of debris. So that was her plan. Izuku said nodding with appreciation at Achako's ingenuity. Meteor shower. Achako shouted smiling as the debris from the stage began falling towards Bakugo. No matter what he does he can't avoid them all and I'll have a chance to make him float. I've done it. She thought to herself as Bakugou raised his hand above his head and unleashed a massive explosion destroying her trump card and keeping her at bay with the wind and force of his explosion. Katsuki dropped his arm feeling it seize up with pain. That was close, but I figured you'd have some kind of shitty plan since you're always hanging around Izuku. He said staring at Achako who was floored by this powerful display. I think it's time we got serious wouldn't you say you're Araka? He said raising up his smoking hand only for Achako to fall to the ground. I I can't stop now. Achako thought as she began crawling towards Bakugou. I have to keep going just like Deku. The view of the battlefield was starting to swim before her eyes. I I won't give up. Achako fell unconscious on the ground of the arena. Bakugou released a breath he hadn't known he was holding before walking off the stadium as he was declared the winner. Okay sadly the chapter is over. And if you enjoyed the video just leave a like. And subscribe with post notification. So when the next chapter is ready, you will be notified. Okay see you in the next video. Bye.